Of course, the Sean Payton and Drew Brees era has come to an end in New Orleans, and Dennis Allen is a really great defensive coach, has done a great job with the defense, but the team as a whole has left a bit to be desired. The offense is really not playing up to where you'd want them to. Is Derek Carr the answer in New Orleans? Doesn't really seem like it is. So not only are we going to just regularly rebuild the Saints team, we're going to try to establish a dynasty over the next 20 seasons. The Saints have won the Super Bowl, did it back in 2009 with Drew Brees. We want to do more than just one Super Bowl. Remember the LeBron James Miami Heat? Not one, not two, not three. We want to win as many as possible, and we're going to try to do that here with the Saints and build a dynasty. We even have the cat for good luck. She made a little bit of a noise in the, uh, the intro there. That's what that was. But you know what? Saints colors. Black and the yellow of the eyes. That's not menacing. What do you think? Can we win a few Super Bowls? She doesn't know what planet she's on. She doesn't know. So I'll answer for her. Uh, yes. So this is the Saints team. It leaves a bit to be desired. It's just a lot of players who are pretty good on offense. And I don't really know that there are a ton of cornerstones that I want to build around. You know, the offensive line has some nice pieces. I'm going to look to develop Trevor Penning, Eric McCoy, Cesar Ruiz, Ryan Ramchek. Trey Turner, I just think at this point in his career, is probably not somebody I can count on at 30 and only a 75 overall. But are these guys really going to have a lot of trade value? I'm not sure. It's just a lot of players who are like 75 to 85-ish overall that are 28 plus, all with star dev. So can I do anything with Jamal Williams or Michael Thomas or Juwan Johnson or Trey Turner or Derek Carr? It's not really something I can count on. And then on defense... I love Demario Davis. He's been one of the more underrated players in the league over his entire career, really, but he's 34 years old. I can't build around him, certainly not in a 20-year rebuild. So some of these players, I'm just going to have to rip off the Band-Aid here early, try to trade for draft capital, and build around guys like Marshawn Lattimore, Brian Brzee, who I was a huge fan of coming out in the draft. I don't really understand why he fell so far apart from some injury stuff, but man, he is the talent to be one of the better interior defensive linemen in the entire league. He's athletic as any of them and is hopefully on a great career trajectory. Speaking of great aging players, Cam Jordan, he's been such a stud, so consistent for the Saints his entire career. He's 34 years old. I can't build around him. So is it going to be crazy to trade some of these guys? We just have to rip the Band-Aid off, guys. I know a lot of these players you expect to retire as Saints, and they probably will in real life. I need to get whatever value I can. If we're going to build a dynasty here over 20 years, we can't be holding on to players to watch them regress and get worse and worse and worse. I want to trade them at their peak value, get as much back, and really build a juggernaut. I'd like to try and develop Isaiah Foskey as well, and I think trading Cam Jordan is going to create opportunity to do that. But let me tell you, has there been a better player this year? And Okay, yes, some more established guys, but maybe has there been a more under-the-radar guy that has played as well as Carl Granderson has? I don't think so. He has been one of the better players in the entire NFL and probably wouldn't be somebody you expect uh, to say that about, but he's been phenomenal. Although we have some very interesting trade options if we were to trade Demario Davis and Cam Jordan. Brian Burns from the Panthers, we would have to extend him, but I don't think it'd be a problem to do that. Jalen Waddle from the Dolphins. I mean, there are intriguing offers without question. It's just who would I prefer? The superstar wide receiver, superstar edge rusher who is a year older I, I'm not sure, but getting Brian Burns pretty much gives up on the idea of developing Isaiah Foskey, at least a little bit, because I want to play Carl Granderson, even though he's probably never going to develop very much in Madden. I would say I want Brian Burns, but I don't want to give up Cam Jordan to get him. And we don't have a lot of picks here either. So we're in a bit of a weird spot. I need to get picks, but also if we can get a stud player to build around, I want that also. Okay, it is a big-time trade. Demario Davis, Michael Thomas, Andrus Pete shedding a lot of contracts here. That's exactly what we want to do is save money so we can spend it on players that are going to be more impactful for us, like Brian Burns. I'm trading two fours and a five to get a 2026 second rounder, so three years from now, alongside Brian Burns. But Brian Burns is a big-time player. Hopefully, will make a big-time impact for us. Tyron Matthew also has to go. There are too many older players on this team getting paid too much money. Locked down for too long. I have to move them now. 
a little interdivisional trade. This is interesting. Cam Jordan, Derek Carr to the Falcons. Saints and Falcons fans everywhere are cringing at the thought of this. But we are going to make it happen. We're getting Kyle Pitts and a couple of day three draft picks trading our starting quarterback and longtime Saints legend at this point, Cam Jordan, for a superstar X-Factor tight end that just doesn't really get a whole lot of love in that offense. Taysom Hill, I got it. Dude, so many players are just star dev, 75-ish overall, locked up for two or three years, getting paid too much money. It's uh, annoying. Making a deal with the Cardinals, it's Taysom Hill, Tyron Matthews, still a 91 overall under contract for the next couple of years, shedding the contract to James Hurst, trading a couple of a fifth round picks for a first from the Cardinals. Big trade for us, obviously, as they look to solidify their secondary with Tyron Matthew. We just don't really want players who are older than 30 right now. That's obviously a really, really good trade for us, but uh, not so great of a trade for them. Trading Jamal Williams straight up to the Rams for a second round pick. We are butchering the team. That's exactly what's happening right now. Uh, it might be a bit overkill. Alvin Kamara should probably be traded. Kind of stings. Maybe I'll do that at the midseason mark. But, uh, I mean, these guys have to go. If they're not going to be a part of the future, what is the point of holding on to them? I think it's safe to say I wouldn't be doing this if I was doing a regular Saints rebuild, but my focus is on the future. I've signed a 20-year contract as GM. I'm going to try to take advantage of whatever I can to make this a dynasty. This is at least an interesting trade to make with the Giants. Marcus May trades Herner. Jameis Winston gets a Xavier McKinney and a couple of late-round picks from the Giants. Uh, we're trading a lot there to get back Xavier McKinney, who I like, but final year of his deal, going to have to extend him. But for somebody to play safety for us for the next four years, there are worse options than Xavier McKinney. All right, I've pretty much butchered the team to my liking. Still have plenty of players that are actually on the actual team right now, including my guy Rashid Shahid. But don't think I'm going to be trading anybody else. And we'll just have good depth with some former first-round picks like Peyton Turner uh, Isaiah Foskey was top of the second, right? But, I mean, not exactly what you're looking for. Rish, uh, Rashid Shahid just runs by everybody. As soon as I start to say that, though, <laughs> I actually can't win deep down the field. He's going to get gold easily. I would love to get Rashid Shahid star dev. He's been a really nice player for us in Falcons franchise, the main series on my channel. And he's really fun in real life. Like, he's not a consistent, you know, big-time wide receiver one potential guy, probably. Or certainly. But as a deep threat that can catch the ball maybe two or three times a game for, you know, 80 yards, that's a pretty good role to have. Just throw him the ball deep. He can win down the field. He's a burner. And of course, I'm not saying 80 yards every game for, you know, a burner type receiver like for Shee Shahid. He's going to have some games where he doesn't really do a whole lot. That's just what the nature of a pure deep threat receiver is. Um, but you know what? Like... In the games, he goes three for 80. He also has the potential to go five for 150 and, and, and stuff like that. So obviously those are going to be fewer and far between. You just don't really see a receiver go out and do 150 yards in a game uh, very regularly unless they're one of the best receivers in the entire league. A.J. Brown's been doing that. I mean, DeAndre Hopkins even has had a couple of big games this year for the Titans. And of course, you're going to get production like that from Justin Jefferson and Jamar Chase and some of these big time receivers, but Rashid Jaheed's not quite that. Ooh, Brian Brzee, strong camp. Let's upgrade power and finesse moves for the interior defensive lineman. He needs to be better as a pass rusher. That's what we need to focus on. Those are the guys that get the big money, and I'm willing to pay. This is the draft class. Left end at the top, couple of quarterbacks, three quarterbacks in the top five, four in the top 10. I'm, I need a quarterback, so hopefully this is a really good quarterback class. We definitely consider that, but we have a number of needs as well. I'm not going to lock in on QB, but also if we can get one early and just have that squared away, that's going to be good for us. Region Breakdown has corner, left outside linebacker, and QB being strengths of the class. But to totally rearrange these scouts, get it perfectly in line, and then we'll see what happens. Right, we got it working pretty perfectly here. Scouts should be as effective as possible, and we'll see what happens. We did win. We beat the Titans. Did Brian Brzee continue his breakout with a big game? Nope. All right. They never do. 
Nah, you know what? Sometimes they do, but he didn't. Well, big news. I'm here at week 11 to set my focus scouting for three players. Brian Brzee had a breakout challenge, and he has completed it and is now a superstar. That is huge for his development. He also gets 8,000 XP alongside. So Brian Brzee now is very well on the path to becoming a superstar type player. Obviously now has the development trait. That's just a part of it. But the fact that he's going to be able to go up big time, not only to superstar dev, but get more XP. He's going to upgrade faster because of the trait. He is going to be a very, very good player for us. And in his rookie season at just 21 years old, he's probably going to finish in the low 80s, maybe 79, 80, but I could see a world where he gets up to 81 overall pretty easily, especially if he continues to have good games like he apparently just did against, was it Tennessee? Doesn't really matter, but against somebody, we played a team probably. I'd be willing to bet, I think, but we are 2-8. and eight. We started 2-0, and oh, by the way, so this is a remarkable fall from grace. We were on such a great pace. We could have gone undefeated. I mean, the, the numbers agree. I don't know about you guys. Uh, we have negative 46 million in available uh, salary cap because we took on so much dead cap from trading some of those contracts. So that now puts us in a pretty difficult position with some of the players that we traded for. However, it's important to note that once we get to the off season, that is going to change because it's going to be the new season with new uh, salaries being paid in the 2024 year as opposed to what we're paying in 2021. So for some players, that price will obviously go up in the case of Ryan Ramchek and Marshawn Lattimore, even though we can defer those payments to add more years or more money onto the final year, saving more money now. But also for some players, 2024 is going to be cheaper than 2023 was. I think I just want to know about the quarterbacks. Those will be my three focus players. We're going to get them up to well, the top two guys up to 100%. Dom Billups, the scrambler archetype, not going to be quite that high. But we're going to really know about those guys. And we can certainly have Dom Billups up to 100% at the end of the year if we want to. But right now, I can't negotiate with any free agents or impending or potential free agents because we don't have the money to. So we have to simulate. We're not going to make the playoffs at 2-8. and eight, But simulate to the offseason and that is the season we end up going three and 14 probably picking at number one or number two overall in the draft Bengals win the super bowl over the bucks as joe burrow wins super bowl mvp as you can see byron young of the rams wins defensive rookie of the year the rookie edge rusher out of tennessee cooper cup offensive player of the year aaron donald defensive player of the year seems like the rams had quite a year but did not end up making it back to the super bowl as lamar jackson wins league mvp we head to the offseason hopefully with a little bit more money Although it's not looking good for us. So we might have just traded for players that we have no hope to re-sign. And that would be a very bad start to this 20-year rebuild. But uh, I've made mistakes before. This one might be the biggest. What a start to a 20-year rebuild. Hopefully that number goes way up from negative 40. Somewhere closer to zero, ideally. That way we could at least franchise tag Brian Burns. And outside of that, I don't really know that we traded for anyone too impactful. Negative 42 million in available salary cap. That is a devastating figure. Uh, we obviously are going to be able to pick up the fifth year option on Kyle Pitts. He's not going anywhere. But I really would like to bring back some of these players. Brian Burns is the big one. We traded a lot to get him. We cannot even afford to offer right now. How can I clear salary cap space? I don't think I can. I'm just eating too much dead money right now aka cap penalty and i really can't save a lot of money either negative 21 and a half million cap space um yeah we are in a bad spot so the next thing i'm gonna try is i didn't end up trading alvin Kamara, by the way the next thing i'm gonna try is restructuring these contracts to create more money now to, so that we actually have a little bit of flexibility. As you can see, our 2024 estimated cap space is over a hundred million. So we can afford to overpay uh, in the future. Just we need to create as much space as possible now. There is a light at the end of the tunnel. It just is going to be by restructuring all these deals. Chris Olave, by the way, upgraded to superstar development. That's big. We're also gonna restructure his contract. And listen, is there not a team in the league more adept at working around the salary cap than the Saints. The Rams have kind of been in that conversation as well, but the Saints have such a way of structuring contracts and adding void years to just basically cheat the salary cap. 
And we can't do that here at Madden. So all we can do is restructure these deals and kind of hope for the best. But we're paying guys like Colin Saunders and Foster Moreau all this money. We need to move it around where we can. We've created cap space. We now have money. But do we have enough to even offer a guy like Brian Burns to then franchise tag him? I don't know. We're all the way up to 3.7 million in available salary cap. Wow. So here's what I can do. I can offer Brian Burns the worst contract of all time, the lowest thing I can possibly offer, and then I'm going to franchise tag him, and that'll be that. He's going to decline this. That's okay. But you actually, again, don't have a choice. We're going to accept the fifth-year option on Kyle Pitts, franchise tag Brian Burns, keeps him around for another year. We'll renegotiate later. We go back into the negative, which is fine. And we're going to just unfortunately lose out on Xavier McKinney, Cesar Ruiz, Rashid Shahid, um, Zach Bond, I guess. Like, it sucks, but it is what it is. So we have the number one overall pick in the draft, which is interesting because if we wanted to take a quarterback right now, we could. Dorian Bloom is the only round one guy we know about. Now, Noah McPherson round one to two could be like near the same overall, but... I don't know if this is the draft to take a quarterback. You have the number one overall pick. It's rare to have that. Bloom is 23 already, which if I had the choice, I'd prefer somebody 21 years old or even 20, since we're seeing those pop up in drafts more often now. I think the best move, as many of you are going to know already, is to trade down. Get as much value for the number one overall pick as I can, and then take whatever is available after that. And I think I like this package from the Dolphins. We do have to move all the way down to 12, but we get a first next year and in 2026, a second this year, and then a couple of day three picks. I'm going to move all the way down to 12 for a package of three first rounders and a second rounder. And I think just simulate to pick 12. We don't have to win it all in year one or year two, I guess. So we're going to get what we can uh, for compensation. And then hopefully draft a couple of pretty good players. Now, there was a top five talent supposed to go somewhere in the 20s. Roosevelt Booth, 21 years old, 6'4", 203. We know for a fact he's a top five talent in the entire class. And he's a six foot four corner with A press and A hit power. So he's going to put you in a booth with him. You're not going anywhere. I don't know. There's something there. Uh, I think we're going to end up drafting him at number 12. Maybe another trade down because he should be available for a while. We could draft somebody here. I'm not sure he's going to make it to 23. So I want to make sure that we don't actually miss on him. If somebody wants to move up a little bit, maybe a team picking like 18th in the draft and we can pick up another uh, draft selection, I might look to do that. But otherwise, I think we might just stick. Holt at 17, I'd get a four. It's not like too enticing. I wonder if I could end up getting a higher pick if I move some other picks. But I do like the idea of trading with Indianapolis. Okay, this is the trade we're doing. I am trading a one this year, number 12, a two in 2026 for number 17 and a second this year. So I know it seems like we're just throwing in three sixth round picks, but it's really just a pick swap. I want another pick in 2024. I'm okay trading the uh, selection in 2026. I hope we're a little bit better by that point. And we'll simulate to number 17 as Joe Copper gets drafted. And uh, hopefully our corner is still available. Pretty disappointed if he was gone. And he is still available. I'm not going to mess with it. We're going to draft Roosevelt, uh, Roosevelt Booth here. It's only 21 years old. Ideally, we have him on the Saints for 15 years of this 20-year rebuild. Or, you know, something close to that. He only has normal development which is a little bit disappointing for a top five talent in the draft, but a corner with 94 speed, 94 change of direction at 21 years old, he's going to end up being a really high overall player. Normal dev or not. There actually goes a quarterback at number 22. We still could look to draft a QB if we wanted to. Dom Billups is here. Aiden Lafferty, but obviously I don't think we're going to go that route. I have a couple of these receivers uh, scouted. And Chance Williams could be worth taking a chance on. C short, B medium, and A to C deep route running. B catching is pretty good. And he's a playmaker archetype. So he should be pretty good with the football in his hands. 
And then Daryl McNeil is the same build. Only D catch in traffic, but that's not actually so bad. He's got also elite acceleration, very fast. Route running's really solid. It's just catch in traffic that doesn't look so great and spectacular catch, really. Another only 21-year-old receiver. I know he doesn't look amazing because you see D catch in traffic, but it's probably like 70-something. I don't think he would be a bad pick. I really don't. Just got to find out if there is a better pick, and there might be. Some pretty good-looking offensive linemen in this class as well. This is a good spot to be in. So I'll tell you what. I'm going to take a chance on one of these receivers. I don't know why I feel more inclined to take Daryl McNeil. 6'2". He is faster. We know more about him for sure. And he's a year younger. Daryl McNeil only has normal development, of course. Looks to be a very good athlete. Not a great start in terms of the depth trade. This rebuild is off to a very interesting start. Uh, hopefully, we're, uh, you know, we're able to still crush it over the next 19 years or so. We'll see what ends up happening. And hopefully some of the players I want are still available. So there is a guard that looks okay. But a lot of the players I was looking at just flew off the board, unfortunately. We have Korean waters here. No, it's Korin, but there's some joke with Kim Jong-un there. I just don't know if I'm going to make it. The guy invented the hamburger. Am I supposed to talk trash? I don't think so. Okay, Tevin McRae. He is 22 years old at NC State. 6'4", or excuse me, 6'3", 344. Does have hidden dev, 88 strength, 83 acceleration. I'll tell you what, I need a replacement because we just lost Cesar Ruiz. Tevin McRae from NC State will be that replacement. And with hidden dev, you can be pretty excited about his future. You know, I don't care about it so much for every position, but for the offensive line, I really do think it's imperative. Otherwise, those guys will literally never develop. And I think we should probably at least consider drafting somebody here. It might end up being a trade down spot. Skip the combine. Said, hey, Roger Goodell, up yours. I also worry about, did he skip the combine because he sucks athletically? He's got just good speed and poor acceleration, which is concerning. This might be a trade down spot and see if he's still available with our next pick, probably. Okay, I'm trading my second round pick and a fifth next year for a two and a three next year from Chicago. So just getting more picks. Uh, next year. So I think that's a pretty good trade for us. And uh, do I take... Oh, Kadarius Roper? Gotta be careful with that. Gotta be real careful. I don't know why. There's just something about the safety that interests me. I don't know. He's probably not the best player to take. A number of decent looking linebackers. But there's just something... Ooh. I'm actually stoked on Curtis Stokes. Oh, man. Um... There's just something about Justin Blackwell from Penn State. I don't know what it is. I just feel like he's going to be good. A pursuit, A hit power, A tackle. He's got like the skip the combine stuff. I, I'm sure it's going to be another normal dev player, but it's not. Hidden. 89 speed, 84 acceleration, 87 change of direction. 84 acceleration is piss poor. Maybe he ends up being good. I don't know. I just... I was so inclined to draft that player for some reason. Don't really know why. But it just seemed like he was going to be good. And with this pick, I have to take Stokes, right? Curtis Stokes from LSU, and then we might end up trading up or something. But he looked really good. Only 21 years old, elite speed. Skill-wise, A hit power, A zone, A awareness. D pursuits, really bad. But overall, should be quite good. Hidden dev, 91 speed, 79 strength, 89 acceleration. I mean, at 6'2", 247, he is faster and way quicker, way more explosive than the safety, who's like 30 pounds lighter. Okay, kind of an interesting trade here. I'm trading a 6 and a 7 this year, a 2 and a 3 next year, to get two third round picks right now. So, we've done a lot of moving around. We'll see if it ends up making sense for us. I think it has, because we got future first round picks. Uh, but there are a couple of players I like in this range. Joe Kovacs might actually be number one. He's got A Pursuit, B Blockshed, also 21 years old, 6'3", 250 out of UF. Elite Acceleration, Elite Speed for an outside linebacker. But look at all those A's. Play Rec, Pursuit, Tackle, could be, I don't know. B Blockshed, B Man Coverage. Just think he he's going to end up being really good. We're going to draft him here. It does have Hidden Dev, 86 Speed, 90 Acceleration, 
78 strength. I just think he's going to end up being a really nice player. And I like drafting these 21-year-olds because we're going to have them for a super long time. They're going to be very developable as Corrin Waters goes. And this is actually our last pick of the draft here. And we have a couple of players that I have watched here. Brooks Creech might be the one. Pretty athletic, elite acceleration and agility. A run block finesse, A lead block, B pass block, A awareness. I've seen enough. Brooks Creech. Oh, that's not a C. Brooks Krieg could be like Irish and could just Cray. I, I have Cray. I have no idea how we're going to pronounce that. I'm going to call him Krieg. 84 strength and acceleration, 70 speed. Hidden dev on the offensive line. So I think we've done a really good job in this draft, actually, after uh, a couple of picks that looked scary at first with no hidden development. But we know for a fact one of them is a top five talent in the entire draft. So really think we did a really good job getting future picks as well as capitalizing within this draft. And uh, hopefully we just crushed it. Negative 22 million in available salary cap. Again, that will change when we go to re-sign players. But this is what it looks like. I think we've done a fantastic job. Roosevelt Booth is a 78 overall. Again, normal dev. Hopefully we get that up at some point. Coverage is great. Press is really nice. Overall, he just looks like a really good player. Hit power is not bad either, but 94 speed at 6 foot 4 is crazy. Daryl McNeil is a 77. Also not even bad. I just worry that he's Cordero Patterson, especially out of Tennessee. That's probably why I'm thinking that. Great speed, great route running. Or speed's not great. Speed's good. Spectacular catch isn't too bad. Catching traffic at 76 really isn't too bad. 94 change of direction, 87 ball carrier vision. It's a monster kick returner, if nothing else, but he has all the traits. If we can win him rookie of the year, instant star dev. Tevin McRae's a 74. Blackwell is only a 72. Curtis Stokes and Joe Kovacs are both 75 overall, and Krieg is a 71. I feel like we absolutely crushed the draft. I think we did phenomenally. Now, the top player was a halfback, also a decent safety in there as well, but Booth is a top three player, tied for number one. And then uh, I, I looked at this slot receiver. Oh, maybe this, no, maybe I didn't. Maybe this is somebody else. 77 is pretty good. James Isaac I looked at. Daryl McNeil's a top 10 player in the draft. Yeah, I feel like we did pretty well. Obviously, you would have preferred, you know, a hidden dev trait like Chance Williams had. But, you know, it's slightly worse, I guess, 76 overall compared to 77. I think we crushed it. We did really, really well. It was a pretty good draft class overall. Dorian Bloom ends up being a 76 overall with hidden dev. I mean, he looks good. Not his face. His face does not look good, but his, his attributes look pretty good. Ooh, Brian Brzee's up to Superstar X Factor? Just cuz at Super Bowl week. Okay, this is a game changer for the rebuild. One of our young stars is now a young Superstar X Factor. That is really nice. So we still don't have a quarterback, but we got a big upgrade at receiver with Daryl McNeil. We love what we have at tight end. And then... I think we did a pretty good job with the offensive line. McCray is going to be a starter right away. And Krieg's got to be a starter. But he's too small to play guard, so I'm probably just going to move Eric McCoy. Who is a little light for a guard at 303. But I think he can do it. We're going to move him over. It's better than playing like 6'1", 300 at guard. So Eric McCoy is going to slide over. And, um... Yeah, I, I think that's going to be a good move for us long term. Hate to take playtime away from Nick Saldaveri, the ODU prospect, but he could end up being something in real life, just probably not in my 20-year rebuild. Probably should trade Alvin Kamara. And then defensively, we have a bunch of new starters. Stokes, Kovacs, team up with Pete Warner. Safety is an issue for us. It's probably a big reason why I wanted to draft uh, Justin Blackwell. And then Granderson, Shepard, Foskey's just a backup right now. Uh, Booth could play over Paulson Adebo. And we'll do training camp, try to get some skill point upgrades and hopefully a dev trade upgrade as well. We'll see if I actually have the cap room to trade Alvin Kamara. I guess we might not. I'll try to at the midseason mark if I can. But there's also a possibility he just stays with the Saints. 
I know we butchered the entire team. I'm recording this, I think, a day or two later uh, than when I started. These take so long. It's tough to just, like, carve out the 15 hours of recording. So I, I split it up over a couple days when I can. But uh, I know I've talked about it. I know a lot of you are not going to be happy with how I butchered the team, and we kind of put ourselves in a hole right away. But I think it's going to work out long term, and that's really what, all I'm concerned about. Done a pretty good job through training camp so far. With the six foot four rookie corner Roosevelt Booth, it's going to be impossible not to get gold the first try on this. He's just so tall and uh, also so fast. <laughs> There's nothing Jake Hayner can do. It's going to be an interception every time. We're going to run the route for him. Excuse me. Uh, except for that time, because I wanted to just see what it would be like if we didn't. <laughs> uh, but I should have waited to use him in the other one, where you actually don't know the route in advance, because then the height is super important. You can kind of use your, like, lesser defensive back in this drill. So I made a bit of a mistake there. But this is the 20-year rebuild of mistakes. It, uh, makes sense. We need Justin Blackwell to have a big-time training camp. He does have Hidden Dev. But getting him skill point upgrades is going to be absolutely massive in his development. Because he's a lower overall. So we need all the skill point help we can get. Chris Olave also went up to Superstar Dev Super Bowl week. I didn't notice any of these Dev trade upgrades. I'm almost wondering if we have any else or other ones on defense I didn't notice. I don't think we do. Because I think Marshawn Lattimore was Star Dev before. I think Pete Warner... Or Marshawn was Superstar. I think Pete Warner was Star Dev before. But I guess I'm not positive. His pass coverage needs to go up, though, that's for sure. But 77 block shed for a rookie linebacker is actually really, really good. And he's going to play outside. I think Warner is left. No, he's right. So let's let's flip him around. That makes him a scheme fit. And then Curtis Stokes, pretty excited about. He has 74 block shed. Tackle and hit power is already really high. And coverage really isn't particularly bad either. I think I am just going to go pass coverage here. It doesn't change his overall or anything like that, but it should make him better in the long run. Still no quarterback, so we are going to be not so great in 2024. Although Curtis Stokes with a strong camp, let's get his play rec up. I think it's easy to upgrade tackle, and his tackle is already quite high. The plus five to play rec is going to be pretty nice. I think in my commander's rebuild I posted recently, we just for some reason couldn't get a play rec upgrade on somebody. I think it was uh, one of our edge rushers. And even though he had like 90 plus finesse moves and his block shed was in the 80s, high 80s, his play rec was still in like the high 60s. So that was a little bit frustrating. But Kovacs is actually getting upgraded pretty quickly. True 76 overall. And I'm focusing on coverage right now, just trying to make him a more well-rounded player. But uh, I, I feel really excited about where the team is. It's just going to be about developing rookies here in year one. And... Uh, that's pretty much it. Okay, these are the prospects for this upcoming draft. Do have a couple quarterbacks, top five. Daquan Bridges. That's nice. It's interesting that these guys in week one are already scouted. I feel like they usually aren't, right? Some of them are at 0%. Jawara Bigsby. Heck of a name. Damon Virgil. They got some names in here. Where are the quarterbacks? Could be a couple good ones. But again, the strengths of this class are... Corner and wide receiver. I don't even have to move anything. We could, I guess, take another corner, right? But it's not at the top of the list of needs right now. We actually beat the Chiefs 23-21 in week one. Tell me we got the upgrade for the rookie linebacker, Curtis Stokes. Nope. <laughs> There's a long kind of lead in. I'm like, oh, maybe it's building up to something. No, it wasn't. We're 2-0. Why do we keep winning? We're, we have a terrible offense. Our defense is great, though. They're balling out. So we'll see. Do we have money to negotiate, by the way? 10 players. We have $94 million now to bring back Brian Burns, Pete Warner, Paul Snadebo, Juwan Johnson. Hayton Turner can walk. Probably. Probably going to pick up the fifth-year options on both Olave and Penning. Tano Passanio can probably walk. Yeah, I want these uh, top several players back. What does Brian Burns want? What are your motivations? He just wants to be in a different scheme. So, 
Eh, we'll see. Am I really gonna give Pete Warner over 10 mil per year? That feels so dumb. I mean, for three years, fine. All right. We'll probably look to draft somebody to play over him at some point. Boston Adebo is at least a good third corner and very inexpensive. We definitely want him back for a while. So huge extension for Paulson Adebo. And Brian Burns, we need to keep around. I just, I don't think a scheme fit change will do much good. We're just going to give him a big time contract. Yeah, probably something like six years, up the money a little bit. It gets as expensive as 25 mil per year, which really isn't all that bad. Spring Brian Burns back and he returns. I don't know how we're four and three at the midseason mark. Jake Hayner just has that dog in him, which if you watch that Fresno State UCLA game from a couple of years ago, you already know that. So maybe we got our franchise QB. Tommy Toon? Why do I know that name? I know it because it's this guy. I, I don't know how I know him, but I know him, I guess. And now we have to draft him. He's man to man with a zone coverage. That looks like it could be a generational player. Like, for real. Or, or at least the best player in the class, or close to it. And we didn't end up making the playoffs. 7 and 10. Our available salary cap is still being shown as negative 7.8, because that's for 2024. And when we were re-signing players, that's for 2025. So our 2025 salary cap is going to be massive. We should be able to spend money in free agency if we want to do that. But I'll say that uh, we're probably not going to spend a ton of money in free agency. And we'll take a look at the stats real quick. I don't think they're going to be anything special. We were not that great of a team. We got off to a good start. We were at least 5-4 and four at one point. And our second half of the season was disastrous, to say the least. I still have not traded Alvin Kamara. Uh, Chris Olave with a nice year. Daryl McNeil had a heck of a rookie season. That's going to be a potentially offensive rookie of the year. Really, really good numbers for him as he goes over 1,000 yards. Kyle Pitts doesn't do a whole lot. And then defensively, look at our rookie linebackers having so many tackles. Kovacs had 146, including 9 for loss. 119 for Stokes, 4 for loss, half a sack and a pick. Brian Brzee had 23 TFLs. Nathan Shepard had 15. 14 and a half sacks for Brian Burns. And then not really a ton of interceptions at all. But not too bad from the team, just... A massive, massive, massive second half collapse. I mean, we couldn't have done well at all in the second half. We were about, you know, even or better going into week 12. And then we lost out, actually. Okay? Lost every single game. I'd be happy to see some dev trade upgrade Super Bowl week, though. Show me a couple of those rookies as the Browns and the Eagles will play in the Super Bowl. And Joe Kovacs does have two skill points, so that unfortunately means he won defensive rookie of the year but the receiver did not his dev trade is up to superstar i'm guessing he had star and got upgraded no he actually just had superstar dev so no upgrade for him makes the pro bowl as a rookie which is pretty cool but he just had superstar very nice let's get his coverage up so the offensive lineman had star dev camara i mean we gotta trade him now probably right defensively just star dev across the board, except for Joe Kovacs. No upgrade for Booth. Blackwell still star. Stokes still star. Curtis Granderson, though, got upgraded to star. Or Curtis Granderson. What is I'm a, What am I? In Yankees mode? Carl Granderson. Unreal, I just did that. But don't worry about it. He's great now. Eagles beat the Browns in the Super Bowl. We had, of course, the defensive rookie of the year in the NFC. NFC Rookie of the Year was a quarterback, of course. Dorian Bloom with the Seahawks. Yeah, tough to go up against a quarterback and win Offensive Rookie of the Year. Just not easy to do at all. Do we have anybody to re-sign? $47 million. We're just picking up options here. It's really just going to be Juwan Johnson, who we don't really need. Trevor Penning going to pick up his fifth-year option. Still want to try and develop him. And yeah, the rest can walk. But I do want to at least try to bring back Juwan Johnson. Like a two-year deal... I'll raise the money. It's way too expensive. I don't know why he would ever decline that. He's never going to find that in free agency. There's just no way. Nick Chubb here in free agency. Jeremiah Usu koromoa would not be a bad replacement for Pete Warner. We could definitely consider that. I just don't really think I'm going to be 
spending a whole lot of money in free agency is the thing. Uh, I do want Ryan Stonehouse just locking down a punter for the whole rebuild. I think could be pretty smart. So we'll offer him. But, I mean... JOK probably just not worth it to me. We're just going to be looking to save money mostly. Okay, so this is interesting. This is interesting. Daquan Bridges is a top five talent at defensive tackle. Bo Sheehan, the QB from Boston College, is also a top five talent. It's time to take a quarterback. And then there are a number of other players that look pretty good as well. Tommy Toon supposed to go at 11. He's going to be unbelievable. This quarterback's no good. Tommy Smith, the center, looks unbelievable. And at 6'5", 294, we could honestly even consider sliding him out to play tackle. He's got the size for it. A little light, of course, but definitely has the height. There's so many good-looking players in this class. Even these corners, 6'3", and 6'4", with great-looking attributes. I have no idea how to handle this draft. We pick at number 12 and 13... Is that it? That is it. So if we want to move up for these guys, we are going to have to trade a lot. There's no way I can get up to number one. So we're just going to let the defensive tackle go off the board. Daquan Bridges to the Patriots and the Bears at number two. We'll take Eric Jones, a right end from Ole Miss. But if I want this quarterback, we have to trade up to number three. Just don't know how I'm going to do that quite yet. We have a number of picks, two this year, two next year. So we should be able to make it happen. But I'd love to, like, trade Alvin Kamara. I just don't think that the Jets are going to have any interest in him. And they really don't. Oh, okay, that's just going to go through. It's a first-round pick next year and a first-round pick this year for number three. This is for the quarterback. This is our future franchise guy. At least, that's what I'm hoping. Traded a lot to get him. He better be good. He's a top five talent. We know he's good. 6'4", 231, only 21 years old from BC. He's got elite throw power, decent movement skills, and pretty good accuracy overall. More of a pocket passer than anything else, but that's all we need. Welcome Bo Sheehan to the Saints. Does have hidden dev, 97 throw power. Absolute cannon. 79 speed, 83 acceleration, 80 change of direction. That's not too bad either. But he's got, you know, one of the strongest arms we've probably ever seen. And Tommy Toon also has elite speed, by the way. This is just probably a player we need to draft. I, I just can't really make it any more obvious that that guy is super, super good. But the problem is, I think a lot of players in this class are really, really good. So it's going to be really impossible to get everybody we want. Don't have any second round picks. Traded our first rounder next year. And we only have one now. It's, uh, we're going to have to do a lot of movement. A lot of movement. We are trading a one, two sixes, and a four to get a first round pick here from the Packers. We're only trading up a couple of spots. So, didn't have to really give them too much to get that to happen. We now pick at number nine, and then our next pick is not till the third round. I don't think that's going to end up staying the same. We're drafting Tommy Toon from Northwestern. Welcome to the Saints Elite Speed. Our secondary is going to be complete after this, pretty much. Like, corner at least. We'll have Paulson Adebo, Tommy Toon, Marshawn Lattimore in the corner we drafted last year. And you're like, why do you need a corner? You have corners. Somebody can move back to safety. Maybe the six foot four corner could happen. And this is just too good of a player to pass on, in my opinion. Does have hidden dev, 95 speed, 91 change of direction, 91 acceleration, 87 agility. Just going to be a really, really, really good player with phenomenal coverage skills. A zone, A man, surely with that man-to-man -man archetype. Just way too good to pass on. But I'm trying to figure out how to move up again because some of these players are just way too good to pass on. I mean, Tommy Smith is going to be an amazing offensive lineman. These other corners look sick. I know we don't necessarily need another corner, especially after drafting one right there. But um, some of them might just be kind of too good to pass on and we can move guys around. It's going to be a little bit difficult to make a decision, but that's what we're going to have to do. Jelani Johnson. He sucks. Oh my goodness. UDFA wide receiver at number 32. There goes Tommy Smith at 21. I was waiting for somebody to go off the board before I traded up that I liked. So it would make the decision a little bit easier. Ends up being the center that I kind of thought about uh, at tackle, which 
would have been an interesting move. But, you know, it's not about the height. It's about the arm length. But that isn't really a thing in Madden. Or it definitely is not a thing. So uh, I was going to be totally fine with taking a center and potentially making him learn to play tackle. But this corner, Eric Phillips, has elite speed. Ran 4-2-4 at his pro day with A-man, B-press, B-zone. That's a player we have to draft. So the next corner that goes off the board, unless he jumps up uh, ahead of the two guys ahead of him, I will be moving up. We'll see when that happens. If he ends up getting drafted ahead of the other corners, I'm going to be pretty sad. But if we can somehow make it to the second round and not have to trade all the way up back into the first, that would be sweet. There goes Frank McClendon. All right, it's time. I'm going to trade with the Browns. It's going to be just a 2027 round one pick to get number 31 from the Browns. But we know we're going to get pretty much a top five talent guaranteed in this class by how athletic this guy is, plus his cover skills. I know it seems like we're drafting too many corners, but obviously you guys know that there is a plan. So this is the move. Eric Phillips, welcome to the team. Hidden dev, phenomenal athlete, and we will find a spot for him for sure. We will find a spot. Just too talented not to go up and get. And this receiver looks really good as well. This could potentially be our third receiver. Steve Samuels from Bama. Do we maybe try to send Alvin Kamara to Philadelphia? Could be could be an interesting idea. Trading Alvin Kamara to the Lions. It's a third round pick this year and next or next year and the year after that for a second round pick this year and the year after that plus Alex Anzalone. I don't really want Alex Anzalone. It was just to make it work for the uh, the salary cap. And then I think it's going to be easier to trade up from this spot than the third round to get this pick from the Eagles. They didn't have the cap room to get it done with Kamara. So he ends up going elsewhere. We don't really have a ton of picks. But there's so many players I like right now that I've kind of been okay with giving them away. Okay, trading a two and a three this year. Two sevens as well for number 31 and also a 2027 third round pick. And it's it's crazy what I'm doing. I totally get that. But you know what? We're trying to build a dynasty and I don't care how we do it. Steve Samuels, 6'5", 220 from Bama, 21 years old. Very solid overall athlete and really well-rounded as a player. A catch in traffic and catching. B deep route running and spectacular catch. C, short route running, medium route running, and release. He's just really well-rounded, should be really good. Normal dev, and speaking of well-rounded, 91 acceleration, 91 agility, 91 change of direction, 91 jumping, 91 speed. A lot of 91s for Steve Samuels. Hopefully ends up being a 91 overall. I'd be happy with that. But that's a decent third receiver. Unfortunately, no hidden dev. But that is going to be the end of the draft. It's been a crazy video so far. I get it, but... We're going to end up building a dynasty. It's going to be all okay. Draft recap. Okay, see, like, it was worth it. Bo Sheehan is a 79 overall, which is incredibly high for a rookie quarterback. Yeah, like, the other archetypes, like, Field General is only a 75, but he's got a cannon of an arm. Deep accuracy is good. Obviously, just incredible throw power. And just got to upgrade that accuracy. He's going to end up being amazing. So that's an incredible first pick. Incredible. Tommy Toon is an 80. Man-to-man, -man 80. Zone's an 80. Uh, man coverage is 81. Press is good. Hit power is good. Block shedding's not terrible. Like, he realistically could go back and play safety. I don't think he's going to, but I think he could. Eric Phillips is a 76. 6'4", 180. There's no way he's, he, uh, he's moving back to safety, though. He's definitely more of a boundary corner. And then Steve Samuels ends up being a 74 overall, just across the board. He's so well-rounded. Decent traits. Yeah, I mean, decent player. 85 catching, 85 catching traffic. It's almost a wonder he's such a low overall. Tommy Smith ends up being an 83, by the way. I knew he was going to be insane, but... Didn't make sense for us to draft him in the end. But, I mean, how do you how do you not draft a player as good as he is? I just felt like our offensive line was good enough. And uh, outside of him, Tommy Toon was the second highest overall player. Bo Sheehan was the third. There's the defensive tackle. Jimmy Baber ends up being rated pretty well. Good fullback in the sixth. A couple of good safeties as well. 
Uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy about the way this draft went, though. L Swede, do we get Lima Swede? Texas legend? No, it's Ladarius Swede. Star dev at Arkansas State. All right, I mean, decent depth. Okay, now who's moving back to safety? In my head, Paulson Adebo is a decent candidate. And I think he's just going to end up being the guy that goes. His man coverage is so terrible that he plays free safety now. So the great part about being a 79 overall is that immediately, once we get the skill point here, we will know whether our quarterback has superstar dev or higher or not. Because when he goes up to an 80 overall, he will have either an ability slot gained or he won't when he gets to an 80. So... Either way, at least we'll know. Doesn't really change anything. He's still going to be our starting quarterback. But knowing is nice. I mean, one thing we can tell instantly is, uh, yeah, arm strength is not going to be a problem. He's got a cannon. He's throwing bullets. And uh, that's a quarterback you can build around. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's whipping it in there. I don't know that his release is particularly quick. And I'm not sure he moves particularly well, despite what the attributes say. Uh, but that ball certainly fires out. And we're going to get gold so easily. And uh, we'll see if we can break 30k here. And uh, <laughs> yeah, I think we're going to be able to. Nah, we're not. Never mind. The one thing, though, when you're doing these receiver drills with a quarterback with an incredible arm is you have to wait way longer to actually get him to throw the ball because it comes out so quick. With Jake Hayner, I had to call for it pretty early. But with this quarterback, if I call for it early, he's throwing the ball short of the target by a lot. Because he's just got such a, you know, a strong arm. So you got to wait a little bit and then uh, let it rip. And, of course, throws it basically too far. Not quite, but close. But it's easy gold for McNeil. If we can get him up to star dev, man, that would be so big. So, unfortunately, no dev trade upgrades, but we do have the moment of truth here. Or do we? Because I'm going to do Improviser. He might not go up to an 80 overall. So we actually won't know about his dev trait yet. But getting his throw on the run and especially throw under pressure better is going to make him that much better of a player. So it's only 2025. We certainly need to improve our offense. I think we have our franchise quarterback. Need to find a running back. I know we traded Kamara. We need to find probably a better receiver. And then defensively, Carl Granderson's going to start to regress. We don't have a defensive tackle that's good outside of Brian Brzee, really. Colin Saunders in there. I obviously love our corners. They're in a fantastic spot. We have depth. We have talent. Could end up trading one of those guys if you think we have too many corners. It's a possibility. But for right now, we're going to hold on to them. And then specialist-wise, probably just want to play Kovacs over Warner because he's just not going to end up developing too much. Samuels can be our slot receiver. Kendra Miller uh, playing off in tune in the nickel. And that's fine. We're going to need edge help. We're going to uh, need another linebacker. We might need another safety at some point. But that is a problem for another day. Well, maybe today, but not this particular moment in time. Oh, wow. 0-6. Oh, Interesting. We have the 31st ranked defense. And the 24th ranked offense. We are unbelievably bad with an 85 overall team. Bo Sheen is an 80 and it does say abilities. He is a superstar development player. Always hoping for superstar X Factor. Didn't happen, but that's okay. Why are we 0-6? I think is a fair question. And plus one throw power. He doesn't need it, but okay. I don't know why we're doing so poorly. We have a really good team. We're an 85 overall, and we are playing like the worst team in the entire league. We have yet to win a game. And that's why we are projected to have the first overall pick in the draft. No first rounder in 2027, which would be fine. Man, um, I don't know why we're doing so badly. I felt like this was going to be a pretty good team this year. And just not yet. 14 players will be free agents. Kyle Pitt, Alante Taylor, we don't need. We can trade. Foster Moreau, we don't need, but we'll have pretty much no value. And Brian Brzee, we're going to pick up his fifth-year option. But it's really just Kyle Pitts who doesn't want to be here. He wants no state income tax. It just doesn't matter what you want, Kyle. 
We're going to give him a seven-year extension, make him the highest play, uh, paid tight end of all time, it looks like. Trading Elante Taylor, a five in 2027 and a four in 2028 or a third in 2027. So it's a slight trade up. Elante Taylor just was not going to be a part of our future, which you know, he's a decent player. Just didn't really end up working out for us here. Too many good corners in the draft as we have another class with corner and wide receiver as the main talents. I'd love anything else at this point. We still do need receiver. Corner, obviously not an issue at all. And there seem to be some good quarterbacks in this class. The coldest Stevenson? The coldest? Now, there is a player named the coldest in college football, the coldest Crawford. How do I not draft the coldest Stevenson? He's the coldest to ever do it. How do we not draft him? 0 oh, 7, but we do have a breakout quarterback challenge to go up to Superstar X Factor. We're going to accept it. I'm sure he's not going to end up getting it. We've yet to win a game, but. There is a chance, I guess, that Bo Sheen can go up to Superstar X Factor as a rookie. We are 0-7. I don't know what's going on. We cannot catch a break right now. Tommy Toon has abilities. And Superstar X Factor. I, I knew as soon as I saw the name, Tommy Toon had to be drafted. Yeah, he's pretty good. I think we definitely made the right move by going up to get him. For sure. We won 15-14, but there's no way he threw for enough yards. And I'm going to say he's definitely not going up to Superstar X Factor. Did get our first win, though. Like, look at this. Malik Blackshear, because he's a playmaker type, is going to be more of a short, medium route runner and then juke ball carrier vision. He's a round one talent, despite having D catch in traffic, C catching, D deep route running, and D release. Isn't that something? Like, receiver is such an interesting position to scout now in Madden. You really got to look into these guys. Now, we ended up having a decent-ish second half of the year. We finished 6-11, and 11, which is still bad. But from our 0-7 start, that's amazing. Spo Sheehan throws for over 4,000 yards, 26 touchdowns to 16 picks. We had no running game, and I think that was probably a big part of the reason we struggled to find success. Kyle Pitts dominated. Daryl McNeil went over 1,000 yards. Steve Samuels had 12 touchdowns. Olave was kind of in the middle of everybody. And then defensively, Curtis Stokes with 150 tackles, 15 for loss, four and a half sacks and a pick. That seems like defensive player of the year type stuff, but it's probably just going to go to some pass rusher. Joe Kovacs, very productive as well. And 20 TFLs for Burns and Brzee, the double B combo of Brzee, Brian Brzee, Brian Burns. And they spell Brian differently. I don't know. There's not much there. Marshawn Lattimore, four picks. We had a, a lot of interceptions, actually, for the team. Just the defense really didn't play all that well. So just one of those things, I guess. I am curious. I never really show this, but I am curious where we are for Defensive Player of the Year. I don't think we're going to get it, but I want to say we're going to be fairly close. Top 10, at least. All right. Take number six. It would have been a battle of the bay. But the Raiders moved to Las Vegas. 49ers and Raiders Super Bowl. Did Steve Samuels go up to star dev? Did he win Offensive Rookie of the Year? He sure did. 12 touchdowns won him Offensive Rookie of the Year. So Steve Samuels now, we might have something here. It's a nice boost. So he's a 78 overall, just 21 years old. Yeah, that feels pretty good. Niners end up winning by a touchdown. Dre Greenlaw, Super Bowl MVP. And not much for us in yearly awards other than NFC Offensive Player of the Year, which isn't a real-life thing, but it works here in Madden, and I'm happy for it, because that's how we get star dev on Steve Samuels and a number of players that don't really need to be upgraded here. We'll go into the offseason with some momentum, maybe? We had a good second half of the year. We just have to have not the worst possible first half of the year, and we'll end up being better in a... Did I just simulate to the whole offseason? No, I don't think so. No, no, we didn't. Do we just need to uh, not suck as much is what I'm trying to get at. Tyron Matthew in free agency, as is Travis Kelsey at 36 years old. We are not going to be doing anything here. Like Cam Akers maybe for a year because I need somebody to play running back if we don't get to coldest. But uh, maybe even two years. Wouldn't be a worse or a terrible backup, right? So we'll at least offer Cam Akers 
and he does end up signing. So there we go. We have our running back. I want to be able to do better. And if we draft a running back, which seems crazy so high in the draft, but I just might do it anyway. If we draft a running back real high and he's a lower overall, like maybe he's a 78, 79, maybe even 76 with Hidden Dev, I'll probably just end up playing him over Cam Akers anyway. Also, they definitely had a new update. You see that face in the top right, Deion Thomas? That has, I, it's been in the game because I, you know, use the custom draft classes a lot, a lot of editing, a lot of changing things around for my 2024 class. And even when we draft players in Falcons franchise, I change their, their likeness after. But that has not been one that you see in the draft classes. It just seems so out of place. I have not seen that that particular like headshot. It just hasn't been in the game. So they've, they're at least changing something. I don't know what purpose it's going to serve, but it's, it's nice to see some of the newer uh, headshots they actually have. So Dakota Stevenson, by the way, is a guaranteed top five talent, supposed to go at number seven overall. We pick at no longer one, we pick at nine. Okay, that's crazy. A lot of these receivers are true round one talents. This middle linebacker is a round one talent as well, which I think is pretty interesting. But I thought I'd be able to trade down. I'm gonna have to trade up for this running back, but that's exactly what we're gonna do. Decoldis Stevenson will be a saint. Really solid athlete. And he seems like he's a bit of a bruiser. Not really uh, an elusive back, but that's his archetype. But he doesn't have great juke or spin. But his break tackle, trucking stiff arm all seem pretty good. I don't know. He's He's got too good of a name to not draft him. I drafted Tommy Toon on name. We're going to do the same for DeColdest Stevenson. Trading Jake Hayner and a first number nine to the Giants for number six. So it's a very slight trade up. The running back should be available at number six. It'd be pretty sad if he's not, but he should be available. And yeah, I'm gonna take a running back top 10. DeColdis Stevenson from Ohio State is on the board and will be a saint. Our new starting running back, would I draft him if he wasn't a top five talent? Maybe not, but he is, so we are gonna draft him. Welcome to the Saints, DeColdest to ever do it, Stevenson. Great speed, acceleration's not too bad, agility's very high, that's why he's an elusive back. 92 agility, 80 strength, should be pretty fun. The Jags will give us a 2028 first round pick for 2026 round two pick nine. I'm gonna accept that. It's a long way out in the future, but it is a free first round pick essentially. Not free, but it is a first round pick. If anything, it's guaranteed plus 10 spots in the draft just uh, a few years down the line. Dude, the cornerbacks are just way too good. Every corner is like, this guy is one of the best players in the entire class. Like, all the way down the board now. Like, Taylor Lovelock's going to be good, and it makes no sense for us to draft him. Just absolutely none. This is an interesting looking linebacker. I don't think good enough to draft here. Like, definitely could be. If he was 21, I'd probably draft him. But just being 23, I don't think it's a big enough difference away from Pete Warner to want to use that guy as the replacement. This doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. Peter Rudd could be interesting. Yeah, looks to be a good enough athlete. Decent enough attributes from what we can see. Peter Rudd does have hidden dev. 89 strength, 83 acceleration. Could end up starting for us at some point. And DeColdest is a 77 overall. So not generational, which I think we could pretty easily tell based on his juke move and his spin move being pretty bad. But we had to. He's very well-rounded and hopefully ends up being a monster for us. But yeah, very far from generational, I would say. And there was actually an 81 overall safety in this class. Andrew Battle from Oklahoma is slow as anything, but great pursuit and hit power. I mean, I wouldn't be that excited about a player like this. He's got 84 speed. That's just too slow. Could never draft that player. And I don't think he'd be that good either. A little too light for a linebacker. Another great looking safety here. 
Antonio Thompson just way better. Way better. Is it really just like Pursuit? That, that is all that overall? That's crazy. Lovelock ends up being a top five player in the class, by the way. And this linebacker, I really like the look of. I just couldn't end up getting in position to draft him. He went at like 16 or something. Great speed, hit power. Coverage is pretty good, I guess. Block shedding's not all that bad. I think the fact that he was 23 ended up kind of making me go a different direction. And I'm not going to say it's the most important thing, but if you can get an extra year or two of a head start, and that's essentially what that is, it's so much more valuable before you hit that age of regression. If you draft a 23-year-old, that's pretty good. That's a 77, let's say, like that linebacker was. Well, you might have five years max of developing him, and maybe he gets up to an 87. That's great. Well, if you draft a 21-year-old, that's a 75 minus two overall, so worse right out of the gate. You might have two or three more years to develop that guy. So it just, I really prefer the players that are as, as young as you can uh, have them in the game. So 20 or 21. And it's just, it really does make a huge difference, I find. Especially in a 20-year rebuild. Like, in a, a regular rebuild, okay, it's a bit different. But if you're going 20 years, having like, you know, a, a guy guaranteed to be good for eight or nine years is like insane. So I don't know. It just feels like worth it to, you know, aim for the younger players when you can. Oh, also Curtis Stokes went up to superstar for some reason. We're, we'll check that out after if it's in the progression history. But... Yeah, I guess we can do Joe Kovacs on chase and tackle now. Okay, this is the way the team's going to look for this season. I need the team to play better. That's it. We don't have a defensive tackle two right now. And Paulson Adebo is probably not someone I can develop. He's 27 years old. Are you going into the final year of your deal? If he is, which he should be. Oh, no, I signed him for such a long time. He's under contract for his whole career. Okay. That's right, because he was cheap. Yes. No, we love Paulson Adebo. <laughs> I was just being like, if he's got an expiring contract, that'd be terrible. We'd have to re-sign him now. Uh, so good. That's not going to even be a problem. It is a huge package of picks alongside Isaiah Foskey, Kendra Miller. The big thing is we're trading two first-round picks in 2028. One is ours. One is the Jaguars, right? We are getting a first this year and next year from the Colts, as well as a second round pick this year. So I'm just banking on the fact that we are going to be good in 2028. We already didn't have our first round pick this year, which will be the 2027 draft. So we're doing a lot there. Isaiah Foskey was not going to be a part of the team. Neither was Kendra Miller. They had to go. Now I could see us being not so great because we are starting you know, a not so great rookie running back right now, but he's going to get good. He's going to be into the 80s during his rookie season without question, I would say, and hopefully has star or better development, or well, he will have star or better. Hopefully he has superstar or better development, and we'll see how this goes. I need the draft class to not just be strong at receiver and corner again, like it has been every single class. Uh, it's becoming incredibly annoying, and I have a, like a, a slight theory. I don't know if there's any weight behind it but i think that sometimes your scouts like whatever your top scout is might impact the class at those positions that's probably not true at all but for some reason in my head it's like that could be a thing now corner right end and qb are the strengths of this class we just don't really need much of that right end okay sure and uh i also like the linebackers you know what I might, I might go out and get a tier three right or defensive end outside linebacker scout and just throw them in there. I don't think I'm going to go out and get a good defensive tackle too just yet. Like I, I might sign somebody from free agency. I guess I, I'll do that now, but I'm not going to invest anything huge just to lose again. I want to see us actually have some type of sustained success before we go out and get a big time difference maker. Raekwon Davis is going to have to be good enough for right now. We are 2-0. Oh. 
Pretty nice start. The Bucks might end that. Falcons, Panthers still have yet to win a game. We're going to simulate to the midseason mark. Chris Olave is going to be a free agent at the end of the year. There's somebody else as well that's pretty big. It might just be making a decision about Trevor Penning. That could be it. He's got star dev, not super old. I still want to try and develop him. And we are 4-2. and two. Finally, finding some success. Offense is still out middle of the pack, but it's better than it has been. It's been disgusting how terrible we were last year. Starting 0-7 was, I mean, I was so surprised by that. But, um, you know, it is what it is. Sometimes that's what happens. Marshawn Lattimore was the big one. So Olave, Lattimore, Trevor Penning. There's Ladarius Swede, who we don't need. Ryan Ramchek, Quinn Weber. A lot of random star dev UDFAs that ended up on this team. But I just don't really have a large interest in any of them. Probably going to be more expensive than I'm looking for. A couple of fifth year options to pick up. But you know what? I just don't have a lot of use for Quentin Weber. If he's cheap and wants to sign a career deal to stay here, fine. But he doesn't. And Ladarius Swede is pretty much never going to play. I'm not ever going to pay him big time money. And that's what I would consider about four or five mil per year for a 69 overall. That's big money to them, and they don't want it. So he's not going to be re-signed. Trevor Penning, three-year extension, wants more money. Marshawn Lattimore is going to be a saint, though. I bet he accepts. But a three-year extension. He's back. He's the only one that wants to cooperate. Olave just wants money, but I will give it to him. Big time extension gets as expensive as 20 mil per year in the final year of that. And then uh, Ryan Ramchek is the other big one. Thinking three year deal and he is back. But we're going to need to do something about these tackles going forward because we do not have long term answers right now. Tackle is going to be a position of need that we probably have to look to address via the draft. We have finally made the playoffs here in 2026 going 11 and 6 with a very, very, very good performance from our young quarterback, Bo Sheehan, throws for 4,400 yards, 31 touchdowns, and just seven picks. And DeColdis Stevenson found the end zone double-digit times, but under 1,000 yards, 3.9 per carry. Does have superstar development, though, which is nice. He's going to end up being a nice player for us. I feel good about that, but obviously struggled a bit as a rookie. Can't really see how he got upgraded too much. Kind of just looks about the same, but is an 83 overall now, which is pretty nice. It's already about what Cam Akers is. We had a great season on 36 touches. Didn't really get the ball too much. And then receiving two 1,000-yard receivers, including the tight end Kyle Pitts. Over 1,100 yards and 11 touchdowns for Steve Samuels. Olave had a nice year. Daryl McNeil had a really awesome year as our four receivers really just crushed it. And then defensively, a lot of tackles again for Curtis Stokes and Joe Kovacs. Really, 18 TFLs for Burns, 16 for Brzee. Brian Burns also had double-digit sacks, 7 for Kovacs. 7 for Kovacs, really. This is a phenomenal year. 5 for Carl Granderson. I mean, this is an off-ball player with more sacks than a rush end. Insane. 4 picks for Tommy Toon. 4 for Roosevelt Booth. 3 for Stokes. 2 for Lattimore. Our linebackers are lights out. Curtis Stokes... And Joe Kovacs, I mean, these guys are insane. Oh, wow. 42 nothing in the wild card. Absolutely dominating the 49ers. 42 nothing. Oh, my goodness. Bo Sheehan threw for six touchdowns, 371 yards passing. Brock Purdy had just 69 yards. 8 for 15. Oh no, not so nice for Brock Purdy. Dakota Stevenson goes for over 100 yards. We totally shut down Christian McCaffrey. Cam Akers had a big game as well. This is domination. Steve Samuels had four touchdowns. Oh, Kyle Pitts had a nice game. What is going on? Only two sacks, only with no interceptions. How did we dominate so much? I don't know. But our season ends next week. We lose to the Panthers in the divisional 35-34. to Very close game. Not our year. I'm okay with that. 
we had a long way to go. It's only 2026. We have our quarterback of the future. It is a Giants Jets Super Bowl. That's the first time I've seen that in Madden in quite some time, at least years. I don't think I saw that in Madden 23 or 22 or 21. It had to have been a long time ago. Curtis Stokes, by the way, is up to superstar X Factor. Just noticing that. Yeah, he had a great year. Ends up leading the NFL in tackles. Nice. Good stuff from Curtis Stokes. Yeah, I, I, I felt so good about drafting him. And DeColdis Stevenson is still superstar development, but is up to an 85 overall. We'll get another ability slot at the end there, I believe. Plus one speed as well. He's up to 94. And uh, that's nice. Goal lineback. Is that a new one? Maybe it is. All right, come on, Giants. Doesn't really matter, but I'd like to see it. Let me be happy for once about my Giants, please. Yes. Super Bowl for the Giants in 2026. Patrick Mahomes wins MVP. Saquon Barkley won Offensive Player of the Year and Super Bowl MVP. Dakota Stevenson, Offensive Rookie of the Year. That's nice. Yeah, this was a good year to build on. We finally make the playoffs. We have a number of players we feel really good about. And we've got money as well. So we have momentum. I feel good about going into this offseason. This is going to be like the year that really spirals us into being a true long-time contender. Roosevelt Booth also went up to star dev, by the way. And we will need to pick up his fifth-year option. Doesn't really want to be here. That's kind of a problem. Uh, but we're going to keep him around. Daryl McNeil does want to be here. His motivations are just being in Louisiana pretty much with a franchise quarterback. Here's what I'm going to do is not pick up his fifth year option so that I can extend him. And we know he's interested. Trevor Penning wants more money. And I, I could do that, but he's going to test free agency. And I think we just let him go. I'm sorry, Trevor. I tried. You don't want to be on my team. I don't know what to tell you. I know a franchise tag. Uh, I don't think so. Ronnie Stanley's here at free agency, as is the former Saint Marcus Williams. Everybody wants him, fresh off his contract with the Ravens. How about, I'll offer you a two-year deal. We'd still get him throughout, you know, the end of his prime, I guess. It doesn't really seem like it's going to happen. Ronnie Stanley would be a really nice replacement for uh, two seasons, probably, for Trevor Penning. So we are going to offer, and we're actually going to seriously pursue Ronnie Stanley as we're not really with Marcus Williams. But if he signs, that's great. You know, it's one of those type of deals. DJ Turner's here. One of my draft crushes. I was so shocked to see him fall to like number 60. Bengals picked him up. And he'd be a nice player to get. We don't need him. We don't need him. But he is good. I don't really think we're going to need anybody in here. Is there anyone who's not super old that I have interest in? Felix Anya, DK, Uzama, maybe? Kendra Miller's in here. We could bring Kendra Miller back. Good backup running back. With Anya DK Uzama, I mean, he's probably a better long-term option than Carl Granderson is, just because of age at this point. So we'll offer. We'll see if we can end up getting him. Seems like we're probably not, but if we can end up getting Ronnie Stanley at least, I'm going to be happy about it. So let's see what happens here. Everyone's gone, and we end up getting Ronnie Stanley and Kendra Miller. Really the two that I wanted the most. With the other guys, would have cost too much. We weren't really in, like, I would say contention for bringing any of those guys in really at all. I offered them contracts, but they weren't big. It would have taken a miracle to land any of those big fish. Didn't end up happening. Okay, so here's the deal. Alex Keaton is a top five talent at offensive tackle. It's rare to see that. He is a very good athlete with very good ability and is expected to be the number one overall pick. Now, I need a tackle of the future. We have Ronnie Stanley, that's a band-aid. Keaton is a permanent fix. The problem is that I do not have a top 10 pick. In fact, I don't have a top 20 pick. We pick at number 21, and that's where we're projected to take this not amazing tackle. So... We might have to get very creative with how we navigate this board. And by that, I mean, we got to go trade up to one. It's going to cost a lot. 
We're going to have to give up some stuff, but it's in the end going to be worth it because that's one of the best tackles I've ever seen in Madden 24. It has to be done. So I don't know how we're going to move up to one, but we are going to move up to one. It has to happen. Did I mention that Bo Sheehan's up to Superstar X Factor? I think I'm just noticing this for the first time. So that's a huge development. He's only 23 years old, 87 overall. It's a great player to have. Steve Samuels is up to Superstar Dev, by the way. And Peter Rudd has Superstar Dev? Okay. What's, what's happening right now? We are going to have some decisions to make, but Ryan Ramchek's regressing as well. We need to go out and make this trade happen. It's going to cost so much. Tevin McRae is someone I could hold on to. Ryan Ramchek, I'd like to keep... Tough decisions will be made. Also, Brian Burns up to Superstar X Factor. We've had so many development trade upgrades. It's huge. I, I'm trading everything. Phillips, who is a 23 or 24 year old, 81 overall corner, but fourth on the depth chart. Carl Granderson, who is a starting defensive end for me, yet is obviously regressing at this age. Three first round picks and a second round pick this year to move up for this tackle. I am trading everything. I don't know how we're going to end up making this back, but that's how good I think Alex Keaton is going to be. 6'6", 307, 22 years old. Elite athlete, great key ratings, and the newest saint. The newest Orlean saint. <laughs> Orleans. New Orleans. Newest. I know. I also hate it. Uh, 91 strength, 84 acceleration, 69 speed. Nice. Yeah, he should be phenomenal. Well, Kirk Strong here is the perfect replacement. Also 6'4", 23 years old. Looks like he's got pretty good ratings and he's a great athlete. Ran 4'3", 2", and is going to be the fourth corner on our depth chart. So we've replaced that player we traded pretty much instantly. And I feel pretty good about it. Now, how does a player like this just become available? He's got like elite everything. Elite strength, speed is only solid, acceleration is only good. And then the ratings, the attributes look pretty good. I think this is a no-brainer draft pick here. Does have hidden dev, 92 strength, 80 acceleration, and jumping, funnily enough. And he's the man of steel. They put him in on the offensive line, he's going to be good to go. If he's Iron Man, he never misses a start. We have a perfect pickup here in the third round. And with this pick... I have to trade it away. No first round pick next year. Kind of means that holding on to this pick feels a little bit unwise. I'd like to get maybe a second round pick next year. We're going to have multiple years back to back of no first round picks. But I think it's going to be for the best. We have talent instead, which is just ultimately more important right now. So trading this third and a couple of day three picks this year and next year for a second next year from Buffalo. Just makes sense to try to move up in the future when we don't have those first round picks the first round picks are valuable but they're not the end-all be-all so i think we've done a pretty good job getting talent having no carl granderson is going to be tough i know it seems like i probably gave up way too much for a tackle but you never see the amazing tackles i, I pretty much never draft them and now there's like a generational looking one that's going to go at number one overall i had to move up he ends up being a 78 overall which doesn't seem amazing right? Until you realize that's already the number 26 ranked left tackle in the league. He's really good athletically and then has 80 plus run block and pass block right away. I wouldn't say he's generational by any means, but he's certainly very good. Is he worth three first round picks overall? That's maybe more of a question you want to you ask. Kirk Strong ends up being a 75. Kyle Steele is a great pickup at 74 overall in the third round. And we'll see what this class looks like as a whole as there was an 83 overall running back, Braden Harrison from Penn State. This is your Saquon Barkley. Yeah, I can see it. I can see it. Maybe a little bit faster than Saquon. But, I mean, 5'11", 214, that's pretty similar to the Saquon Barkley build. Saquon definitely weighs a bit more, but everything else seems about right. Even though these are random, just kind of a fun coincidence. It's like a pretty solid class overall. Not amazing. But uh, Harrison certainly bringing it up. And I, I think we drafted a pretty awesome tackle. 
and uh, hopefully we don't end up really missing those first rounders. And I could always acquire more. We trade some players, we'll see. Alex Keaton would be a 77 overall tight end, playing up to a 79. <laughs> Unreal. And Paul Rudd. This is the actor. Don't look at his first name, it's Paul. It was irresponsible to move all the way up for a tackle when we don't have a defensive tackle or an edge player. I could, I could agree to that. And what do we do about that? I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I don't know. Oh my goodness. What a free agency this is going to be. We're going to bring in Puna Ford, hook him. He's going to be our starting defensive tackle. Probably also going to sign Levi Anzarike. He might be more of a rush defensive tackle. And Javon Kinlaw's here. I'll also bring in the former first round pick, Javon Kinlaw. And then at right end, look who it is. Another Texas legend, Charles Amenahu. And did I just see Joseph Osai underneath him? Oh, hold on. I am building a full Texas Longhorn team. Longhorn. I say Longhorn. Yeah, Longhorn. Yeah, go, lo, go Longhorns. They play, uh, and Peyton Turner's here too. They play Kansas State tomorrow as I record this. Malik Murphy in at quarterback could be interesting. Backup quarterback, he looked fine enough at BYU or against BYU. I, I don't, not at BYU. I, I was in Austin for the game. I watched it. It was not in Provo, Utah. But yeah, we got, got some Texas boys in there. And, um, it's, it's a good band-aid. Wow, and Michael Dixon's in free agency. Unbelievable. I already have a punter, otherwise I would. And then for tight ends, I mean... Gerald Everett, superstar dev. I don't think Jeff Swaim is in the league anymore. I'd go out and sign him. Jatavion Sanders isn't in the NFL yet. Sir Michael Finley's obviously long retired. Who's a more recent Texas tight end that would actually be in the NFL? I think it's just Jeff Swaim, really. Okay, finally, a dev trade upgrade comes here in training camp of 2027. It was for our star development corner, and now superstar development corner, Roosevelt Booth. Okay, Roosevelt, I don't know. You can say it however you want, I don't know. But he is up to an 85 overall. Superstar dev has abilities now. And eventually, we know Marshawn Lattimore is going to be leaving the team. Whether or not that means I trade him, or he regresses and retires. He's 31 years old, down to a 91 overall. He was as high as, like, what, 93, 94 for us? Really, really good still. But we have our answer when he's actually gone. It's going to be Booth, and it's going to be Tommy Toon. Those are going to be the guys holding it down. Listen, you go to a diner... You go to the jukebox, put on a good tune, slide into a booth. That's a good night. Wow, 3-0 in preseason. That surely means we're going to be great in the regular season, right? Oh, it, it doesn't? And, like, even teams that have gone winless in a season before have gone undefeated in the preseason? That's what I'm afraid of. Plus one speed again for DeColdest to ever do it. 95 speed. Trucking has been 80 the entire time. I guess I say entire. He's only going into year two as an 87 overall. That's a great pickup. Definitely made the right move drafting him. And this is going to be a breakout year for him in year two. I have high hopes about that. And uh, hopefully it ends up being a really great season for us as well. You know, we have a ton of talent. We have quite a few holes as well. And I don't know how we're going to patch those right now. Defensive end, defensive tackle, admittedly weak positions for us right now, right? We'll see what ends up happening. I think we're going to be good. I just don't know how good. Look at Curtis Stokes, though. Up to an 89 overall at 24 years old. Superstar X-Factor. Great pickup. Eli Ricks is on the team. And this is going to be a good year for us. It's going to be a good year. I'm going to simulate straight to the midseason mark. I am looking for six wins. I'd take five. I won't be happy with four unless it's like four and two with a week six bye, something like that. And we're three and three. So not what I wanted or asked for number 10 offense number 30 defense we have the worst rushing game in the league but the second best passing game there's give and take i get that why are we allowing 27 or the 27th best rushing yards per game aka 138 
Oh, is it because we don't have a defensive tackle that's good? Outside of Brian Brzee? Could be a leading cause. Which, it, it would suck if this is just like a building year. I actually want to do something. But yeah, it's pretty evident that we're going to need something at defensive tackle. And especially defensive end as well. But I traded it all for a tackle. That's what happened. Who's actually, funnily enough, my backup tight end. He's a 79 overall there now. What's his dev trade? We don't know yet. Well, he's playing some tight end for us. <laughs> this is an interesting team. We have, you know, Charles Amenahu, Levi Anzarike. We have some guys there, but no, they're just not good enough right now. Dude, how about this? We have two quarterbacks, three quarterbacks in the top three, and this one has the same last name as Jimi Hendrix. Wow. And these two have the same face. Super fun. We just lost 35 to 7 to the at the time 1 and 7 Buccaneers. Why are we so bad? We're 3 and 5 now with a 91 overall team. And it makes me sad. I could have sworn Brian Brzee was interested. What happened? Oh, uh, historic championships. Nothing has really changed. He's 25. He, like, pretty much wants to be here. Give him a six-year deal. We have to bump up the money a little bit, but he should resign. And he does. Curtis Stokes is here, who also does it. He's the same real interests that I would say uh, the last feller had. Did I forget who it was already? How is that possible? Brian Bruzee. Now, let me let me tell you something about Curtis Stokes. This guy's from Montana, wants to be close to home, chose to go to LSU. I mean, go back and play for Montana State. You want to be so close to home. What are we dealing with here? How about get a guy who's serious about winning? He went to LSU. He's playing on the New Orleans Saints. Do you know where LSU is? It's Baton Rouge up the road. You don't want to go back to Montana. Don't lie to me. But we're running out of money somewhat quickly because we have players that don't really want to be here and we have to pay them want to be here money and we're doing it but that can only last so long and we are uh, already running a bit thin justin blackwell wants to be here that's nice i appreciate you how about a six-year deal everyone's coming back i love it just don't love the money on some of these players daryl mcneil's a really good player I know he's only normal dev, it makes him seem worse, but he's an 86 overall player at 24 years old. That's a guy you can build around for sure. Wants to be here. How about a six-year deal? And he's back. We have 15 mil left. Cam Akers is gone. Pete Warner has to go. Eric McCoy. Everybody's a free agent. The entire team. Eric McCoy for three years, maybe. I could do that. Or one year and we get cheaper on the offensive line i hate to do that but it, it might have to happen because we have to bring back at least brooks krieg here because he's he's cheap he's affordable he's young enough he's under contract now for seven years he's a lifer but tevin mccray doesn't really want to be here he wants to go back to new jersey i don't blame him it's a, it's a great place no, I, I left it, so I can't I can't be yeah, it can't be that great. It's expensive, is what it is. Tevin McCray. I don't know that we can really offer him much more than this. Offer's getting real tempting. I don't really know if it can get much more tempting. But if we can re-sign him and then franchise tag Eric McCoy. Well, we might actually have something then. And I'll tell you another thing. When this quarterback is ready for an extension it's going to be really tough to keep the team together that's generally what happens in these but we figure out ways around it we let people go we trade assets for picks usually trade players for picks i don't have to act like a sociopath they're not just ass uh, assets they're people and we are 10 and 7 we actually make the playoffs which is kind of surprising we were not that good this year but bo sheehan was oh my goodness 4,700 passing yards, 39 touchdowns, 9 interceptions. I think he led the league in both yards and touchdowns. Dakota Stevenson, 
15 TDs, almost 1,000 yards rushing. And then receiving, we had three 1,000-yard receivers, and Daryl McNeil was real close to making it a fourth. Steve Samuels, double-digit TDs. And then defensively, a ton of tackles for Curtis Stokes and Joe Kovacs again. TFL's Brian Burns leads the way as Brian Brzee goes for double-digit sacks, seven and a half for Brian Burns, six for Amenahu, and then interceptions, Marshall Lattimore with four, and the linebackers really taking most of the ball away. Taking most of the ball away. No, taking the ball away the most. Playing the Falcons, who simulate extremely well in the wild card, but not well enough as we beat them 38-22, to and will now play the 49ers in the divisional. Bo Sheehan, not to be confused with Bo Callahan from draft day, 23 years old, 92 overall, playing up to a 96. Superstar X Factor in just his third NFL season. He's going to get a plus two, playing up to a 98 now with the improviser, now up to a true 94 overall. Brian Brzee probably going to go up, I would say, to a 94, but that doesn't end up happening. But we upgrade Power Rusher, which was what I wanted. Power Moves goes up. That's at an 87. Getting that to 90 plus is going to be really good. And this 49ers team is good, but not unbeatable. We'll see if we can go ahead and beat them here in 2027. Looking for our first Super Bowl, and we are out of the playoffs. Now, the Saints have won the Super Bowl before, right? You remember, was it 2009? Drew Brees? Got to be 2009. Won the Super Bowl, beat the Colts, but have not been able to find such luck in the playoffs up to this point. We'll go to another offseason. So I guess the uh, salaries changed over here. I thought we were already negotiating with 28, 28 cap room, but I guess not. Uh, we do have to pick up some fifth year options though. Bo Sheen's just going to be extremely expensive no matter what. A couple of other guys in here. They're going to be very tough to retain. We're going to pick up their fifth year options, obviously. I have to do that a year in advance. So, I mean, it makes sense. Got to keep them around. But our window is right now. Now, I, I like Tevin McRae is someone I want to keep around, but it's just going to be very expensive to do that. Plain and simple. But if he's going to be a really solid starting guard for the next five years, I can afford this, and he's back. Eric McCoy is going to be a, a, a tough let go, so and he wants to be here. That's great. I can give you a two-year deal. Exactly. And I can bump up the money, but I really can't pay him much more than seven and a half per year. He's going to test free agency, but he's actually not because we are going to franchise tag him. And I'm just not going to do anything in free agency, really. Uh, Pete Warner can come back for a season. That's fine. It's not expensive. It's not going to affect our cap room too much. Cam Akers is going to walk and we don't really need anybody else. Like, as long as we can create a little bit of wiggle room with the cap, we're going to be fine and we can sign players uh, from free agency that are unclaimed. But we really need to build the rest of this team through the draft. Our offense is good, maybe even great. Our defense is horrendous, and that's got to change, like, right now. I haven't done a lot to fix that right now because money is becoming a problem. But we're going to figure out pieces to move. It's not going to be Bo Sheehan. It's going to be somebody else. And that might be Eric McCoy, even though his value is not going to be crazy. Might be Ronnie Stanley. We got to clear up some space. Quarterback contracts are no joke. It's going to be 40 to 50 mil probably a season to keep Bo Sheehan in New Orleans. But we have to. I have no choice. Jalen Calloway is a receiver I like the look of quite a bit. He's supposed to go with the very, very last pick of the first round. So that's a player we could potentially go out and get. Remember, we have no first round pick this year. So a lot of these guys, you know, not really going to have a real shot at acquiring as we don't pick till about the middle of the second round. What do we do about that? It's a good question. So we've got some really talented players. Keaton, by the way, has superstar dev. One of these tackles probably has to go. And we can just move Steel over to tackle maybe. And defensively, Joe Kovacs is up to superstar X-Factor. Marshawn Lattimore is. Toon has had it. The team is still very, very good. 
But, I mean, this defensive line is a major problem. And we have depth on the O-line right now. And we even have Rudd in behind. Yeah, the O-line's not an issue. Stanley has to go. And we're actually going to send Ronnie Stanley back to the Ravens. We're going to get defensive tackle Larry Brewer. He's 24 years old, superstar dev, and a 79 overall. Not too bad, as now we have solidified our young defensive line. And, oh my goodness, I did not see this. He's 389 pounds? Forgetting about the fridge, I just ordered a refrigeration storage unit. 389 pounds? Larry Brewer is, I mean, brewing something. I'll tell you that. The number one thing we need to do right now is clear cap space. We need to desperately. Eric McCoy, Pete Warner, a second right now in 2028, and a third in 2030 gets us number 20 from the Giants, and or not the Giants, the Raiders. And that actually lets us take what is going to be our pairing with Brian Burns, something that can actually... Uh, someone that can actually produce off the edge. It's a round one talent. He is 23, and I've been against that the entire time, but he is good enough. We know he's a round one talent. We know he can pretty much start right away, and he's going to have to. So Tyrone Young, welcome to the Saints. Normal dev, hate to see it. It's just the way that goes. Now, I haven't checked, but I'm hoping for good talent at receiver down the... Not receiver, at outside linebacker down the board. Just any linebacker, really, that can come in and take the place of okay yeah we have some take the place of pete warner josh jennings already seems to be a really solid option he's going to be very good i don't know if he's going to be like a round one talent but it probably is going to be close and then dexter warwick i feel maybe even better about and we've seen a lot of this type of uh linebacker lately in just madden 24 and there's just steals down the board pretty consistently at linebacker. Here's a middle linebacker there and ran 4-3-4 at his pro day with excellent cover skills. Okay. I might actually pivot and take him. If he's going to be that unbelievably fast, we should get him. And look, here's another one. Marquise Cumberland from South Carolina. Guaranteed round one talent with elite speed. A is just everywhere. This is the class to need linebacker. I think I am just going to draft Markel Graham, though. Such an incredible athlete that I'm just going to roll the dice. Now, I think I can still come back and get the other linebacker, but you have to take a shot at the super elite athlete, 91 speed, 89 acceleration, and hidden development. The Browns will give us a superstar dev tight end for a not-so-great receiver. That's interesting. Now, can I just leverage that to get a pick instead? Because I'd probably prefer that. And I can I can add in a pick to trade up to guarantee that we get the player we want. We have no first round pick next year. I give you a third in 2030. Not close. I'm going to have to give up a pick this year probably. And even this third round pick probably won't get it done. That's frustrating. I think this deal is just kind of too good to pass up. I am going to trade Sheldon Short to get Justice Farmer. Who just seems to be way too good. Superstar dev, young player. I don't really get what the deal is. And it seems like I could turn him to, you know, something even better. Right, I'm trading a third rounder in 2028 and 2030 to get a slightly higher third rounder. I know, that's the world we live in. It's tough to trade up sometimes, even though sometimes it's also incredibly easy. And hopefully at least one of these linebackers that looked really good is still available. I think they should be. Yeah, there's at least Josh Jennings and Dexter Warwick. And then there is also still Marquise Cumberland. Now, he's 23, but we know he's a round one talent. Or do I opt for one of these guys that's a year younger? Dexter Warwick looks very similar. Very similar. I'm just going to go Marquise Cumberland. Take the sure thing. Normal dev, of course. But he does seem very good. A's all over the place. I still feel confident in the decision. And he's not going to have to start right away anyway. So we're going to be fine. Tyrone Young ends up being a 76. 71 for Markel Graham. Marquise Cumberland is a 75. So do I start the 71 overall hidden dev player or the 75 overall with normal dev? It's got to be the 75 if we want to be the better team. Marquise Cumberland probably going to get the start. And there's an 80 overall tight end in this class. 
Bobby Tucker looks very good. Short route running is as, about as high as I've ever seen it. I don't know if I've seen 80 before from a tight end. That feels ridiculous coming out of the draft. Jalen Calloway, who I wanted, ends up being a 77 overall, also normal development player. So this will be the team for now. We've arranged things in a way that looks really, really good, actually, including some of our younger guys coming into play, especially when they have superstar dev like the right guard, Peter Rudd. This is how we're going to set up the defense. Cumberland's going to start over Graham, as I mentioned. Young slides down to right end where he, I think, stays a 77 overall, but gets bumped up to a 78 with morale. Uh, team looks really, really solid. Signed a bunch of depth players as well, like Malik Hooker, Marcus Epps. This should be a really good uh, season and year for us. It's 2028. Yeah, I keep talking about establishing this dynasty as uh, I'm here on day three of the recording. Texas just managed to beat Kansas State in a disaster of a game. Uh, completely blown, but what's new with Texas? But they managed to win and I get to be not heartbroken for a day. So this is a lot more like it. Four and two at the midseason mark. We have the number 10 offense, number 15 defense. We're doing pretty well. Could be doing better, obviously, as the Falcons are 7-0 and in the division, I just noticed. Of course, the strengths of the class are wide receiver and corner. They have been every year of this rebuild so far. It's actually extremely frustrating, yet I will continue to look for uh, more help with the pass rush. I think outside linebacker is going to be the position for me. And this will actually end up being a pretty big game. We lose again. This time of the Packers, 31-29. But if we can beat the 8-0, 86 overall Falcons... We'll at least have a little bit of momentum, and that's exactly what happens. And on top of that, we get a breakout quarterback development challenge, which I guess is just going to be XP based because he already has Superstar X Factor. So we'll, we'll get some more XP for him, hopefully, as I would love to dominate the Carolina Panthers, another interdivisional foe. And uh, we'll also, of course, do the focus players and then probably simulate to the playoffs. And unfortunately, we did not win. We're 6-4, and four, still probably will make the playoffs, but it's, I don't know, it's, it, it's going to be a little bit tight. Before we simulate, though, we are negative 8.8 .8 million in cap room, and we have a couple of big free agents. So, that is not great. I don't know how we're going to bring our quarterback back. I have no idea. Obviously, it means we need to clear a cap room at any cost to at least be able to franchise tag our guy. We're going to lose talent here no matter what. I think we're taking some cap penalty uh, via, you know, trading guys like Ronnie Stanley. And in order to save money, I think we're going to restructure Brian Burns first and foremost. And then, I don't know. I think we just have to restructure a lot of these deals. They're massive contracts. We have to add more money onto the end of them, but they're at least going to free up a little bit more space right now. And that's going to let us re-sign our quarterback, for example. And I thought about, you know, the potential of trading Kyle Pitts. Not now, but maybe, you know, in the final year of his deal. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and restructure his contract as well. We've actually cleared a ton of of cap space. The only problem is both of these players don't really want to be here. Roosevelt Booth wants to win, and we just haven't been all that successful so far. So our winning percentage with Dennis Allen is not significant. And then for Bo Sheehan, he wants a different offensive fit, which we could pretty easily do that. So that's going to be a little bit less of a problem. I think we still might end up restructuring a little bit more to create even more space. But for now, we're going to simulate to the playoffs and worry about those contracts in the offseason. Worst case scenario, Sheehan gets franchise tagged, and then we might even have to consider a trade, which I don't want to do. But if he doesn't want to be here, we might have to at least think about other options, and his value is going to be incredible. But I don't want to draft a quarterback. I want him to be the guy. So we're going to see what we can do to bring these guys back, Roosevelt Booth included. Plus one speed is a nice bonus there. Yeah, I mean, he's another player I don't want to let go. And I think what will end up happening is Marshawn Lattimore is going to be the odd man out. I love Marshawn Lattimore. Great player. Great saint. But his time here at the end of his career might uh, be coming to an end in New Orleans. Because how do you lose this guy? Bo Sheehan leads the league in passing yards again, second in passer rating, third in touchdowns, only two interceptions. You cannot let a guy like this walk out the door. It absolutely cannot happen. 
Rushing-wise, DeColdis Stevenson puts up nearly 1,200 yards, 19 touchdowns. Unreal season. Kyle Pitts dominates, as does Steve Samuels, the superstar X-Factor. He's another guy that we just can't let go. Daryl McNeil has a decent enough year. Uh, Chris Olave was solid. And then defensively, uh, fewer tackles than we're used to seeing. Marshawn Lattimore actually has a ton. But we got more pressure on the quarterback. 16 sacks for Brzee. 10.5 for Brian Burns. 6 for Larry Brewer, the defensive tackle we brought in. And then 4 picks for Kovacs and 3 for Tommy Toon. Now, I think we lost to the Packers already this season. Can we avenge that defeat? We do. 37-31 will advance to the divisional against the Eagles. Still looking for that first uh, Super Bowl appearance here in this video. Austin Adebo playing up to an 85 overall. Should help in the back end. He's 29 years old. I could see him moving back to corner and being our, our fourth corner probably at some point. Uh, there's also a chance he just sticks at safety. We're playing the 86 overall. Also 11 win Eagles and they knock us out of the playoffs. Our offense ends up being the best in the league. Our defense far from it. The defense is the big thing holding us back right now. And that's something we have to focus on this offseason. Season recap has a rematch of a game we've seen. Chiefs beat the Eagles 35-21. Bo Sheehan, our quarterback, wins MVP. We cannot let him go in free agency. Whatever it takes to bring him back, that's what we're going to do. Well, okay. Um, our 2029 cap room is still a mess. So, yeah. Um, Got to figure that out. Going to restructure Brian Burns again. Because of the, the league year turnover, uh, we're just going to have to restructure some of these contracts again. So it's not really going to be a problem. It's just going to be more money on the end again. Uh, but that's okay. It's not a significant amount. We're just moving the money. It's not going away. Just moving it. And we should be able to bring back our quarterback. Again, at least franchise tag him. Marshawn Lattimore needs to be traded probably. The big problem with that is I can't trade him during this re-sign period. He's regressed down to an 88, final year of his deal. It is time to trade him, but I just can't right now. It doesn't let you in the re-sign period. We have to get through this section first. And I mean, Ryan Ramchek honestly just could be a cap casualty. We would take a penalty of 10.7 million though, but he's probably someone that I need to trade. Steve Samuels has an expiring contract too. He's going to be pretty expensive we uh ugh, we need more money <laughs> that's just what it comes down to so much more and i'll tell you when we re-sign this quarterback or give him a contract boshian it is going to completely screw up the cap room for the entire team so we're gonna have to make some other trades on top of that probably but another issue we're gonna run into is that i need it to have enough money in, in cap space, uh, even after a franchise tag or after a contract, to even be able to trade some of these other contracts. So we can't just say, okay, we have a little bit of cap room. Let's sign the quarterback. We need to create a ton of cap room. We're actually going to try and sign Roosevelt Booth first out of Temple. He is back on a long-term long contract. We have just $14 million now. Some of these players are obviously going to have to walk. We're going to end up picking up the fifth-year option on Dakota Stevenson, probably. Bo Sheehan... We do not have the money to offer the deal he wants. A franchise tag is going to be incredibly expensive, but right now I really think it's our only option. So we're going to franchise tag Bo Sheehan. It's $56 million, and then pick up the fifth-year option on DeColdis Stevenson. The rest obviously have to walk. We are now negative $43 million in cap room, and that has to change ASAP. So we're going to be trading away some assets. We're going to do some more restructuring. And we're going to do, again, whatever it takes to keep a lot of this team together. And that's trading away some of our older players, maybe taking the cap hit now, or just flat out releasing them. I know that is going to suck, but it's just probably the best move for the long-term success of this team. All right, we don't pick until the end of the second round here in 2028. And now it's time to play financial manager or something like that. And we will figure out how to save this team. We just don't have the money to do anything right now. So we're just going to simulate to our pick. Hopefully there's some good talent available. And we'll try to get rid of this franchise tagged quarterback issue uh, during the actual season when we can play around with 2030 cap. But right now, before we can re-sign anybody, we're essentially just like screwed. 
at the midseason mark at the trade deadline next year, we might be able to do something crazy depending on how we're doing. But right now, all we can do is try to draft the best player we can and uh, move on to the next year. And Tim Hutchins from Texas might be the guy. Seems to be a pretty good player. And at this point in the draft, worth a shot. Does have hidden dev. Not the fastest, but does accelerate at an elite rate. And uh, he is now a saint. I know linebacker is not the biggest position of need for us at this point, but it does give us a little bit more flexibility with some of the players we could potentially trade, like maybe Joe Kovacs to free up some space. You obviously don't want to get, like, get rid of your best players, but sometimes to make it work financially, you just don't have a choice. We're going to trade a 2029 round three for a 2030 round three from the Bears, which is next year. I just don't want anything to do with this particular draft class. So we'll move on to the next one. Tim Hutchins ends up being a 73 overall. Not too bad for uh, where we drafted him. And then for the actual draft class, it wasn't that great, to be honest. Like a couple of good players, but overall, uh, not so great. A lot of corners, a lot of DBs. It's pretty much the entire uh, top of the class. So the team has not changed all that much. Just hoping for a better performance from what should be a very dominant defense. Uh, I do plan on making a couple of trades at the trade deadline. We'll see how we look up to that point. Maybe we'll just decide it's better to hold on to some of these players that I plan on trading like Ryan Ramchek, like Marshawn Lattimore. But the team obviously looks quite good. I could definitely see myself trading Joe Kovacs. He's very good, but his contract is really, really expensive. And I don't know. We, we have a really good inside linebacker. We have good depth in behind him with Graham and with Cumberland and with the linebacker we just drafted. I'm not really sure we need him, but at the same time, he's a superstar X-Factor player. He's very talented. We don't need to trade him. It's just like, you know, if we have to trade somebody, that's quite good. We don't really want to trade the quarterback, ideally. Uh, that could be what ends up happening. The reason why we were able to easily trade for Justice Farmer, by the way, blocking tight end. Doesn't really offer anything in the past game. 6'6", 261, he is an extension of the offensive line. Okay, how about a generated draft class that doesn't have just corners and wide receivers be the strength? Okay, wide receiver again, right end and halfback. Running backs, the I'm sorry, I just see Franklin Franklin. Did I see that right? Franklin Franklin from Texas. I thought that when we saw Slade Slade, that'd be as crazy as it gets. And that, it's, it's, they're tied. Franklin, Franklin? First of all, Franklin at this point is kind of a crazy first name. Frank, fine. If your full name is Franklin, you gotta be 50 plus. I mean, I don't know. But if your last name's Franklin, there's no way you can name your kid Franklin. What are you, are you that forgetful? You're like, fuck it, uh, it's Franklin is his name. First or last, everything. What are we doing? So we're gonna have a ton more cap space right now, but a ton of really, really big players to bring back. Tommy Toon, Bo Sheehan, obviously. Steve Samuels, Larry Brewer, who we traded for. Peter Rudd, Justice Farmer, Marshawn Lattimore. Uh, Ryan Ramchek should be in here as well. Gotta pick up the fifth year option on Alex Keaton. We have 55 million right? To bring back probably 80 million worth of players. I don't like those numbers. Yeah, I mean, Bo Sheehan just wants such an incredible amount of money, but he's so good. I feel like he's the lifeblood of the team. We have to just bite the bullet and sign him. It's a tremendous amount of money, but it just had to be done. This is what I'm talking about. Seven and O. Oh, we have the number one offense again, the number eight defense. That's the biggest change. That's why we're winning games right now. Our defense has actually decided to show up this season, which is a very, very nice change. Now, unfortunately, a lot of players are going to walk. This is our window right now. Now, we still have an insane quarterback. So pretty much we're going to be good at the very least going forward. But this is our window to be great. We are losing a lot of talent after this season. This really needs to be a Super Bowl year. I have cleared as much cap space as I can, and we're at negative 13 and a half million. This is the only window I have to trade Lattimore and Ramchek. The question becomes though, and I have to trade both of them at once, 
Ryan Ramchek does not matter. He's 35. We go down to Kyle Steele. It's not really too much of a drop off, especially when one's an 81 overall to a 76, who will actually develop when starting. But for Marshawn Lattimore, it's kind of a big drop off to CB3 in Kirk Strong if Lattimore's off the team. So does trading Marshawn Lattimore hurt us in the future? It certainly could, unless we get a corner back from somebody, or a cornerback back. And this is gonna be the trade we make. Ryan Ramchek, Marshawn Lattimore, and our first gets us Jenkins, a pretty decent young corner from the Titans. Their first this year and next year. So it's a minus four downgrade to Marshawn Lattimore, about the same to Ryan Ramchek as well. But I think this betters our future. Okay, this is a very interesting trade. It will be highly controversial, I'm sure. The big piece that we are trading is our superstar X-Factor receiver, who is just 25 years old, Samuels. Now, expiring contract, we do not have the money to re-sign him. That's just a fact. We do not have it. We're also trading price for cap reasons. A first round pick in 2030 and in 2032, as well as a fourth and a fifth. And then from the Giants, we are getting three first rounders over the next three years, as well as Malik Blackshear. Malik Blackshear is an 85 overall, 24 years old, under contract for the next four seasons. He is a fine receiver three to add to the mix. We only really need two big time receivers when we have Kyle Pitts in a tight end heavy offense is essentially what this is. McNeil, I know it seems weird that I opted to keep him. He's still good at 89 overall and under contract. So I think we have at least two very good receivers, add in a third plus Kyle Pitts. And then defensively, uh, you know, I, I tried not to give away anything. Obviously, Marshawn Lattimore had to go. And it seems weird to be undefeated at the midseason mark and essentially selling at the deadline. But I'm not really doing that. We're trading away guys that just can't fit in in our future plans in order to be better long term. Still don't really have any money. I want to bring back Tommy Toon. I want to bring back Larry Brewer and Peter Rudd. It's just, we're doing everything we can to get around this cap situation. And when you're paying a quarterback an insane amount of money, you're just in an impossible, impossible situation. So I don't know what we're going to do with those great players. I don't really want to trade them because they're so good. But if we can't bring them back, I, I don't know what to do. You know, it's funny how they say our top need apparently is quarterback. I would disagree with that. We have a 99 overall. Tommy Toon, nobody wants him. How is that even possible? Okay, this is another insane trade. I am trading Tommy Toon and a random receiver to get three first round picks from Pittsburgh over the next three years, plus a superstar X-Factor receiver. Now, the receiver is only an 80 overall, but he's 24 years old. He's gonna be a nice option for us. And it's just getting a superstar X-Factor player. I feel like the value on that was pretty insane. So this potentially puts Malik Blackshear on the chopping block, Daryl McNeil maybe. I know we don't need four good receivers, but getting the young superstar X-Factor player I thought would be super valuable. And we could potentially even look to trade him. I know we need a corner now, like desperately. How are we doing this when we're undefeated? I get it, it's insane. But we have to try and secure our future. Negative six mil in cap room, but we at least have picks now and other players to take up uh, some of those spots. So. Listen, I know it's bizarre. I keep saying it. We did what I felt like we had to do. We're 8-0. I don't care about going undefeated. I'm going to be honest. I've done it before. I think I did it in my last 20-year rebuild with the Bucks. I'd love to do it again. But my main focus right now, win the Super Bowl. We haven't done it yet. And uh, I'm trying to put us in the best position in order to do that. It's been a little bit difficult so far. We're doing the best we can. And uh, paying a quarterback is always one of those really tough things where you kind of, you know, risk killing the rest of your team to have this one really important player. And obviously, they're really, really, really important. But at the same time, so is the rest of the team. And uh, again, we're, we're, we're trying the best we can. Losing Tommy Toon really sucks. One, because it's a great name. Two, because he's really good, really young, superstar X-Factor. We end up losing the Falcons. Our offense has stopped offensing after trading some of our best players, but uh, you know what? It is what it is. That's all I can say. I'm not going to keep apologizing for trying to run the team. We've had some ups and downs, trials and tribulations in this rebuild so far, 
and we've lost our last two. A slot receiver archetype with a release is really interesting. I'm not sure I've ever seen that before. Okay, we end up making the playoffs though, 15 and two. That's a first round buy as Chris Olave had a very good game. And I'm sure a lot of that is from Bo Sheehan. He was a yard shy of 5K, 38 touchdowns, probably another MVP for him, five picks. Decoldis Stevenson, what a year. One yard shy of 1350 for yards, over five per carry, 23 touchdowns, didn't fumble the ball. Chris Olave had an insane season, so did Kyle Pitts, Daryl McNeil, Malik Blackshear was very good. We didn't really even need, you know, some of the players who traded away, as good as they were. Curtis Stokes with plenty of tackles, 20 for loss for Brian Burns, who also had nine sacks, Brzee with 10, eight and a half for Tyrone Young, our first round pick out of Ohio State last year, traded up to get him, or two years ago now. And a few interceptions in there. Cowboys in the divisional, not who you want to see. They are so good in simulation. Going to be a really tough team to beat. But we do. Now in the NFC Championship game against the Falcons. This is another team that simulates well. We've seen it already this season. Last season. They're 12-5 and five here as well. But if we beat them, we are headed to our first Super Bowl since 2009. And we are not. It's the John Abraham Bowl, Falcons, Jets. Another disappointing season here. Our best season that we've had, but obviously didn't get the end result. Falcons beat the Jets in the Super Bowl. Bo Sheen, of course, wins league MVP. He was fantastic. And I mean, it's just one of those things, right? We were so good. We won a playoff game finally. I think we've done that only a couple times but just could not make it to the Super Bowl. We still have no money. No money at all. Negative 28 million. And if you're wondering like, how does that exist? Well, we were operating within the salary cap. The salary cap is not turned off or anything. It's just that, you know, if you hand out a, let's say a $50 million contract, it's not always gonna be 10, 10, 10, 10, 10, or whatever adds up to 50, right? It's going to be sometimes, you know, like eight, 16 the next year maybe 25 those are like drastic figures but you know it, it can scale at times and then it'll go back down near the end depending if it's front or back loaded and right now with some of these restructures we, we've done we just don't have the cap room you know following some of these changes we'll say so uh, unfortunately we really are just gonna have to let some of our best players go i hate to see them go but we just don't have any options Hey, all of a sudden we have 15 mil in available salary cap. So I don't know how that happened. Is it like officially the 2030 season now? Look at this contract, by the way. Boshin gets over 60 mil per year. And then it drops down to 28.6 in 2034. It's only going to get worse for us. So even though we have a little bit of cap space now, uh, I guess that could be like penalties clearing. We still don't actually really have any money at all. Just got to hold on, save, and maybe even trade back in the draft because you have to pay the guys at the top of the draft more money. Might be better to just kind of avoid that. But if the players are good enough, I'm not going to be able to. And this actually ends up being pretty interesting. A running back is expected to go at number one overall, but we know the receiver and the edge rusher are both top five talents, John Drayton and Ron Borden. We don't pick until number six, but that's Definitely trade up range if we wanted to do that. So we think the Broncos are going to take a running back at number one. And that's exactly what they do. We are on the clock in a few picks. Do we wait or do we make a move up? It depends. Do we want the receiver, Ron Borden from UCLA? We know he's a top five talent, 21 years old, great catching. He's a very good athlete. Skill-wise, his route running is at least really solid overall. He's going to be fantastic. He's going to be a really, really good player. And then John Drayton from Wake is 23 with elite speed, agility, change of direction. Sometimes they just are too good to worry about the age. And John Drayton, I would say, definitely qualifies. 23 years old as opposed to like 21, but really, really good. 15 mil in cap room. Bo Sheehan, dude, that, that contract is brutal. We pick at 6 and 12. And then we have four first rounders in 2031. What can we do here? We have Olave. It's a big time contract. 
Receiver, just not really a need for us. So I think we should trade up for the edge rusher. Now, I get that we have Tyrone Young up to star dev, but it just might be a better idea to go out and get someone that looks like a really, really good prospect with maybe even a better dev trait than star. And we could then potentially move someone that is going to end up being more expensive. So it's not too far to trade up. I'm going to try it. Okay, we are trading two first round picks, number six, number 12, for a first round pick, number two, as well as a new starting right guard in Easton Meeks, 23 years old, star dev under contract for the next two seasons. And we are going to be drafting that edge rusher out of Wake Forest, John Drayton. He's a speed rusher with A finesse moves, B power moves, B tackle, and very, very good athleticism, including elite speed. Should be a pretty good player. And does have hidden dev, 88 speed, only 84 acceleration, but 90 agility, 79 strength. A very interesting player at the very least, and will compete for a starting job right away. D tackle down the board with A finesse moves. Not that rare to see. You see this build quite a bit, but probably low 70s, potential instant starter just because we don't have a lot there right now. 76 speed, 88 strength, 80 acceleration. 23 years old, but probably an instant starter given our current depth chart, you know, and depth at defensive tackle. It's just, he's going to have to play. Parker McCarron has A to C finesse moves and power moves. You know, he's a speed rusher, C pursuit, C tackle, elite speed. So Parker's just going to be taking a chance here at the top of the third round. 86 speed, 84 acceleration, only normal development. Hopefully good enough finesse moves to be a rotational pass rusher, but we'll probably just be a special teams guy. And I think we made the right call. John Drayton is an 82 overall, higher than our current starting right end. He's got 90 finesse moves out of the draft. Maybe the highest I've seen. That's why sometimes you take the older player if you know they're going to be quite good. And we didn't know it was going to be close to 90 finesse moves, obviously, but that is absolutely absurd. And even though his block shedding is quite low, he is automatically one of the best players in the league in terms of getting after the quarterback. Ben Kramer's a 72. Parker McCarron doesn't end up being that good. They get a quarterback down the board who is slow as the day is long. And this is the way the class ends up looking. There was a running back who was an 84 overall. Imagine taking a running back at number one and you didn't even get close to the best one. Abdul Newsom ends up being dominant, also 23 years old. A lot of good 23-year-olds in this class. Ron Borden ends up being a 79, which is great. Just didn't really fit into our plans, obviously. And yeah, I, I still feel like we made the right decision. If we could go back and do it over again, I would do the exact same thing. Brian Burns going to have an expiring contract. I'm trying to see where we could save money without taking a huge penalty. Paulson Adebo, I guess. Game-winning field goal. They're not going to ice us. They had a timeout. They didn't use it. The kick goes right through the uprights, and that's the ball game. Thank you, Atlanta. We are headed to the Super Bowl. They didn't even try to ice me. I always miss ice kicks. I always do. They didn't even try it. I appreciate you. Ben Kramer ends up winning Defensive Rookie of the Year, by the way, over our stud edge rusher. He's got 87 finesse moves now is why. So uh, we're going to try and make him a little bit more well-balanced upgrade run stopper. But what a player to find. And he now has superstar development for winning Defensive Rookie of the Year, right? Or did he have it? No, he, he had star. So what a big get for us. We're drafting well. We are developing well. Jet Saints, the Chris Ivory Bowl. Big time stuff here. What a, what a legend Chris Ivory was. Jets up early. We tie it at seven. Jets retake the lead 14. Now 21 to seven in the second quarter. We've made it a touchdown game. Jets extend it, but we get right back in it. We keep allowing touchdowns, and we had a chance to tie the game there and didn't. First and goal for the Jets. They end up knocking it in. We need a score right now. It's going to be the end of the third quarter, though. Down by two touchdowns, but not out. All right, let's take a shot here. I thought Chris Olave had a step. Oh, nearly intercepted. All right, there's Olave, though. He makes a man miss. Olave, you got to break a tackle or something. Sheehan has two interceptions in this game. Neither from me, I will add. But that's probably part of why we're losing here in the Super Bowl. Look at that sling, though. Finds Olave again. Go back into the hurry up. It's first and goal. QB draw is a dumb play call. Get out of that. Get out of that. Snap the football. Find a place to go. And we're going down. 
Throwing end zone, Olave, touchdown! Faith in your receiver. We hit Chris Olave quite a few times in this drive, and we've made it a touchdown game with under five to play, and our defense is doing nothing to stop the Jets. Come on, dude. Got such a great team, I need to stop. A turnover would be huge, and no one covers the wheel. And shot to the end zone, touchdown. Jets get it back instantly. Okay, quick score. We need the football back. We are playing no defense. I don't know why the Jets keep throwing the ball, but it's working so effectively. We have no answer for it. You got to think that under two minutes now, they're going to try to run the football. They're still refusing to actually run the ball. That's an RPO. We're going to have to call a timeout there. It looks like maybe they're finally choosing to run the ball and try to get this clock down. Second and eight. Down by a touchdown. Here's a run to the outside. Set the edge. There we go. Nice tackle. Timeout. Run to the left. Blackwell right there. Nice tackle. Final timeout called. A minute and 50 seconds to work with. We'll get the football back. If we score a touchdown, I'm probably going for two. The Jets offense has been pretty much unstoppable when they want to be this game. And we're going to get the ball on the 20. We run the ball here at second and inches. Let's just guarantee the first down. It'll take off probably at least 10 seconds. But I think that's a pretty good play call just to guarantee that we move the chains. We could actually go back to it. Only a four second runoff on that. But we're down to about a minute. And I just feel like we're running the ball really well with Braden Harrison. I don't necessarily want to get fully out of that. Especially when they're showing such weak boxes. If we can just move the football. I feel like it's going to be the move. We're going to throw it deep to Kyle Pitts though. Gardner's beat! Pitts sideline caught it! Let's go. I mean, that's that's an interesting matchup. Sauce Gardner in the big corner on our big tight end. And Kyle Pitts just outruns him, really. Great ball from the QB. And Pitts out of bounds. Now into the zone as well, by the way. Somebody we might want to look at. Also could check it down. We are very close to scoring here. We're going to target Pitts again. Another catch. Box uh, still going to tick here. Now under 30 seconds from the 10. It's essentially first and goal, not letting me snap it. And we're holding the football for way too long. We're just going to have to throw it away. 14, 13 seconds now. Nine seconds, can't get sacked. That's the one rule in this spot. Throwing it up to Kyle Pitts. Go up and get it. And this time he comes down with it. Kyle Pitts, touchdown. Oh my goodness. He dropped a shot to the end zone What in the NFC Championship game. But now he's managed to hold on. Contested catch. Five seconds to go. I think we have to go for it. We can't stop the clock, though. Kyle Pitts is too tired. Oh, my goodness. Do we run the ball? Everyone's gassed. We're at least going to line up to go for it, I think. And then if we don't like the look, we can always just take the delay a game. I don't know what to do with this. It looks like we could run it right up the middle. I am very afraid of a block shed. What happens if we throw it? It's too risky. I'm going to take the delay a game. Extra point is going to go through. We're going to tie it and play for overtime. Really iced me on the extra point here. Unbelievable. See if we can make it. Things going to disappear. I think we timed it up pretty well. Right down the middle and we're tied. I can't believe they tried to ice me on the extra point. Didn't end up working. Second and 10. I think we can pass commit in this spot. Look at all their superstars and X-Factors. It's a fantastic team, but the quarterback's under pressure. We'll just throw it away. Third and 10 now. It's over 400 yards passing, four touchdowns, just eight incompletions for the X-Factor quarterback, Colbert, for the New York Jets. Third and 10. Game essentially on the line here in overtime. As we get the ball, we're going to score. And under pressure's Colbert. Down he goes. It's Kramer. Second sack of the game. What an entrance. It's like I'm watching Seinfeld until he got inevitably canceled for saying the N-word a lot. Not cool for Michael Richards. Is that his name? Pretty sure. We'll just call him Kramer. Fourth and 17. little fun fact for it. Maybe not so fun fact for you. As Blackshear returns it to the 37. Any score wins. Pits open. Hit him. Pits up the field. Ooh. Thought that might have been a broken tackle there for a second. Essentially into field goal range already. But I am afraid about an ice. We are indoors, though, which is nice. 
right? I think this is AT&T. I kind of forget where we are. Oh, running back wide open. Throw it deep to him. It's Harrison for the score. Super Bowl over. Saints win it. Walk off touchdown here in Arlington. Oh my goodness. It is AT&T Stadium in Arlington. That would have been an awful call had this been in like, I don't know, Atlanta. <laughs> Mercedes Benz or something. But that is a Super Bowl victory finally. The Saints have won it again. Confetti rains down on the Saints for the first time since Drew Brees was playing quarterback in 2009. We are in 2030. It's taken over 20 years to do it, but we did it. The Saints are champions, and we have about 10 more years to go. Let's try to get a couple more. Oh, also 561 passing yards and six touchdowns for Bo Sheehan. The best Super Bowl performance ever. That's the most passing yards in a game, I think, period. I think the record's like 550-something from uh, Norm Van Brocklin. I don't I don't know if it's 560. I'm looking up. People always ask now. It's a new monitor. Yeah, 554. I always forget the exact number. I think I usually think it's 553. Either way, it doesn't matter. It was just broken in the Super Bowl by our quarterback, Bo Sheehan, who's on record pace to be the best of all time. Finally, a Super Bowl win. Bo Sheehan, Super Bowl MVP and league MVP and offensive player of the year. A pretty good year for Bo Sheehan, all things considered, I would say. We still don't have any money. I can't re-sign anybody that's gonna need a new contract unless our finances change here as we simulate the week to the new league year. That would be cool if this will ever stop advancing or stop sim uh, simulating. Nope, negative 25.9 million. Tyrone Young, we're not gonna pick up his option. He's gonna stay on the team though. Steele is gonna have to walk. And then it's really just Kirk Strong. We need a year or two of just not signing anybody and letting people walk. Saving some money, kind of hitting the reset button a little bit. We got our Super Bowl. Obviously we want to establish and build the dynasty, but we also need a little bit of wiggle room for the future in order to do that. And some players are just going to have to be replaced with mid-round picks in the draft. That's essentially what it comes down to. Is Eli Morton another, like, amazing pass rusher build? Top five talent looks very similar to the pass rusher we drafted last year. John Drayton, right? So, could be another one that we draft. Eli Morton expected to go at number three. We have the number one overall pick in the year that we've won the Super Bowl. So, whatever trade we made to give us that is excellent we're gonna trade down probably i would say to number two if i can i don't want to risk another team moving up and then that changing where eli morton goes where else do we pick number 10 we need a tackle that could be a good move for us agile with b pass block i like and then we also pick at number 24 and i traded away my pick Pretty good when we win the Super Bowl. Trading number one to get number two, a first next year and a second the year after that from Arizona. Trying to set ourselves up for the future. Cardinals now at number one. Go with Alex Matthews, a tackle from LSU. And we're gonna take another pass rusher just because he looks too good to pass on, I think. Is he good athletically? I didn't check. I honestly did not check, but I was hoping for a bit better. Do we, do we still draft an edge rusher we don't necessarily need? I'm I'm reevaluating a bit. I'm going to trade out of the pick. We're going to trade with the Dolphins. We're going to get, I think, some of our picks back and a 20, uh, 33 first rounder as well. So we are trading out of number two, which actually saves us money right now. And we'll move down to number 10 where we were already picking. And we'll see what happens there. Damn, Taj Miller looked really good, but is around three to four talent, which is a little bit disappointing. Let's take the tackle, Dorian Westbrook. Elite speed. It, it's going to be nice to have a tackle I don't have to trade my entire future for. Does have hidden dev, 87 strength, 76 speed, 83 acceleration. Really hoping for superstar dev from him. I actually really considered Nicholas Weathers, the six foot four corner from Florida, at number 10. He's available at 24. There's never been a doubt that he's the pick here. Only normal dev, which sucks, but... Should still be a very good player. This guy, Warren Saunders. 5'9", 177. He's a deep threat with a deep route running. Great speed and acceleration and agility. A lot of elite in there. He should actually be an incredible steal at this spot. Only normal dev, but an insane athlete. 93 speed, 97 acceleration, 95 agility, 93 change of direction. 
Should be a good player. We're going to trade out of this pick in the third for a third in the future and a couple of other picks as well. And I think I'm going to let the CPU fill out the rest of this draft here in 2031. The corner and the receiver are both 76 overall. The tackle is a 73, which is a bit lower than I would have wanted, especially because he's not a great pass blocker but hopefully it's got a good dev trait to make up for it. Eli Morton ended up being the best player in the class, 78 overall. So not nearly as good as the tackle we drafted the year before, but quite similar, just not as good. Our team looks really, really good. Obviously could be a little bit better in certain spots, but I love the receiving core. Like our third receiver is going to be McNeil, who's a 92 overall. And then defensively, we have as many X factors and superstars as I feel like I've ever had. They are all over the place and hopefully are intent on dominating. Six and one at the midseason mark. We have like so many different tabs to handle here. And Kyle Pitts is actually regressing now that he's 30. Because he was a 99 overall, I want to say. And now he was down to a 97. So we'll have to think about tight end at some point. It's probably not going to be right now. He's uh, still going to be quite good. So we'll keep the auto-generated rookies. Got a receiver at number one. That's interesting. Braden Harrison is a free agent, as is Alex Keaton. We do not have money to re-sign these guys. Negative four mil. And our entire team, pretty much it feels like, are going to be free agents. What do we do about this? We need to clear money again. It's been an issue for most of this rebuild, actually. I think from the first season, from the jump. And it still doesn't get easier. Bo Sheehan's contract is going to keep getting more and more expensive. Where do we save money? Paul Sinadibo is where we save money for right now, but it's not really going to do anything. If we trade him, I, I can't because I don't, I don't have the cap room either way. So uh, we're just going to have to let players go, which sucks, but it's just what has to happen. 13 and 4 and playing in the wild card. What? Bo Sheehan ends up having another dominant year, another phenomenal season, really. And I keep using that word because it's true. Braden Harrison, over 1,600 yards on the ground, five and a half per carry, 18 touchdowns. Malik Blackshear continues to play really well, as does Kyle Pitts. It feels like Chris Olave and Daryl McNeil are just, like, contributors when it's Malik Blackshear and Kyle Pitts' offense. Defensively, Curtis Stokes, plenty of tackles, eight for loss. 23, though, from John Drayton. 22 for Brian Brzee, who goes double digits for sacks. 14, 13 for Cofield. Drayton really doesn't get a ton of pressure. But the defense is playing well enough, so I don't really care about the individual stats and accolades. I care about winning. And we had the number 16 defense. Number one against the run, not so great against the pass. I want the defense to play better, obviously. But they weren't all that bad, about league average. And when our offense is the best in the league... We can live with that. And we beat the Bears as well. So it's another conference championship appearance for us, this time against the Cowboys. Got some upgrades here. Dorian Westbrook's dev trait should be revealed. I don't see any abilities, which means he just has star dev. We'll upgrade pass protector. Still going to be a nice player for us. He's actually developing pretty quickly, but not quite what we wanted when we drafted a tackle at number 10. Simulating to the Super Bowl now. We are actually in it. And it's a Super Bowl that we've seen before. Saints Colts. That is a rematch to 2009, a Super Bowl we've talked about already in this video. Peyton Manning versus Drew Brees. And that's a fun one. And we'll see if we can end up with the same result as the last one and hoist the Lombardi again. And this time, as well in this league, it'll be back to back Super Bowl wins if we manage to get it done. It's also notable that the Colts are an 84 overall. We have a 99 overall defense. I just want to just want to put that out there. And the Colts have an early 7-0 lead. We answer with a field goal, but we cannot stop the Colts from scoring touchdowns. Our defense is absolutely terrible, so we need the offense to kick it into gear. We're down by a touchdown. Fourth quarter, we don't end up scoring. And the Colts have a 10-point lead with three and a half minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Why is our defense so terrible? It absolutely disgusts me. Who wants to get open? Kyle Pitts? All right. We're still very much in this game, but we need to act quickly under three minutes. We have all three of our timeouts. I do not want to use any of them on offense. Absolutely zero. 
McNeil, get up the field. Let's go. That's a touchdown. Nope, we couldn't hit it in time. So many receivers open on that side of the field. I wanted it all. And they closed down a little bit too quickly. Let's just get Pitts to the end zone. I think if we take a shot one-on-one, -on -one, we got it. Lead it outside. Didn't really happen. Pitts goes up and gets it anyway. He dropped a pass in the end zone and then made up for it in the next game. This time, he's not dropping it. Gotta love it. Almost went right back to him. We're going to step up the middle. Sheehan walks in for the score. Just got to play defense. We do have the two-minute warning on our side. So that'll be nice. Just uh, need a couple of stops here. We're going to run commit. Second and three. They actually went out of bounds after a gain of seven. Paul Snadebo one-on-one with the huge tackle. That saves the game for us. And now third and five. Oh, did... I don't know. Do we pass commit here? I don't think we're going to. Could still easily be a run. They end up passing, and they end up moving the chains. That's tough. And now I think you have to expect runs here. Under two minutes to play. Get to the outside. Awesome uh, tackle in the open field there. This looks very, very similar to a game we just played. We need the same result. Keep Richardson in the pocket. If they decide to throw, it looked like it has actually was an RPO. We'll call another timeout. I kind of got a little confused on that one. Third and two, I'm going to run commit. I don't think they pass here. It is a run, and it is a joint effort for the stop. That's absolutely massive. We'll get the football back. Field goal ties it. Touchdown wins it. Two-minute offense, but no time to stall. Marciano on to punt. Blackshear to return. Won't even get a shot. We'll get the football in the 24. Pretty good start for us, I would say. That's open. Hit it in stride. It's Blackshear into Colts territory. Sheehan nearly at 300 yards passing. A minute to play. Is it crazy to run? We're going to get down the middle here. Oh, that's a big pancake block. Big juke by Harrison. Harrison's actually going to work towards getting out of bounds, and he does. Clock stops at 53 seconds as we enter the red zone. 17-yard line, 53 seconds to play. We could actually consider running the football again. Our offensive line is still pretty good. And you got to remember, the Colts are an 84 overall. It's amazing that they have the lead at this point in the game. A bigger upset than when the Giants took out the Patriots in the Super Bowl all those years ago. Well, 2007. Let me, let me be clear. But a big drop brings up third and five. We're going to run the ball. There's Harrison. Big power fighting towards the goal line. Ball down at the one. We're going to line up to go for it on first and goal, obviously. We can't afford to chew clock, though. We just have to take the touchdown. With no timeouts, if we get stuffed, it's pretty much game over. So we'll take the score. We'll go ahead here late. It'll be 31-27. And the Colts will have 20 seconds, but all of their timeouts to try to work the ball down the field. Paulson Debo in single high. We'll get Kovacs to the outside. And we need Stokes to make a play if they target over the middle. And that's exactly what they do. But a big tackle by Kovacs and a timeout by Indianapolis. 14 seconds to play. We're still rushing four. Stokes is going to take the attention of the center. We're going to show pressure. And we're going to fake it. Here's another check down and incomplete. Richardson misfires. 11 seconds now. Maybe two plays left and nearly intercepted by Hutchins. The surprise X-Factor from Texas maybe being the X-Factor in this game, stopping a big potential play by Indianapolis. It's fourth and two. Game is on the line. This is the Super Bowl. Can the Colts pull off the upset and do the impossible? I don't think so. They'll have one shot to the end zone. Richardson probably does have the arm to go 60 air yards. Certainly does in real life. I'm not sure about in the game, to be honest. But certainly pass committing. Here's the final play. It's a check down. It's intercepted by Jenkins. Nearly shades of Tracy Porter. That could have gone for six. But whether it's six or zero, doesn't matter. That game is over. Touchdown could not happen for the Colts. Field goal wasn't going to be enough. They had to go for it. They checked down. Bizarre call. And that is a Super Bowl victory again for the Saints. Bo Sheehan, maybe your Super Bowl MVP. What a game. Season recap. Lamar Jackson wins MVP, but Braden Harrison wins Offensive Player of the Year. So at least we have some representation. And Bo Sheen gets another Super Bowl MVP and another Super Bowl. As uh, we've had a pretty good 
decade here, two Super Bowls at the back end of it, and we are negative 44 million in available salary cap. It's unfortunate. Braden Harrison is going to walk. We didn't trade our players because we wanted to try and win another Super Bowl. That's exactly what happens. But on the downside, we are about to lose a lot of very, very good players. And we don't really have any replacements in sight at the moment. Harrison's got to go. Keaton is going to go. I traded up everything. We, we get him for his rookie contract. We do win two Super Bowls with him. That's nice. But gonna have to hit the reset button a little bit on some of this team we are losing a lot of very good players our overall is going to take a big hit here we need to fill out the roster and we're going to be doing that through the draft we drop all the way down to a 92 overall which is still quite good but we lose so many starters our offensive line is in shambles we have no running back we have no money and our defense still looks really good who is Jenkins? Oh, he's a cornerback playing strong safety. Did our strong safety of all these years retire? Or could we just not re-sign him? I think he retired. No, it's Blackwell. He's just starting at free safety now. Okay. So Jenkins, I guess, can move back to strong safety because somebody has to. He's got incredible zone coverage. That works for me. And we actually have money. 2.4 million in available salary cap after letting our entire team walk. That's good. The possum, George Jones, is in the draft. Could consider it. Uh, there are a number of good-looking players. We'll just, of course, have some tough decisions about who to draft. I don't see anyone that's, like, super earth-shattering, except for maybe the top receiver. I have two or three top ten picks. I'm definitely trading down. Oh, I don't know what happened here. The number one player I probably want is a safety, Dorian Baden, who's supposed to go in the 20s. Marcus Thierry could be quite good as well. Maybe not the number one player I want. Max Gary could be okay, for sure. But yeah, Dorian Baden at 19. Definitely don't want to lose out on him. But we also could take a chance on some of these tackles at the top of the class. We need tackle. Oh yeah, and running back's a need too. Receiver's not a need. Don't draft a receiver. Defensively, it really is just safety or corner. So DB and the rest is fine. But we have needs on the offensive line. That's the, that's number one. Really the offense, I would say. The Chargers will give us three first round picks for trading out of number two. I'm going to do that. Do we take a chance on Elijah Black here? Tackle out of Louisville. We need a starting tackle. He actually looks really athletic with pretty good core attributes as well. That's going to be the pick at number six. Great strength. Decent movement skills. That's my starting left tackle. I'm going to bet against the Colts. I don't think they make back-to-back -back Super Bowls. I'm going to take their first round pick this year, number 31, and then their first round pick next year. And I'm not going to simulate to 20 because I want that safety. So I'm going to jump up a little bit in the draft. All right, number 20 and a third round pick to move up to number 15. And that's where I imagine we're going to draft that safety. If he goes ahead, I'll be both shocked and incredibly disappointed. But he doesn't. Very interesting prospect. A man, B zone. Overall, a very solid athlete. Should be a good player. Does have hidden dev and looks to be quite athletic. Probably an instant starter and we can move that safety back to corner. It's an interesting player. Elite agility. A pass block. Not much of a run blocker probably, but that could be a starting offensive lineman. I know we need a guard at this point, but I do want to take the best offensive lineman I find pretty much regardless of position. This defensive tackle actually looks too good to pass on though. So we're going to draft him. Normal dev, of course, but looks to be very athletic. How good is Gabe Beckett going to be? Day three player, A impact blocking though, A pass block. I think his run blocking is going to be very bad, but if it's a C, it's not actually so bad. It's supposed to be a day three player. This is round two. When is my next pick? I'm going to I'm going to trade out of this spot, roll the dice and get a second round pick from somebody next year. And that team is going to be the New York Giants. Center's still available. I'm not even sure he's going to be all that good. Looks good, but you never know. So I'm I'm hoping he's great. Does have hidden dev, not the strongest, but I guess that's my new starting center. Or maybe even a guard. We need a guard. 
I know that. We'll see what we can do, move some guys around, but I think we're probably starting two rookies on the O-line. Elijah Black ends up being a 73. Dorian Bodden's a 75. Lonnie Mills is a 77. He's one of the best players in the class. Got him at the end of the first round, but normal dev. And then Gabe Beckett's a 75. That's a good uh, starting off or starting overall. In the entire NFL, the highest overall was an 80 right guard, Zaire Gore. How did I miss this guy? Oh, man, that's a big miss. He's not, He's like really just a pass protector. But obviously would be a great player to start. I don't even remember seeing him. So would have been tough. And another good right guard goes the pick after us. The pick we traded away to the Giants, right? Unreal. Big time trade as Chris Olave and a first round pick, as well as a sixth, are being sent to the Ravens for Rudy Jackson. He is a 91 overall running back, right? Or 90 overall. 24 years old, superstar X-Factor, little meatball out of Georgia, 5'8", 200. Little guy. Uh, you know, 200 is like lighter for a running back. Usually you see like, I know it seems like not much, but you know, 205, 210, but he's only 5'8". So that's why I call him a little meatball. But from Georgia, pretty good running back school. Herschel Walker, Todd Gurley. Sony Michelle was a first round pick. Nick Chubb, obviously, what a stud he is. And there are a number of others like Kendall Milton. Uh, Dejan Edwards is good at Georgia right now. And there are plenty more. I mean, it's a running back factory. And we just got the next one, Rudy Jackson. A lot of the time, it just makes more sense to uh, trade for a running back rather than developing one. Not always, but a lot of the time it does. And that's what we've done here. Chris Olave was old and regressing. And we have two good receivers plus the tight end. We just didn't really need them at this point. We're relying on some rookies if we're going to have a chance to go for the three-peat. But the introduction of Rudy Jackson to the offense should be really good for us. I love what the defense looks like. Those guys can really get after it. We have a lot of depth at defensive tackle. Like, maybe too much. So we'll see if anything changes at the midseason mark. But we're looking good. We've won back-to-back -back Super Bowls by my count. And I'm not a great counter. I'm on, I'm on record saying that. But we look real nice. I'm hoping for a three-peat. See at the midseason mark. 99 defense. I need the defense to step up and actually play like it. On offense, the offense is going to be fine. Four and two at the midseason mark, but we have the number one scoring offense and the number six scoring defense. So our defense is just actually playing well, finally. That's very nice. We have 37 million in free agency finally able to spend a bit of money and we don't really have that many players to bring back kyle pitts is going to end up being a weird decision malik blackshear i really don't want to bring back on a massive massive contract i think i think this is honestly fine i'd like to take it down a little bit if possible and malik blackshear is back i don't think that was out of control tim hutchins is also pretty reasonable I would do a five-year deal. He should definitely want to re-sign, and he does. And then Kyle Pitts is tough because he's 31 years old. I do not want to give him a four-year contract, and I don't want to pay him all this money. This is a franchise tag candidate, probably, and we'll see if he ends up accepting it. Now, he thinks that's a joke. Well, I think that's a tag and trade. I can't trade him right now because we need him. And then Tevin McRae puts me in a tough spot. We might try to trade him for another guard and then uh, do something about Kyle Pitts later. But that's that's an issue for later, not now. Beckett and Black, by the way, just star dev. But Tevin McRae has to go. This is the move. Mark Murray from New England, 24 years old, superstar dev, and hopefully with not an expiring contract. Two years left on that. And uh, he'll start at left guard. 15 and 2. The rookies were no problem as our defense finally stepped up in the Carolina Panthers playbook. Number two scoring defense, number one scoring offense. Blackshear with a two touchdown game. And Mac Jones lit it up. But Bo Sheehan was still very, very good, even though the yards went down slightly. Rudy Jackson took away a few of those 14 touchdowns. Kyle Pitts still dominating. Daryl McNeil was great, as was Warren Saunders. Blackshear taking kind of a back seat, to be honest, which is a little bit weird. And then defensively, 
Ooh, we got a lot of pressure. Look at this. 13 sacks for Drayton, 12 and a half for Cofield, 12 for Kovacs. Off the edge? No. They just had 12 sacks somehow. I don't know. Nine and a half for Brzee. He might have been a rush edge, and Cofield could have pushed inside to be a rush D tackle. John Adams with four picks. I'd vote for that. Oh, plus one speed. Nice upgrade for Tim Hutchins as we're staring at a completely black screen. Really good player, now under contract long term. He's going to end up being a great player for us. He'll be the Kovacs replacement. And then John Adams, we can upgrade zone. He's already a 99 overall. Remember, we traded for him. Really, really good player. Yeah, just dominant. 27 years old. So he will start to regress in the somewhat near future, but not really going to be an issue for the next couple years, probably. And then John Drayton, already up to a 93 overall. 99 finesse moves. I need block shed to... Get moving in a hurry. Eagles in the divisional. 85 overall team. We feel unstoppable right now, which means probably a loss, although it doesn't happen. 27 to 3 as we make it to the conference championship in dominant fashion. Want to make Rudy Jackson a bit more well rounded. We have so much time to develop him. He's only 24 years old. So we can make him extremely well rounded as a receiving back, as a power back over the next couple of seasons. And we'll see if we can advance to uh, the Super Bowl. Playing the 8-9 Seattle Seahawks. Let's make it back. That's got to be a win. They're decently rated, but hopefully not rated highly enough in order to compete with us. And we are back in the Super Bowl. Chiefs, Saints. I talked about this being a Super Bowl maybe a season ago. Well, it's finally happening. The coldest Stevenson revenge game. Chiefs Saints, we're looking for the three-peat. Can we win three in a row? That would certainly cement our dynasty. We have a 3 nothing lead early. Chiefs take the lead on a touchdown and get another. It's 14. Now 21-3. to Our offense is asleep at the wheel. Please wake up. It's 24-31-10. It's over. Unfortunately, we'll not be able to three-peat. We're going to drop this one 38-17 at the hands of the Chiefs. Just the offense did not play well or play well enough, clearly. Bo Sheehan with another MVP. No other Saints in there. Unfortunate that we made it back to the Super Bowl, but couldn't end up beating the Chiefs. They're just a really tough team to beat. They still have Patrick Mahomes in 2032. And uh, that, yeah, that's just a tough team to beat. That's all there is to it. Two out of three ain't bad. RIP Meatloaf. And we'll try to uh, make it three out of four in 2033. Picking up the fifth year option on John Drayton, obviously. And then Kyle Pitts, I'd like to have back while we figure out a replacement. So I can offer him a two-year deal. I can up the money a little bit, but I can't do it significantly. And he is going to get franchise tagged, and we're going to have to look for a replacement. It's one year, $13.2 He doesn't really want to be here, and he is regressing. So tight end, especially in this offense, is now in immediate need. I was really hoping for a tight end somewhere in the top 10. Not seeing it right now. I'm always going to look at the edge rushers center in the top 15, but he doesn't look like generational or anything. Show me a really good tight end here. There just isn't one. Steve Nash is here. <laughs> I'll have to pass. There's the first tight end. He actually does look pretty good. A catching traffic, a deep route running. Here, we'll take a look. The class doesn't look spectacular, really. I mean, there are a couple of good players in here for sure, but... I don't think any that I'm particularly interested in could be a trade down year. Pick at number three overall. We've really done a good job of positioning ourselves uh, in the top half of the draft so far. And I keep doing it by trading down, getting future first rounders and hoping that the team's going to be bad enough uh, that we, that we, you know, the, from the team that we traded from, who we have their pick. I, I, I'm not saying what I want to say well. I have too many audios of college football games in my ears right now. I apologize. A 2034 and 2035 first round pick from the Vikings plus a second next year. So trading down a lot, but I think the Vikings are going to be bad. And hopefully that ends up working out for us. Jamichael McCain, are you worth drafting? Looks like a really good athlete. I don't see the downside here. Might be smarter to just trade for a tight end. But to me, he seems like he's worth this pick. 
uh, at number 17, so it's a lot earlier than he's expected to go. But Jamichael McCain out of Mizzou, welcome to New Orleans, heading down south. Hidden Dev, not the craziest athlete, 83 speed, but 88 acceleration, 85 agility. 6'2", 244, interesting build. Maybe like a Shannon Sharp clone. I'd take that. Back-to-back -back picks in the second round. If, again, nobody interests me, we'll just be trading for future picks. Trying to continue the dynasty. Let's take a shot on a coverage linebacker from LSU. Hidden Dev, very good athlete. And probably not a starter this season, but a good option in case we lose Joe Kovacs, which will eventually happen. And also I have back-to-back -back picks, that's right. How about another tight end? This one is more blocking oriented, but seems like he can also catch the football. And it also has Hidden Dev. Keith Mallard looks fairly similar and went to Texas. Hook him. <laughs> nice. The Broncos have been pretty bad. We'll get their second round pick in two years for this pick at the very end of the second round. I think that's a wise decision. Another defensive tackle I know. 21 years old, elite speed. Ran in the four sevens at his pro day. A finesse moves, B block shed. B awareness, B play rec. He's got to be the pick. Hidden dev, 80 speed. 86 strength, 80 acceleration. That feels like a really, really great pick. We have defensive tackle depth. I'm fully aware of this. This could potentially move us to a 3-4 if we wanted to do that. We just have such incredible depth. Some of those guys are going to end up being traded for sure. But also it gives us the flexibility to play around with dev traits. If one ends up being an X-Factor, uh, we could move him into a starting role. If one ends up being you know, a superstar... We could trade another one with an expiring contract. We have options. More trading down. Future third rounder from Chicago. I just don't really see anybody at this juncture that I'm too interested in. Let the CPU finish the draft. Hopefully we hit on an X Factor. I tweeted this out probably a few weeks ago when I was doing my draft class editing for the 2024 NFL Draft Bengal on Xbox. And there are just random like 60 overall rookies with X Factor for some reason. So... Hoping to get one of those at one point. These tight ends are very close. They'll be good backups to Kyle Pitts for this season. And then Jermichael McCain, or the highest dev trait one, probably starts year two. Josh Payne's a good backup. Trevor Griffith is only a 71. Good developmental guy. Ooh, an 83 overall running back. Goes to who else but the 49ers who love to draft a running back. It's like a weird draft class and from what i saw there was a 69 overall defensive end that went in the first round and not not only the first round but the top four yeah kind of a bust yeah we just have a great team you know we, we set it up so perfectly now that when we go into the draft there isn't really a position that we need it just go best player available and yes kyle pitts i think there's a chance we trade him there really is could trade for a tight end. I know we just drafted two who were pretty good. Uh, but getting draft capital back for Kyle Pitts could end up being absolutely huge. So we'll see what happens simulating to the midseason mark. Four and two at the midseason mark. Our defense has taken a step back. The offense is pretty much as good as ever. We rank number three, but over 30 points per game is incredible. 114 million in available salary cap room. And that's because everybody is going to be a free agent here. And a lot of these players are close to 30 or over. It is going to be pretty expensive. I think we should probably have the money to do it. The question just becomes, do we trade Kyle Pitts? I think I'm leaning towards yes. This is one of those deals that's probably just too good not to take. Kyle Pitts and Jalen Alexander, two expiring contracts for a superstar X-Factor corner who's just 22 years old. Now, Tyree Sweed, see a rush linebacker, surely is at 6'3", 255. Three years left on his deal. That could be a good get for us. We need defensive tackle. They don't have a tight end, and I don't think I want their defensive tackle. Kyle Pitts, Jair Alexander is not on the team at all. Uh, it's our defensive tackle, Jay Alexander, and Nicholas Weathers, who's an 80 overall normal dev player, plus a third round pick, gets us a 2036 round one from the Lions, plus the 22-year-old superstar X-Factor corner. And uh, that is certainly a nice way to finalize our cornerback trio. As we traded Weathers away, we have a very good one. That's our next 99 overall. He will be a 99 at some point. 
Booth has an expiring contract. He's 30 years old. Probably wouldn't be the worst idea to look into a trade for him. But he's so good. It, you know, it's tough to trade my guys and just be so heartless. But it's just smart to do that. Yeah, I have to accept this from the Steelers. Kerry Vaughn is a superstar X-Factor tight end at 24 years old. I'm trading a first round pick and Roosevelt Booth to get him. So that is a big time move. These tight ends are just going to be at least good depth. Could end up trading one of those, but you just can't turn down the opportunity to get a player like this. Five years left on his deal, 24 years old, superstar X Factor. Like it was the move that had to be done. And we have a solid CB2 to replace Booth. Better dev trait under contract. We will have to extend him at some point. And, um, like, we could go out and get another corner, probably. Trading a first-round pick for Trey Covington of the Patriots. I just think we needed a better third corner after making some moves, of course. So, a first-round pick guarantees this one. He's under contract and uh, is fairly young as well. So, he's going to be an instant starter in the slot. Should be a pretty good player for us. Already has great attributes. Zone coverage is low, for sure but is a really great man-to-man -man guy. And our team, as you guys know, looks just amazing. We do need a better uh, defensive tackle, probably. Totally agree with that. But right now, you know, I'm not really super worried about it. So now it's time to bring back some of these guys. Curtis Stokes is going to be very expensive. I really didn't think he would be. We've extended him a couple times, right? So he's a 99 overall. How much can he really regress in three seasons? I don't think a ton. 20 million per year is way too much, but we're going to extend Curtis Stokes. He's the lifeblood of the team. And then Rudy Jackson's another one who's just a little bit too expensive for me. But he's a 99 overall, right? And he accepts. He's, he has red confidence on that or red interest and just ends up re-signing anyway, which is nice. Mark Murray is very cheap. That is an easy seven-year deal. And Mark Murray is back. That was way too cheap for somebody as good as he is. Brian Brzee, we will have to be moving on from. And I'll say three seasons. We're going to extend him. Still a 99 overall. Um, Justin Blackwell, maybe for two seasons. He's probably not going to like a two-year deal, though. Yeah, he wants a longer deal. That's probably like a franchise tag situation. Same thing with Daryl McNeil. Well, it can't be a franchise tag situation. He signs a one-year deal, actually, to remain a Saint. That actually does us a big favor. We're going to pick up the fifth-year option on Dorian Westbrook when we can. And then Blackwell probably gets the tag. We have only $11 million left, and I need to keep saving money. But we'll, uh, we'll see what happens. Playoff time. Four and two. And we should, we should probably win 13-ish games, something like that. And we end up winning 15 games again. Rudy Jackson, four rushing touchdowns. Unreal. Only four yards per attempt, though. So I guess a lot of goal line situations as Bo Sheehan dominates again. We're just getting used to it. That's what he does. Rudy Jackson with 20 scores receiving. Kerry Vaughn's first season in New Orleans is a good one as we bring the LSU guy back to the bayou. I forget where we traded for him from. Tennessee, maybe? Could have been. Not sure. 13 TDs for McNeil. 13 for Malik Blackshear. Only one touchdown for Warren Saunders. And then defensively, Curtis Stokes still putting up really good numbers. A ton of pressure. Chris Cofield with 19 and a half sacks. 12 for John Drayton. And then a, a decent number of interceptions, I guess. Falcons in the division. Let's see you here. We beat them. We're going to the conference championship after the division round win. And Bo Sheehan, we just can't upgrade. He's a 99 overall. He's as good as he gets. He will constantly have a skill point, which should help his regression as we try to beat the 13-4, and 4, 88 overall Dallas Cowboys, hopefully playing in another Super Bowl, and we're not. It's going to be a matchup we see pretty often. Cowboys, Chiefs, Rudy Jackson's going to go up to a 99 overall. Maybe I'll do power back. Nope, stays at a 99, or 98, but is playing up to a 99. Still very good. Yeah, just really more of an elusive back. I'm trying to make him a little bit more power-oriented as well, but it's just not happening. And as you can see, we just cannot upgrade Bo Sheehan, no matter how much I try. 
It's a good season, just can't get the Super Bowl again. Seems to be pretty elusive. We've been to four straight Super Bowls. We split, you know, two and two, but we're 0 for 2 in our last two tries, so I need to turn that around. One year deal for Justin Blackwell. He actually decides to accept that. We need to get better in our secondary. We have 23 million. I'm not doing anything in free agency. It's just not happening. I'd rather save my money at this point, and we'll see what we can do in the draft. Need help in the secondary. And, I mean, maybe even on the O-line still. I thought Beckett had star dev. Did he win Offensive Lineman of the Year or something? He did. So he goes up to Superstar Dev. He goes and gets a nice upgrade for us. Still could consider, I would say, could, still could consider an Offensive Lineman. Receiver actually ends up being an issue. As McNeil's our best option. But he's regressing now with the normal dev. He's 31 years old, down to an 84 overall. That's the one downside of going normal dev over superstar X-Factor, like I did. And then defensively, we're still fine. Kovacs is regressing a bit, as is Stokes. So, and Griffith does have superstar X-Factor. Did he win anything to get that? No, he just had it. So we drafted another superstar X-Factor player. He has a lot of development to do, but now we know we can just start him. Look at all this red. Absolutely wild. Baden ends up having Superstar Dev, but he didn't. He had Star. I saw it for sure. He just got Superstar Dev, though, for being cool. I like that. But we, we... I guess maybe we don't even need a safety then because we can just move Baden over to start with Superstar Dev. I think it's just a situation where we draft BPA, but if there's a really good receiver, that would be the best. So we pick at number 12 overall. Giants at number 1. And we need receiver. That's a pretty big need right now. I think we could end up trading out of this pick. There were some edge rushers I looked at. It's not really a big need, but you guys know I can't help myself. I see elite speed, A finesse moves. I'm going to have to pull the trigger. I'm just going to have to. Hidden dev, 86 speed, 89 acceleration. Could end up being a starter for us one day. Just you take edge rushers high in the draft when you can. And we'll figure out receiver. That's what I got for you. We can trade out of this pick. We could draft a receiver and hope for a high dev trait. Decent looking corner out of Louisville. Yeah, we're just going to trade out of this pick. We are going to get a way better receiver right now than we could have from this pick anyway. And probably even number 12 overall as well. There's going to be value here. We also have future first round picks that we could look to trade as well. We have... Two next year and multiple second round picks and then two in 2036. So we are set up to go out and get a really good receiver. It can happen. Is this the move? First round pick number 30 for Max Rich. 24 years old, superstar dev. I'm going to pull the trigger. I don't see why not. Clyde Paul, this is a good looking guard available. 21 years old, got good key ratings, uh, ratings great strength. Just fell into our lap. Hidden Dev, 92 strength, 82 acceleration. That's a great pickup here near the top of the second round, round two, pick eight. That could be one of the better players in the draft. I think we're going to take another guard here. Sean Brooks could just be good depth. We know he's a good pass protector, only normal development. Looks to be a pretty good inside linebacker. We have good depth at linebacker already, but we'll bring in another one. Wheatley ends up being a 75 overall, 73 for Clyde Paul. Brooks is also a 73. Gibson's a 70. Not all that bad. I think we did pretty well in this draft that had a pretty good player at the top, 79 overall safety. Niles Nichols goes at the top of the second round, also 78 for Miles Banyard out of Texas. And then a bunch of 77s, including Donatello Leach. His name is Donatello. Got a Ninja Turtle in the draft. So this is the team. Max Rich going to play over McNeil right now and probably will be our slot receiver as well. This should be another really good team. Only three and three at the midseason mark. Our offense has regressed a ton. We're only scoring 17 points per game despite having a ton of yards. I'm just going to hope that this is a weird start to the season. It seems like we're being very productive, just not getting the results in the red zone at this point. But we're going to start finding the end zone, I think, in the second half of the season. And I have a ton of confidence that the team's going to figure it out and make the playoffs again. We'll have to bring back a couple of players as well. John Adams, I'd love to give a little bit more job security to. How about a four-year deal? How do you want more money? I don't know if I can do a lot more money. That's a franchise tag candidate. 
John Drayton probably for five years I'd feel pretty good about. And he's back. Damian Madison ends up being a steal. Seven-year deal, but we've locked down a really, really great starting corner. Thomas Jenkins, we really can't afford to re-sign. Joe Kovacs is in here. Ooh. Uh, we are in a bit of a tough spot again. And Max Rich. Oh, it's a fifth-year option. Okay. And fifth-year options are expensive, too. So we can't really necessarily pick up all of those. Some of these players are just too expensive. Brooks Krieg is back, though. Yeah, we're going to have to make some trades. All right, we are trading Jenkins to the Eagles for Josh Davis. He was a really good, strong safety. Uh, he's the second highest rated in the league, but he had an expiring contract. We go down, we get Josh Davis. He's 26 years old, and he has incredible man coverage and hit power and tackle. It's going to be a great starting strong safety for us. And we do need a free safety as well, because right now we have Justin Blackwell, but he's 31 years old, also with an expiring contract. Is there anyone? It's like... Yeah, 25 with a good dev trait. 26 would probably work. Tyrone Carmichael with Superstar X Factor. If we can just trade for him straight up, that would be awesome. If we can't, doesn't matter. We can. So we downgrade a bit in the overall uh, for a better future, hopefully. Dude, we have an entire starting defense of Superstar X Factors. This has to be the first time I've ever done that in a rebuild. That's pretty incredible. Ooh, look at this linebacker. Emmett Ferguson. Block shedding's low. He's 25 years old at a UCF, so he was 23 when he was drafted. I'm going to craft an unfortunate trade where we have to trade Joe Kovacs. Final year of his deal. Really good player, obviously, but 31 years old, regressing. If I can end up getting an X-Factor linebacker and a first-round pick that's projected to be in the top 10, I am going to do that. And instead of... This year, I'll take their first round pick next year, which is less valuable, and that goes through straight away. So Joe Kovacs had a great run with us for sure, but we have managed to get his replacement. I remember Corin Waters, he's up to superstar dev, but Emmett Ferguson's going to play left outside linebacker, and uh, we're going to develop him into a beast. He's already a lot of the way there. Got to get that block shedding up. It'll make him one of the better linebackers in the entire league. 11 and 6 back in the playoffs, but unfortunately back in the wild card. Bo Sheehan with another great year throwing the ball, but only 31 touchdowns. That's still a lot in real life, but in this simulation, we've seen him go for way more. 15 TDs for Rudy Jackson. We just didn't score as much this year as our receivers really did not show up. Like Malik Blackshear barely even played an impact. I guess we really do need three good receivers. Chris Cofield with a great year, 17 sacks. Three picks for Curtis Stokes, who had just an overwhelmingly good year as the award winner tag. It's got to be linebacker of the year, potentially even defensive player of the year. He surely made another Pro Bowl, but I don't see it. All right, we beat the Falcons in the wild card. Can we beat the Cowboys? They're a team that's really tough to beat, and it's 44-41 as it's Saints-Bears. This is a big throwback video. I feel like we have some classic late 2000s matchups, and of course we're going to beat the Bears. And now it's going to be Saints-Ravens. Bo Sheehan cannot be upgraded still, probably. How long is he going to be on the team? The entire rebuild? I'm down. I'm down. We're going to have to extend him at some point. But we're a 97 overall team. Raven-Saints looking for our third Super Bowl of the video. And we just keep making the Super Bowl pretty much every year. Don't let the Ravens be in this game, please. It's 14-14, 21-14 going into the half. Nope, they got a field goal up. But it's 28-17. Play defense, please. All right, we held them out of the end zone. 35-20. That's got to be the game, essentially. 35-27 is your final. Another Super Bowl for the Saints. Our third, and third for that guy. Our starting quarterback. He is a monster. He's Bo Sheehan. Throws for 355 in the Super Bowl with two touchdowns. The guy is unbe unbelievable, unbeatable, unstoppable. Ex except for the few Super Bowls where he's been stopped already. But don't think about those. Don't worry about that. Another Super Bowl for us. Nobody in the yearly awards, though. But the fourth overall Super Bowl, third of the video, obviously. John Adams has regressed down to a 98. I'm not giving him 
a super cushy deal. I would, yeah, do two years. Our historic career win percentage now is over 50%, which is nice. John Adams is back for the next two seasons, and that's all we can do, actually. And Emmett Ferguson, oh, it's a fifth-year option. Okay, we're going to pick that up, of course. Max Rich as well. NFL draft time. How do we look? I picked up a lot of these fifth-year options. It's going to be pretty expensive for us next season. Team still looks great. We could use a receiver. That's probably my number one uh, priority, I would say, going into this draft. If there's a really good receiver, they will be a saint. I don't care what it takes. If there's not, I might trade for one. I might do something else. I'm not sure. And then defensively, we just look pretty amazing is, is, is how it's going to continue to be. A linebacker supposed to go at number one. Okay. These classes just don't have the receiver talent that I'm looking for. Jerry Collins out of Clemson. Deep threat, elite speed. All right, we'll take a shot. Normal dev, of course. Yeah. Um, what I get for taking a white receiver from Clemson? This is Hunter Renfro V2. I'm not interested. Stanley Willis is still here. He's 23 years old. Solid speed. He looks well-rounded. It's a good depth pickup in our secondary. He'll do something. Donatello Leach does have superstar development. The question is, is there a better receiver I can get? Ron Borden, maybe? It's a second round pick this year, a first next year. We have a couple and just a random middle linebacker to get Donatello Leach onto the squad. A receiver that we can develop. Superstar Dev, 23 years old, should be a good pickup. Jerry Collins does end up being a 77. And the safeties that we got, not too bad. Middle linebacker in there. Looks like he could be pretty good. 71 overall for middle linebackers. Really not too bad in the draft. So pretty good from us. And there was a safety that was an 83 overall. Max Crane from AM. 92 speed, 86 zone coverage. Yeah, that's a beast. Hopefully the addition of a better third receiver makes the offense go back to functioning a little bit better than it was last season. Got Griffith back. Specialist wise, everything is where we need it to be. And yeah, it, it should be a great team. We were disappointing the regular season for a time last year, ended up figuring it out. And uh, I think we'll simulate the midseason mark again. 2035 now, over a decade deep into this thing. And I'm pretty happy with the success we've experienced so far. Obviously want a little bit more of it, but three Super Bowl wins, we'll take that. Seven and O oh at the midseason mark. That's a pretty good spot to be in. And look who it is, Bo Sheehan with an expiring contract. And we do not have the money to offer him. How is this happening? Because I keep picking up these fifth-year options. Uh, but I want them, but I, you know, it, it is what it is. It, it puts us in a tough spot. What do we do about it? I'm not trading him. We're going to restructure some deals so that we at least can offer our quarterback and then franchise tag him and then get rid of some of these fifth-year option contracts. And keep our quarterback. That's the goal. We lost in week 18. We had the number one offense and defense. We went 16 and one. Going for the perfect season and we lose the Falcons at the buzzer. Are you joking? Bo Sheehan with 4,600 yards passing, 41 touchdowns to just one interception. Rudy Jackson had 20 touchdowns. Kerry Vaughn continues to dominate. Malik Blackshear had 17 TDs. Donatello Leach was good. Max Rich existed. Curtis Stokes with a great season per usual. And then a ton of pressure. Cofield with 17 and a half sacks, 13 for, or 13 and a half for Brzee. Four picks for John Adams playing in the slot. Doing a great job. I'm looking for another Super Bowl this year. Things are starting to fall apart a little bit in terms of money. But we nearly go undefeated in the regular season. And hopefully we can win out Look who it is. The 14-3 Falcons. Can we get our revenge? Yes. 45-10. We're going to go play the Browns in the Super Bowl. The Browns and Saints. Um, Scott Fujita Bowl. <laughs> That's my go-to Brown and Saint. Not Jarvis Landry, right? Uh, Scott Fujita. 97 overall against an 87 overall. We'll see if we can beat the Browns. Playing it in Santa Clara, California. We are up 17 to 10 after a Browns touchdown. Really good first half for us. 31-10 now. I don't think the Browns really came to play. Or they were just going up against too good of a team, which is what we are. Another Super Bowl win. 
That's four in the video, five total for the Saints, which is probably the figure I'm going to use over the rest of this thing. 34-13, Bo Sheehan wins another. Bo Sheehan wins MVP again, but the Super Bowl MVP ends up being Curtis Stokes, our middle linebacker. Rudy Jackson, the running back, wins Offensive Player of the Year. And Defensive Player of the Year goes to our defensive end, Chris Cofield. So we're going to have just enough money to offer Bo Sheehan. But of course, not much more than that. And we're going to franchise tag him. And we'll have a little bit more flexibility the next year. He's still crazy expensive, which is a little bit annoying. He should be, but it is annoying. Picking at 14 overall, I love not having our pick and winning the Super Bowl. Here's a player we might want, Clyde Banfield from Iowa State. A catching traffic, A catching, A release. Really good athlete. Really good route running. That's our like potential X-Factor receiver. Number 14 and number 32 gets us number three from Denver, where thankfully we roll the dice and the receiver ends up still being available. I think he's going to be really good. Clyde Banfield from Iowa State, 6'3", about 230 pounds. Really good athlete. Great catching and route running. Should be phenomenal. I keep using that word, I, I keep realizing, but 93 speed, 90 acceleration, great agility and jumping. I don't know about generational, but I do think he's going to be very good. All right, I think we draft... Well, one of these corners, probably who's ever faster. They both have A zone, B press, C man. Let's see here. Good speed, elite acceleration. Definitely like Eddie McLean. Only D play rec, but B tackle. I'm thinking about one of these guys at safety. 22 years old, also good speed, elite strength. They're very similar. Um, we will go with, let's see, Cumberland was 22. Eddie McLean is 21. We're going to take the younger player for more development opportunities. 92 speed, 94 acceleration. It's so close it didn't matter. It was just, how do I make the decision? That ends up being the way we do it. And you know what? Earl Cumberland is available as well. We'll draft him too. He also has hidden dev. So nice, uh, nice athletic rating. So we got both of them. Clyde Banfield ends up being an 82 overall player. Really nice. 99 spectacular catch right out of the draft. Great catching and catching in traffic. Overall, route running is pretty good. Deep isn't amazing, but he's going to be amazing as a player. Eddie McLean to 77, 75 for Earl Cumberland. The CPU drafted a tight end who's no good. And then a running back who's not too bad. 74 overall, hidden dev. Power back too. So definitely not something we have currently. Uh, a nice draft for us for sure. CPU actually got a good one. And we got the number one player in the class. There was a good running back, Kenya Offord. The Browns took it 31. And a pretty good class overall. Got a top five player in Eddie McLean at the end of the second round. That is amazing. We don't really have much of a right tackle. We're going to have to kick Sean Brooks out there. He's too short. Uh, I don't want to do that. Clyde Paul is going to be a mauler. 6'4", 340. You're playing tackle now. He's got good enough movement skills. I feel decent about it. So the offensive line's not great. We're losing some talent for sure. Our defense stays pretty amazing. I guess Brian Brzee retired. So that's kind of tough. We lost a very, very good interior defensive line, and that's going to hurt our defense. But our defense is overall so great that I'm not sure it's going to matter a whole ton. And if you're wondering why I don't trade for any right now, well, we just don't have any cap room, so I can't actually make a trade happen at all. So what we're going to do is just simulate through 2036, try to win yet another Super Bowl, and we'll see what we can do for the contracts at the midseason mark. Five and two at the midseason mark. Not too bad. What's our money situation going to be like? 157 million. But I imagine our entire team needs to be re-signed. And that's actually not totally the case. We're going to offer Boshi in a six-year deal. He is back. But it definitely will handcuff us a bit in terms of bringing back other players. Like, I just can't give this much money to an off-ball linebacker when they're thinking he's an edge rusher. He's not getting close to 30 mil per year. I'd like to bring back a lot of these players on short-er-ish deals. Because I don't want to pay them all of this money. But, you know, sometimes we're just going to have to bite the bullet. Like, Trevor Griffith cannot leave. Gotta be a seven-year deal. It's actually pretty affordable considering how good he's gonna get 
Hopefully he gets into the 90s. It's just my entire team. No, it really is most of the team. They all want big money deals. And I just don't have that capability. I can't bring everybody back. We are about to lose so much talent. And I didn't trade a lot of these guys away. Malik Blackshear is not going to be somebody we can re-sign. Curtis Stokes is down to an 88. It really is almost my whole team in here. That's crazy. And maybe even crazier than that, none of them really want to be here. Tired of winning, I guess? Hmm, I don't know what that's like. We're just going to see what happens in, you know, the rest of this season, into the offseason. We're not going to make a lot of decisions now. As I've said, you know, a billion times at this point, it's really tough to sign that quarterback and then still put a really great team around him. So we are going to lose a ton of talent. It's just about, you know what, how many... How many players can we get through the draft for cheaper to replace those guys and then do the same thing over again? N down to negative 33.9 million uh, with this, you know, the contracts readjusting. 40 touchdowns for Bo Sheehan, great year. Rudy Jackson continues to kill it. And then receiving, Blackshear goes for 18 scores. I just can't bring him back. We just don't have the money for it. And oh my goodness, 28 and a half sacks for Chris Cofield? 31 years old, but how do you let a guy like this go? I mean, he is unbelievably good. Nearly 30 sacks, far and away an NFL record, by the way. I haven't seen that high of a sack total in quite some time. Usually it's been a lot lower than that of late, but another 15 and two season where we have the number one offense and number one defense. I think re-signing the quarterback was the biggest thing and the team around him is just gonna figure itself out. I think pretty much everybody can win when you have this type of a quarterback. No, you obviously need more. I changed positions on Curtis Stokes and Emmett Ferguson, the middle linebacker and left outside linebacker. We've switched positions on those guys as we face the Eagles in the conference championship, and we win. We are playing in a, yet another Super Bowl, Tennessee versus New Orleans, and we'll try to get yet another Super Bowl victory. We clearly have the advantage. Will it end up mattering in the game? We'll have to see. I think we're just going to simulate this one, see if we can win another. We've seen the celebration so many times up to this point. Let's just get another win. And I want to say that's exactly what happens. It is. 26 to 21, we end up getting the victory. Bo Sheehan wins another MVP and another Super Bowl MVP. Rudy Jackson, Offensive Player of the Year. Chris Cofield, Defensive Player of the Year. Coach of the Year. Everything of the year. This was our year, yet another Super Bowl. We've certainly cemented the dynasty here in 2036. I think Donatello Leach could be a player we trade. There are just a lot of really good players we can't bring back. I just feel like I don't want to get no value back for them, but I can probably only sign two of the players here. Emmett Ferguson is wanting a lot less now that he's a middle linebacker, but wants to play in a bigger market. I give him a three-year deal. And hopefully he locks down middle linebacker. He's going to test free agency. What's the franchise tag cost? 16 mil? Yeah, we're going to do that. I think it makes more sense to keep him. Donatello Leach is just a fifth-year option. Carmichael, maybe. I think John Adams for a year is going to be good. Bring him back for 20 mil. And then 14 million to bring back one more player is just not going to happen, probably. Curtis Stokes is going to have to go. Gosh, dude, what do we do here? Josh Davis, we can probably get for like 15 mil. Four years. Can I take down the money just a little bit so I can actually afford this? Going to test free agency. That's fine. Yeah, we'll pick up the fifth year option, I think, on Cameron Wheatley. And that's probably it. I think Donatello Leach is going to end up being trade bait. 21 teams interested in Malik Blackshear. He's so good. I mean, my entire team is in free agency here. These are all of my players. And I just can't bring back any of them. Banfield ends up having star dev Curtis. Who is Curtis? He was a rookie tight end that's just no good that the CPU drafted, I guess. He's got superstar X Factor. I don't really want him, though. We don't need that. It's great to have a superstar X Factor player, but I'd prefer one that I can actually use. And we can't use that player at all. Uh, Max Rich, I actually kind of wish I picked up his fifth-year option. He's going to be quite good. And 
We have three solid receivers. We need a center. Could use another offensive lineman, period. Got Wheatley Baden. I mean, the corners are good. Adams, I need to trade. We need edge rusher badly. I need another defensive tackle. This, we might be due some regression in 2037. All right, we'll simulate to the end of the first round here. Looked like there were a bunch of good players, um, but all we have in this draft are our picks, I guess. I haven't traded players in a while. A couple of good-looking tight ends. We don't really need them. How about a tackle? A to B run block, B pass block. He's a power-oriented guy. Decent enough athlete. Let's take a shot. 88 strength, hidden dev. Maybe a starter on the O-line. What about Gerald Lowry from South Carolina, who almost lost to Jacksonville State, by the way? Says he only has solid speed, but he ran really well. A block should be press, B zone. A to C man, but he's man-to-man -man archetype, so probably at least a B. Only normal dev. I thought he was the best-looking player available, so we drafted him, but unfortunately, don't get lucky on the dev trait. Tremont Patterson ends up being a 73. Not so bad. Not amazing, obviously, when a 78 overall offensive tackle goes at number one. Bunch of good corners down the board as well. We didn't get any of them. Who'd we take? We took... What was his overall? Like a 74, was it? 70, 74. Took him at the end of the second round, though, so it's not like we had, like, the pick of anybody. Okay, this is the team. Again, we, we took a bit of a step back. Doing the best we can. Still have some really good players. I'm probably going to end up trading John Adams at the deadline. Still a really good player, just obviously not in our long-term future, as we uh, are just like five, six years, maybe seven away from 2043, which is where this thing's going to end. I'd like to win another Super Bowl in that time. We'll see if we can. 77 million. Kerry Vaughn wants to be here. That's a pleasant surprise, because basically the entire team doesn't. I'll do a five-year deal. I think that makes sense for me. 63 million left. Emmett Ferguson, I'd still like to bring back, but not on a four-year deal. And he's going to want more money because he uh, doesn't like to play in a small market. Wants more eyes on him. I don't know. I feel like the New Orleans uh, fan bases are pretty good. Really just the Saints, I guess. But I'll count LSU. Baton Rouge is not too far away. A lot of LSU fans in New Orleans, I would imagine. Rudy Jackson. He's 29, man. 29, probably not worth extending. John Adams, we got to trade. Tim Hutchins is 30. That really happened in a hurry, I feel like. Okay, who has a great middle linebacker I can steal? That's what I'm looking for right now. Preferably someone who's like 24 years old. TJ Williams from the U, the next Ray Lewis. Uh, unrelated note, I just thought of it randomly. I hope he doesn't murder anybody. Um, what can we trade here? They need a left outside linebacker. I can't really give you one of those. I can give you Emmett Ferguson and his massive contract. How's that sound? Do you have anybody else I could steal? Yeah, preferably, preferably someone not, ooh, not super old. Kenya Offord, superstar X-Factor running back. We can work something out here because I'm looking to trade my running back. This could end up being a great deal for us. Who's someone really good that they have that's young? So TJ Williams is in there. Corner I don't necessarily need. It's probably just going to be a draft pick. How about your 2031 first rounder? And, or yeah, 2039, excuse me. And their 2040 first rounder. How about that? Okay, there's something here though. A lot of draft picks are changing hands as Ferguson and Jackson are headed to Cleveland. Williams and Offord are headed to New Orleans. We're trading a first this year, a second next year, a third this year, and a third in 2040 for those two players I talked about, and a 2039 and 2040 first round pick. Feel like that's a good move for us. We got a running back of the future, middle linebacker of the future as well. And we still need to trade the president, John Adams. Yeah, whatever this is, we're going to do it. Reggie Moody from Tennessee. X-Factor player, 26 years old. He has six years left on his deal. I don't care if he's a pass rusher or an off-ball player. And he probably is a pass rusher at 255 pounds. That's a nice get for us. Kind of need both. Makes sense. Yeah, Moody is a speed rusher. I'm going to slide him down to left end. And we can potentially trade our left end. We can go out and get another good corner. We do a lot of different things here. But we're trying to make sure the team stays as good as possible. 
and trading some of our lifetimers are, you know, it's, it's unfortunately the way to do it. So do we still need help at linebacker? I feel like we kind of do, right? Pretty sure. 90 overall team. Like, Mitchell's fine. Williams is nice. We have Hutchins still. Safety isn't amazing. Corner's not amazing. But I think for the future, we're in a slightly better position, even though we just traded a lot of really good players. And it seems like we didn't get a ton back for them, probably. But I feel like we made the right moves again. And, I mean, a lot of it's worked out so far. We've won a ton of Super Bowls. And we're going to try to win another one in 2037. 12 and 5 have made another set of the playoffs here. Earl Cumberland upgrade slot, because that's going to give us like a plus two or three to man coverage, probably. Or even better, we get a plus four. His man coverage is terrible. I talked about the possibility of moving any of those guys back to safety. Right now, we just need him to stick a corner as Bo Sheehan finishes second in passing yards, third in touchdowns, only five picks. Kenya offered his first year. It's hard to tell because he played half of it in Cleveland, but seems to be pretty good to me. 15 touchdowns. Kerry Vaughn continues to dominate 100 catches for over 1,300 yards. 11 TDs for Clyde Banfield. That's really nice. And then defensively, I think I just hiccup there. That's fun. Uh, 23 TFLs for Reggie Moody, 8.5 sacks. 15.5 for John Drayton. Remember, some of those numbers are going to be a little bit skewed because we traded for some of those guys at the trade deadline. See if we can beat the Falcons in the wild card. Down to a 93 overall team. That's still quite good, though. And we do advance to the divisional to take on the 49ers. Also a pretty good team around the same. And it's another close win, this time even closer, 24-21. And we have the Cowboys standing in our way yet again. One game away from the Super Bowl, and the Cowboys will be playing in them. The number two offense and number three defense gets knocked off at the hands of the Dallas Cowboys as they'll take on the Jets. Cowboys and Jets, Mo Claiborne, Morris Claiborne Bowl, probably others as well. I know there are other Cowboys and Jets. Keanu Neal, maybe? I feel like Keanu Neal could have played on the Jets. I definitely remember him on the Cowboys. Was Keanu Neal a Jet? I feel like he was. I'm not 100% on that. Keanu Neal was not a Jet. And I think Anthony Barr almost signed with the Jets. I know he's... Cowboys, also Vikings, of course. Keanu Neal, not a Jet. Why did it feel like he was? I don't know. Cowboys win the Super Bowl. Mahomes wins MVP with the Bills. Unreal. 57 million. That's enough to bring back Tim Hutchins for a couple of seasons. Yeah, I, I would say we're going to do that. At least gives me time to find a, a replacement for him. We'll go into the 2038 offseason. Uh, I can't imagine I'm going to spend any money in free agency. I'll take a look. I really haven't had a ton of money for free agency this, uh, this entire video, obviously, this entire rebuild. So I'll at least take a look. But yeah, there's not really anybody I want. Kind of a lot of washed up players that I might have considered trading for at one point in this. But now it's 2037. They're 33, 34 years old. Still have the great depth trait, but not going to do anything for me. 12 and 5 is a first round buy. What? Nope, the season's over. I kind of... Forgot where we were. I've only been recording this video for three days. I guess I'm loopy at this point. We don't pick until the end of the second round. I guess I traded all my picks. Let's draft Joe Roberts. Agile archetype. Seems to be a good athlete. Like the skills enough. Hidden Dev, another nice pickup on the O-line. He ends up being a 73 overall. Really not too bad, especially with Hidden Dev. As an 81 overall receiver, Marquise Nash ends up going at number one overall out of Cal. Cal's produced a, a good receiver or two. Keenan Allen is, is one that jumps to mind. Why do I want to say Marvin Jones went to Cal? I really... I don't know if that's correct. I also half want to say Pitt. They have the same colors. I, I want to say Marvin Jones was Cal, but I also thought Keanu Neal was a Jet, and I guess he wasn't. All right, Marvin Jones was Cal. I was right about that. I'm off my game, though. Keanu Neal was a Jet. Why does, why does he feel like he was, though? I don't know. All right, this is what the team's looking like. Still really like it. Couple of holes. Obviously not as good as we have been. You know, we had that prime, and then we extended the quarterback, and you go kind of into cap hell. But I feel good about 2038. We are 5-2. Not so bad. I feel like we've been 5-2 and two 
Uh, maybe actually this is the first time. We've had a lot of four and twos, I want to say. As we'll have to pick up the fifth year option on Kenya Offord and potentially Clyde Banfield. Definitely want to work on some extensions with those guys. We have 33 million in cap room. I really just want to save my money right now. And uh, try to win another Super Bowl, ideally. We'll simulate to the playoffs. 14-3. and three, We've earned another first round bye. Bo Sheehan continues to let it up. Goes for over 5,100 yards. 48 touchdowns to just five interceptions. Kenya offered pretty good season. Five per carry, 18 TDs, nearly 1,500 yards rushing. Four receivers with over 1,100 yards, including 16 touchdowns for tight end Kerry Vaughn. Wow. Big time numbers as we had big time numbers from our pass rushers as well. 15 and a half sacks for Reggie Moody, but 26 and a half for John Drayton. We traded up to get him right, and it ends up being a great move. He is a dominant player, and uh, very happy we have him. Three picks for Dorian Baden. I'd love to see another Super Bowl win. I can see a window closing a little bit for us, as a lot of our best players are kind of old at this point. Let's just simulate straight to the Super Bowl in 2038 and hope that we're playing in it. I think we're talented enough to, obviously, and we are back in the Super Bowl. It's going to be Saints, Broncos. Got some upgrades here for Tim Hutchins, Patterson, Kenya Offord as well. And we'll see if we can beat the Broncos in the Super Bowl. I know what Kenya Offord's thinking. Kenya offered me an extension. Good stuff, right? Broncos Saints is like kind of the Champ Bailey Bowl. Remember, he signed with the Saints. Maybe you don't. You probably shouldn't. He signed with the Saints. Went to training camp, and I think he's just like, I'm done. I'm too old for this shit. And hung up the cleats. He's my second favorite player of all time. Big Champ Bailey guy. He was just so, so good. I mean, you gotta respect the game, right? Love Champ Bailey growing up. He was just so talented. And I don't really remember him with the Commanders too much, or Washington, right? But he was so good on the Broncos. And it's kind of gravitated towards... Somebody who was that good at their position at the time growing up, right? So there's a corner at number one overall out of Kentucky. A man, A zone, only C press, but worth considering at number one probably. I know corners don't go at number one overall in real life, but they do here in Madden. And I draft them sometimes here in Madden. And it usually makes sense to do that because the positional value is is not nearly as important in uh, in Madden as it is in real life. So let's just go up and make a big time splash of a trade with the Steelers. We'll see what we can move and we'll try to get a monster corner. And that's a position to need a lot of expiring contracts as well for us. Let's trade Earl Cumberland. It feels like we just drafted. I need a safety. One of those guys can move back. Linebacker looks pretty good, but we could use another one. Pass rush looks pretty good, but we could use a defensive tackle. I like where the O-line is quite a bit bit. It's got to develop those guys. Uh, Curtis might be wise to trade. Receiver, we're in a really good spot. Halfback, of course, running back in a really nice spot. We have back-to-back, -back, or nearly back-to-back -back picks here at the end of the first round. Um, we should be able to get something. And yeah, I think I'm going to try trading up to number one. It just costs way too much to move up, so that's just not going to be something we really consider. going to try to trade some players. Tim Hutchins has been great for us, but we need somebody else, somebody younger. Trading two first-round picks and tight end Eddie Curtis, superstar X-Factor that just happened to be on the team, for Denzel Harper. He's one of the best young corners in the NFL at this point, and he is the second-highest rated on our team. Might have to extend him very, very soon. What's his contract looking like? Did he just get extended? Tell me he did. Yes. Okay, so... He's extremely cheap as well. That's a really, really good contract for us. A couple of these contracts are expiring. I am looking to trade Tim Hutchins. Should have some type of value. I need a middle linebacker for him. Tim Hutchins, a future two and three, gets us Cam Walker from, was it the Jacksonville Jaguars that we just traded with? Either way, we're going to kick TJ Williams out to outside linebacker. We still need another one. But Cam Walker is a really nice get. I think we're going to have to pay him soon, which is why I'm leaving him at middle linebacker and moving TJ Williams over, who's already been extended. is just going to end up being way cheaper that way. But we still need another outside linebacker. We're running out of picks and players to move. I kind of want to extend Eddie McLean, but if Earl Cumberland can be traded away to get me 
you know, a pretty good inside linebacker, I'm going to do that. Doesn't need to be a superstar X-Factor player. Just a decent starting option, preferably superstar or X-Factor. And Jamie Rutherford from the Bears, I think is going to be the guy. 24 years old, superstar dev. And they need a corner. Should be pretty easy to get this to work. I don't know if it's going to be straight up. But Earl Cumberland and say a fourth and a fifth round draft pick should send it through. And it does. Rutherford going to move to outside linebacker. I feel like that's another really nice trade for us as he's going to play on the left side. Draft recap. Hey, we didn't get anybody really. Drafted just a couple of players and there was an 81 overall corner and he wasn't even the best corner in the draft. Why did I not look around? I would have traded up to nine probably, but also I think we did get the best. Anyway, John Castillo from Texas Tech ends up being an 83, but Brian Mason... Great man, great speed. Zone coverage should have been high. Number one player in the class, yeah. He's going to be a beast. But Tracy Ford, who went at number one, was also really good. But I'm glad we couldn't trade up for him. Because if I, if I traded all the way up and then saw a better corner, I would have been devastated. All right, team looks good. I keep saying that, and it I mean, it's still true. Not as good as it has been, obviously. And I think McLean's going to move back to free safety. That's going to be his role. And he should be cheaper to re-sign that way. And we already have decent enough depth at corner to where I feel pretty good about doing this. So the ECU product goes back to safety early in his career, where he's an 86 overall. That makes the team definitely a lot better. And we got a decent third corner, not a great fourth one, not a great defensive tackle number two. But all in all, team looks great. We just need to... You know, go out and get it done. I'm looking for another Super Bowl. We've made a couple. We've been held short a few seasons, obviously. But I have faith that this is going to be another really good year for us. And hopefully that ends up being true. Another 15-2 and two season. Bo Sheehan just continues to crush it. See how well he actually played. And the answer is very. Nearly 5,000 yards passing, about 107 shy. 40 touchdowns to three picks. Rushing Kenya offered was amazing. Nearly six per carry, over 1,500 yards, 24 touchdowns. Another great season of production from our receivers. And then defensively, not seeing the crazy high sack totals that we did a year ago, but still 16 is a ton, 12 for Reggie Moody. Interceptions, four for Cameron Walker. Welcome to the Saints. Simulating straight to the Super Bowl. I'd love to be in it, and we are. It's a Jets-Saints Super Bowl rematch. We're a 96 overall. The Jets had this unbelievable quarterback that you guys probably remember if you're watching this video that was trouble for us in that game but I think we ended up coming out on top I don't think that was a Super Bowl that we lost I think we lost to the Chiefs right but we'll see if we can take on the Jets and win yet another Super Bowl this one in Tampa Bay aka Tampa no one calls it Tampa Bay it's, it's the Tampa Bay area maybe but the city's Tampa as we crush the Jets 49-28 it's another Super Bowl MVP for Bo Sheehan who also wins league MVP and Kenya offered of course with this great season wins offensive player of the year he's somebody who's going to be certainly worthy of another contract we have 107 million as we approach the 2040s let's get everyone back that we need to bring back obviously it probably comes at the expense of letting some players go. But I feel like we're in a really good position. Another Super Bowl win. Bo Sheehan is becoming the best player of all time. Tom Brady, eat your heart out. And Kenya Offord's going to get a big-time extension. It's a lot of money for a running back, but I think he's worth it. One offensive player of the year. Clyde Banfield, going to be back for five seasons as well. It's a ton of money, but he's also really, really good. Eddie McLean at safety is more expensive than I would want. But I'm okay on a five-year deal. We'll bring him back. Tremont Patterson will uh, leave that fifth-year option because we're going to extend him. John Drayton, yeah, two years works for me. It's a lot of money. He's going to test free agency. I'm going to franchise tag and trade probably. And the rest of these players can walk. And as good as Drayton has been for us, I can't pay a 33-year-old $30 million per year. That would just be absolutely ridiculous and stupid, and I'm not doing it. We pick at 22, I want to say. It's it's an okay position to be in. I think I'd rather just trade the pick for a player. This quarterback looks pretty good. Obviously not going to draft a quarterback. It was something I've considered a little bit, being like, hey, is it 
Is it better to extend our awesome quarterback at an unreasonable amount, which is essentially what we're paying him? Or just draft a QB, play him on a rookie deal, and get an amazing team around him? And I don't know that it ends up mattering all that much, because either you pay a bunch of players and your team's really good, or you still can build a pretty good team around him with a great quarterback and still be about as successful. I don't know. It's kind of a tough decision to make either way. But uh, hopefully we can trade John Drayton for something pretty good. And I don't want to trade for a 30-year-old, I'll tell you that. The best player we can really get here is Gary Condom. And uh, Gary here is going to be a lot worse than what we have currently. But he's like the best young option that we can have. So John Drayton, I don't want to do this straight up probably if I can help it. But who else can we add to this? middle linebacker that's not too bad and i want to try and get you know players around 24 25 years old and preferably under contract for a decent amount of time this saves me in the end and i think we'll probably just try to get a first round pick or two from the giants if they want to make this trade work and we are going to be able to work something out with them drayton is such a great player take number 32 and i'll i'll happily get this done okay drayton and number 32 for a first-round pick next year and the year after that from the Giants, plus a Gary Condom. 24 years old, speed rush type. Block shedding's real bad on him. Kind of reminds me of, you know, John Drayton, who was so good for us for so long. Condon is going to go over to play right end. Moody is still a beast. And I think Condon can end up working up to Superstar X Factor. And we'll see what we do here in the draft. I, I could take this pick. I could trade for somebody. Again, somebody preferably under contract. So what do I need? Quarterback's fine, running back's fine, receiver's fine. I like the offensive line. I think tight end's good, but we could use some more depth maybe. It's a defensive tackle probably is my biggest need right now. I like where linebacker is. Corner's pretty much fine. Safety's good. It's really just a defensive tackle. And I don't think they're that valuable in the game. So we should be able to get, as Trevor Griffith, by the way, is up to a 96 overall or playing up to it. The highest overall in the league. Not really much of a pass rusher. They really haven't upgraded that aspect of his game. But Devontae Cousins should be the guy. Superstar X-Factor, 25 years old. Also not really a pass rusher. Can I get a pass rusher in here? Is that possible? Let's get Enrique Cousins from Carolina. Been a while since we had that interdivision trade. His block shedding is not so great, but he can actually get after the QB. I will give you a first round pick and that should be good enough. Number 22, if you want to give me something else, I'm willing to negotiate. How about your superstar dev punter? What? I don't have a kicker or punter, so that actually works pretty well for me. And that's going to go straight through. I think that's an excellent trade. Now we could use a really good kicker. Superstar dev from the Falcons. Yeah, let's take their superstar dev kicker. He's 28 years old. Should be good for a season or two at least. I'll give you a fifth round pick for him. I don't think they're going to want to do this. But a fifth and a sixth, and suddenly a kicker's not very valuable anymore. Thank you. Ooh, who's this? Mike Bradley, A deep, route running, A catching down the board. 6'4", 250, very good athlete. Did we just find a gem? I think we may have. Hidden dev, 85 speed, 87 acceleration, great agility. Tight end, not exactly at the top of our list of needs, but seems to be a great player. And for the last pick of the second round, I'm in. Let's see the damage or how well we did. And 73 overall. Oh, that's James Phillips at the corner. 73 overall, not bad. 74 overall on Mike Bradley, the tight end. And there was an 80 overall player in this class. Devon Ali, receiver from Clemson, headed to the Chiefs. Alabama receiver, not named Jamison Williams, headed to the Lions. This was a decent class. Not amazing, but a couple of guys at the top make it look a lot better. I don't think it's the best that it's been, but man, I feel really good about this current team. It's a nice combination of youth plus talent, where it's not like extremely overpowered, but there are a bunch of really nice players that make me feel confident about our chances in this 2040 season. Should end up being really, really good. And 
I think we lack that true like X factor receiver, but I don't think it's going to matter when we have such an amazing tight end and a bunch of really solid receivers, even though they're not like amazing, amazing. They're still near the nineties or even into the nineties in some cases. So I feel good about it. We have an amazing quarterback to lift those guys up and this should be a great season. 16 and one. It's another week 18 loss. Why can't we have the perfect season? Over 5,000 yards passing for Bo Sheehan, 45 touchdowns to three picks. Kenya Offord was still very good and receiving another season where four receivers were over 1,000 yards, including three with double-digit touchdowns. Kerry Vaughn, 13, 10 for Banfield and Leach. Donatello, Leach. And then defensively, Cameron Walker has 100 tackles, five for loss, 16 TFLs for Reggie Moody and Trevor Griffith. And look at this, 17 sacks for the condom. He is not letting any quarterback escape or anything else escape. 12 and a half sacks for TJ Williams at right outside linebacker. 11 for Moody, 10 for Trevor Griffith. Interceptions, not really that many, but it didn't matter. Our defense was dominant. Our offense was great. And it just wasn't great enough against the Panthers in week 18, unfortunately. We have a 98 overall team. This actually might be the highest overall team we've had somehow. 99 offense, 97 defense, 98 overall, and look who it is in the wild card, or the divisional. It's the Panthers, and we avenge our loss. Same thing that happened last time, and it's the Cowboys again in the NFC Championship, as they always are, and as we've been lately, we eliminate them to get another Jets-Saints Super Bowl. This time I'll jump in. It's been a while since we've seen the Super Bowl celebration. They've got a very good team, 89 overall but we are nearly 10 overall points higher than that at 98. Nine overall points higher. Jets up early, 7-3, but we retake the lead after a 3-0 start. Jets make it 14-10, and we've actually stalled out a bit, but as I say that, we score. It's 17-17, 20-17 now as we approach the fourth quarter. Jets take the lead with a field goal. We tie it right back up. It's 23-20. The Jets are driving, and it's an interception by Denzel Harper for 53 yards. Huge interception. We're driving down the field as Donatello Leach catches the ball for 18 yards. And we're going to jump in and watch the offense here for a minute. We force two turnovers, and that's going to be the difference in this game. We've won the turnover battle, but we haven't really managed to pull away from the Jets. And that's going to be a touchdown. We couldn't pull away from the Jets. Don't worry about pulling out with Condom on the team. And Donatello Leach saves the day. The Ninja Turtle into the end zone for the score. Bo Sheehan looking to win another Super Bowl. This guy is the definition of clutch. We go ahead by 10 here late in the game. And the Jets, it's just going to be too little too late. As the scoreboard is fighting off the screen, what is happening? <laughs> 27 yards. It looks like it's through the end zone because the screen is going ballistic. And that does end up being a touchdown. They actually scored really quickly. But it shouldn't matter. Third and two. We had a pass knocked away. No, we're on defense. How did they get the football back? Oh my goodness. Third and two. We're in man coverage. Oh no. Get me off the tight end here. We have Dubois on the field. Quick throw over the middle. It is caught. The Jets have no timeouts. They're fighting to get in a field goal range. 22 seconds. I feel like my best starters are not on the field. Why is Dubois on the field? Did I trade for him? Under pressure! And it's going to be roughing the passer. What am I doing? I think I've just single-handedly put them in a field goal range. I just wanted to sack the QB. Reggie Moody letting his emotions get the best of him there. Playing a little bit moody. And the Jets are going to try a field goal, but they're going to do it while iced. Here we go. Iced field goal to potentially send this to overtime. Here we go. Kick up. And sneaking in, Jets tie it. It's a brutal penalty to put the Jets into field goal range. And uh, that, oh, that is tough. A lot of, I don't even know how they got the football back, by the way, so quickly. That's brutal. We have 10 seconds and a timeout. If Osgood can put us into a good spot here with a big return, and we can't, we might have had something. Five seconds is just not going to be enough to get in field goal range. I mean, we can try, I guess but it's just not going to be enough. Maybe a quick throw and then get down where we should have held onto it for longer as Vaughn can't even catch it anyway. Game heads to overtime. 
The Jets have won the toss. That's never good. If they score a touchdown, we do have a chance to answer. But if we hold them to less than a touchdown, um, we can win the game with any type of score. Well, if they kick a field goal, obviously we can't win with a field goal. That doesn't make any sense. And the Jets were driving. It's third and ten now. We're going to jump in. Bring out the dime defense. I think we're going to pass commit because that's certainly what this is. This is the edge of field goal range. I wonder if they would consider going for it here if they don't get it. I don't know if you can punt the football back. In real life, they probably uh, consider going for it. But here, I think they are going to end up punting. If you feel good about your defense, obviously you would punt. It's fourth and ten. If you can pin us, and especially if you feel good about your punting game, you pin us on our own ten or something. You know, you don't think we can go 90 yards, but we're not going to have to. The ball on the 19. All right, let's get in the field goal range. That's all we need is a field goal. Starting with a screen, we actually do manage to get it out, and we have blocks. Get out in front of him. Juke back inside. Kenya Offert still on his feet. It's a nice gain to the 36. Working off play action. We fit that in there. Go up and get it. Not nearly intercepted, but it could have been dicey. Third and 12 now. We just took a very, very, very unfortunate sack. And we need to not do that again. And that's going to be a good way to do it. It's Zimmerman. That's going to be the first down and probably into field goal range as well. No one hurry up here. Probably not the best idea. We're not just going to kick the field goal though. And the tight end's open underneath. It's Vaughn. He makes a nice catch. The running back's open. Get it deep down the field. Offered. Overshot him. We've had success hitting the running back. Just couldn't do it there. I want to solidify field goal range. That might not even be an issue as we hit Vaughn on the run. He's down the field stiff arming. Clock not an issue. We're not really working it out of bounds. Just get as many yards as you can. And I want a touchdown to win it. I know we could very easily kick the field goal. Provided I can actually make a kick while iced. Which they almost certainly would. Why are we airing it out here? That's why, because we have Kerry Vaughn, the 99 overall tight end, wins us a Super Bowl. Bo and ice in his veins, took a shot down the field, and it pays off. Another Super Bowl for Bo Sheehan and the Saints. I mean, this is the team of dreams. This is, it's got to be close with the most amount of Super Bowls I've won in a 20-year rebuild. We're just not stopping. Bo Sheehan's won, what, five or six up to this point? Got to be close. So 2040 season recap, we are now nine times Super Bowl champions. Bo Sheehan wins MVP and Offensive Player of the Year, as well as, of course, Super Bowl MVP. And I guess I didn't realize exactly how many Super Bowls we had won up to this point. I didn't realize that not only have we established a dynasty, we have established the biggest and best dynasty in NFL history. Dennis Allen, I didn't do a creative coach this time, and I usually don't anymore. And the reason is because they no longer show the full name. They just do first initial and then the last name. And as a lot of you guys know, I've usually tried to work in jokes, puns, things like that. Very tough to do with first initial short last name. So I just don't even bother anymore. I know that's lame, but it's not my call. But Dennis Allen's number one. You got a quarterback. Oh, it's Bo Sheehan, a halfback. Well, Dakota Stevenson's a Hall of Famer. Rudy Jackson, who we had, is currently very good. And he... Uh, was on the team for quite some time, actually. And so was Braden Harrison. Kenya Offord is currently on the team. When you go to receiver, the number one player all time is Malik Blackshear, who ended up on the Jets. C.D. Lamb, Brandon Ayuk are Hall of Famers. Taylor Hanna, I remember. Rasheed Rice, Jamar Chase, Garrett Wilson, Tyree Kill, Amon Ross St. Brown, all Hall of Famers. Do we have anybody that was actually in our team? Max Rich. Borden we looked at. I don't think we ended up trading for him. Tight end is McNair, not Kyle Pitts, who's in the Hall of Fame, of course. Kerry Vaughn's number three, ahead of Travis Kelsey and Hall of Famers, Kelsey, Andrews, and Quinones. But as you guys can tell, we've pretty much built the most prestigious team of all time. Even this not-so-great whatever left tackle has four yearly awards and is a six-time Super Bowl champion. We have created the biggest dynasty in NFL history, and it's not even close. Say what you will about the Patriots and the Tom Brady era. They don't have eight Super Bowls, and we have nine total as a franchise now. One from Drew Brees and eight from Bo Sheehan. So we have reached the mountaintop. I don't really know if I can do better than this in a 20-year rebuild. We've won eight Super Bowls already. We have a few more seasons to go, but 
I mean, can we realistically reach double digit Super Bowls, not only as a franchise, but in the actual rebuild video? I suppose it's possible, but it's going to take keeping the team together. And I'm not actually sure that's going to be that difficult. We have 68 million, maybe famous last words, but the only players we really need to bring back, I guess there are four actually. Yeah, we'll see if we can do it. It shouldn't be too tough. Lowry is like a question mark, but hopefully he's cheap enough. Mark Murray is good, but old. Max Rich is good, but old. And then these three are definite bringbacks, but Jamie Rutherford at outside linebacker doesn't really want to be here. And I don't really care, except for the fact that we're going to have to pay him like an edge rusher, and he is not an edge rusher, which, as I continue to complain about, is extremely frustrating. Uh, Cameron Walker... We're going to bring back for six years. It's expensive. It's actually going to be a little bit more difficult than I thought to keep this team together as we bring back the big tackle. Max Rich, I just, I, I cannot pay that amount of money to it. It's 20 million per year. I can't do that. I don't even think I can bring back Jamie Rutherford, to be honest. He's just way too expensive. It's going to be Lowry, who's cheap. He's going to be on the team for the duration. And... Mark Murray, I guess for a few seasons, I'm not paying 18 mil. Can't do it. Cannot do it. So we're going to choose one player in here. Probably going to be Jamie Rutherford. I'd say five years. Upping the money is just insane, but that's what I just did. <laughs> and I guess we can franchise tag and trade Max Rich. I guess we can do that. One year, 26.8 million. We at least keep him around. We could potentially trade him if we clear up the cap space. I'm not super worried about that. We've been living dangerously with this cap room the entire rebuild of more than 15 years right now. We're down to a 96 overall. What is the one thing I really need to focus on with this team right now? The offensive line is good. We don't even necessarily need Mark Murray. So that's not really a problem letting him go. The receiving core is good overall. Tight end is phenomenal as well if we want to bulk that in. And then defensively, we are also still amazing. Yeah, you know, we don't really need to do anything. Picking number 16 overall, we don't even have a draft screen. Okay. Is there anyone we absolutely need to go up and trade up for? Just probably not, although Desmond Burnett from TCU. How fast are you? Pretty damn. Pretty damn is the answer. Jamal Anderson, the Dirty Bird. Okay, we should probably try and trade up for Desmond Burnett. We are trading Dorian Bodden, number 32, a second next year, a fourth this year, and a fifth two years from now for number four overall. Now, the reason I'm doing that is because this DB, that's what we're going to call him, this corner could potentially play safety. We could potentially move some other guys around. All I know is Desmond Burnett looks way too good to not draft. A man, A zone, great speed. It's a recipe for success. B tackle, play rex a bit low, I don't care. Hidden dev, 93 speed, 91 acceleration. Probably one of the better players in the entire draft. What an interesting safety prospect. We could use more depth. Do I take a safety who skipped the combine but did his pro day? Do I draft him at number 16? Maybe. I don't necessarily need a receiver. But John Albert looks okay as a big physical type guy, but we don't really need him, as I mentioned. You know, I'm going to draft Monty Copeland. He looks interesting. A power moves, B block should be pursued, A tackle. A lot of Bs, a lot of As. 6'3", 273, maybe like a hybrid rush defensive tackle. There's something here. He's got really high strength, speed, and acceleration. I think Monty Copeland looks pretty good. We're going to draft a linebacker here. Mike Perkins looks interesting again. He's like as the kids would say, mid. To me, that means like average, but I think most people use it as like sucks. I don't know that he sucks. I just think he's like fine. Mike Perkins, normal dev. I mean, that fits, that fits to a T. No surprise there. 23 years old, average at everything. Yeah, it makes sense. Desmond Burnett ends up being a 79 overall. Copeland's a 74. Perkins isn't great. CPU actually did better down the board, in fact. But I think we probably got one of the better players in the entire draft, and we got the best player in the draft. The only 79, there was 178, 177, and then a handful of 76s, and then mostly 75s, it would appear. 
Not a very good draft class. What does Brunette looks like or look like? 6'2", 200. That's safety size. Tackling is good enough. Yeah, he's a safety. We're moving him back. So that's a pretty good starter at strong safety. A 79 overall already. Same as he was at corner, but it's nice. D-line, very good. Linebackers, very good. Secondary, amazing. And then on offense, I feel pretty good about where we are as well. Playmakers are incredible. Quarterback, running back, can't really do a whole lot better than that. And we'll see how 2041 goes. My guess is going to be pretty good. I'm going to only simulate the midseason mark here in case I need to make any trades. But I'm looking for another Super Bowl. 5-2 and midseason mark. Who is going to be a free agent? 16 players. We have only 26 million. Ooh. There are not that many. I thought it was going to be worse. But we only have 26 million. So don't really have a lot of wiggle room here. Elijah Black, I'd like to bring back. It's our starting left tackle for... I can't pay you... Why is he so expensive? Like 30 mil per year? Can't do that. Cannot, cannot, cannot. Joe Roberts is good. He's probably going to want 10 mil per year. Okay, he wants next to nothing. Makes no sense. I'll even pay you more. Joe Roberts is back. That's big. Gary Condon's going to want too much money. That's tough. Damian Madison is going to want too much money. Do I really want to pay him 20 mil per year? Yeah, all right. Three years for Damian Madison. He's a 99 overall corner. But Max Rich needs to be traded. And we need a tackle. What does Sean Brooks want? That's really not too bad, actually. If I can take this down a bit so we actually can afford this. We got Sean Brooks back, and we underpaid. We got to trade Max Rich. And if there's a way I can clear up a little bit more space, I'm going to do that. Trading Elijah Black, a first this year, but not... No, it is mine, but not the good one, or not supposed to be. And two future third-round picks for Mac Wheeler and two firsts. One next year, one the year after that. Mac Wheeler is a right guard. Hold on here. And he is potentially going to slide over to play tackle. Now, he's only a 79 overall, but he is 6'6", 335. Pass blocking could be better, and so could run blocking. But he is a mauler, and he's going to go learn to play tackle. Not a great pass protector at this point, but has superstar dev. I think he's going to learn pretty quick. We are trading Max Rich to the Giants for a couple of decent players. The first one is an 84 overall receiver. He is only 23 years old, named Antoine Dillon. Superstar dev. He's really just a deep threat, big time speed, big time deep route running. Catching is okay, not amazing. And his overall route running is not amazing, but offers a deep threat into our offense. And then the other is a safety, Juan Ward. He's the new highest rated strong safety on our team. Four years of experience in the league so far. Big, cut, uh, big time cover guy. And he is under contract for the next four years pretty cheaply. What does that mean for Desmond Burnett, who only has star dev, okay? It means he plays slot corner. He is a backup safety, which those guys get on the field quite a bit. And he's just a good depth pickup. Now, did I trade up to get him? Yeah. But we were obviously hoping for a little bit more. And now that we didn't get it, we're able to trade a really good player to get what could be two really good players and starters right away. Third receiver and starting strong safety. It's another amazing season for us in 2041. The number one offense, number three defense. And our quarterback did not lead the league in passing yards. Worked touchdowns, but is second in both. Only threw six interceptions. He's been a pro for 16 seasons. 37 years old. He's down to a 91 overall. He is regressing, but still playing at an extremely high level. And the arm has regressed considerably. But it's still pretty accurate, still runs pretty well, and we've leaned on the running game. Kenya offered with another great season and receiving four receivers over 1,000 yards again. Kerry Vaughn puts up 14 touchdowns. He's probably the best tight end of all time at this point. 32 years old. Still looks pretty good. Big time trade acquisition for us. Has obviously been in New Orleans most of his career. We traded for him from the Steelers. That's right. I think I said the Titans not too long ago, and... Really didn't do a whole lot in Pittsburgh, but 
obviously broke out in a major way with the Saints. And since we've acquired him, he has only put up a thousand yard receiving seasons or more. And most of the time has gone into the double digits for touchdowns and mostly considerably over that 14, 13, 16, 12. Wow. Defensively, Cameron Walker. This team almost seems unrecognizable. We've made so many trades, but Reggie Moody puts up 15 and a half sacks, 11 and a half for Trevor Griffith, 11 for the condom, nine for TJ Williams. Now Griffith is a uh, kind of a fun one because he was just a random superstar X Factor player. Got really, really lucky with him. And he's been good. Not really much of a pass rusher, but put up decent sack numbers. Uh, well, let, let me not even downplay what nine sacks is. That's a really, really good season. Um, and he put up 11 and a half, even more than that. He's not really a pass rusher, but is putting up like good pass rushing numbers, which is crazy. Back-to-back -back double digit sack seasons. And he's got to the quarterback at a pretty good rate over his career. Didn't play much as a rookie because we didn't know he was a superstar X-Factor player. Didn't notice until the end of the season. And then has been a starter pretty much ever since and has had some very, very nice seasons. Cam Walker also led the team in picks with four. Madison had three. Eddie McLean had three. 49ers in the divisional. We're at 97 overall. I'm looking for another Super Bowl. I don't really want to trade Bo Sheehan. I am kind of thinking about it now that he's regressing. But if we can, you know ride the Boshi and bus to the finish line. That's what we're going to try to do. It's the Giants in the NFC Championship. They're an 86 overall. They have Max Rich. We did a big time trade and it worked out for the Giants. Max Rich is going to play in a Super Bowl and we are not. Giants Chargers, the Eli Manning Bowl. Of course, the Chargers drafted Eli Manning, never ended up playing for them. And the Chargers actually seem to have got the win over the Giants. And is that the Chargers' first Super Bowl? It is. Benjamin Colbert of the Jets wins MVP. Offensive Player of the Year goes to our running back, Kenya Offord, though. But a little bit disappointing of a season. We crushed it in the regular season. I thought we were going to cruise to another Super Bowl. And the Giants knocked us off. And then didn't even beat the Chargers, man. What's another Giants Charger? Linval Joseph. Giant and a Charger. I know there have to be more. But uh, it's late, and I can't think of any right now. I'm sure there are more. I'm hoping one is just going to pop into my head, but I I don't can't think of anyone. I'm sure there's somebody obvious that's like currently on the team, too. I just can't think of one. I mean, there are a couple of players on here who I remember that I wouldn't remember with certain teams, like Jeremy Davis. I remember at a UConn because he spelled Jeremy with a G. Played for the Chargers for a few seasons. I don't remember that. DJ Fluker. Of course, I remember him with the Chargers. Just kind of forgot he was a giant for a minute. Like, there, there are a few. John Carney, but it's tough to remember him. Austin Johnson, the defensive tackle, is just kind of a forgettable player. Um, out of active players, Geno Smith, of course. Just kind of forget he was a Charger. Tyrod Taylor as well. Even though the whole reason Justin Herbert got to start in the first place is because Tyrod got, like, impaled in the lungs by the team doctor. Like, I remember that, but it's tough to you know, remember just a player thinking of the two teams. You know what I mean? Nick Vanette kind of forgot he was a giant or a charger, honestly. Remember him at Ohio State, but I don't remember much else about Nick Vanette. Antoine Dillon's a free agent. No, he's a fifth year option. So we're going to pick that up. Maybe shouldn't have, but at least guarantees he's going to be on the team next year. And Gary Condon, I just will not be able to re-sign to... An extension. It's going to have to be the franchise tag if we're going to keep him around. It's going to be really, really expensive. I actually think he's going to be worth it, though. 26 years old, and he's going to be, what, 30 million? Only 23.7. That's not so bad. Now, of course, we go back into the negative for cap room, but do we get a little bit of a reprieve with our quarterback situation? I feel like if he hasn't retired already, which he may have, I feel like that contract's going to start to go down at this point in his career. He's still playing, but he's down to an 88 overall. This is the final year of his deal. $25 million in 2042. And we are actually probably going to have to figure out another quarterback situation. Because he's 38, going to be 39. 88's quickly going to turn to 84 or 85, maybe even 83. We will need a replacement. So if there's a great looking one in the draft, we'll move up. 
And this would probably be the year to do that. Get him learning behind Bo Sheehan, the greatest quarterback ever. Not really a great looking quarterback class. So if we were going to take a QB this year, we might be SOL. Shit, out of luck. Picking at number 31 overall in this 2042 draft. Chris Copeland is a top five talent. So maybe, oh, he has elite throw power and decent movement skills and his accuracy is not bad and throw under pressure is good. Okay, Chris Copeland might be the pick. Now I have no idea when he's actually going to go in the draft is the problem. I guess I can try to move up with the Cowboys. That could be pretty difficult. We do have multiple first rounders, but I don't at this point know who's going to take a quarterback. Like, I don't know that the Cowboys would. How can you be both QB of the future and bridge quarterback? It's bizarre. All right, we're going to try to trade for number three. I just, that's like counterintuitive. How can you be like the guy of the future, but also, ah, the guy in between? That's what a bridge quarterback means. It's going to be three first rounders. I'm comfortable doing that. Hopefully this actually goes through. And it does. Three first round picks to move up, essentially from 31 to three. We don't pick again for a while, but this is securing our future in the case that we had a surprise retirement or don't re-sign our quarterback, which seems likely to this point. Chris Copeland out of San Diego State, welcome to the team. Kind of looks like a Bo Sheehan clone. 97 throw power, decent enough speed and acceleration. Absolute cannon. And not our new starting quarterback this year, but maybe next year, which I think is going to be the final season. And Chris Copeland is an 80. Not only is he a quarterback worth drafting, he is one of the better quarterbacks I've probably ever drafted. 80 is an extremely high overall for a QB in this game. And I don't know how it's so high. He doesn't seem like all that different from like a 76 that I may have drafted other than, you know, 97 arm strength. He's very good, but not like unbelievable despite the extremely high overall. Really good receiver as well, Dylan Samuel. I don't know why that name and LSU seems familiar. And playmaker archetype at wide receiver. They're auto-generated players. It's not like a used draft class before. But there's something that seems familiar about that. I'm not sure. Maybe if you guys watch the rebuilds religiously, you might know what I'm talking about. I can't point to anyone specifically, but it just feels like... It feels familiar. It's not quite deja vu, but it's it's close. Because, like, deja vu is like, I feel like I've been here before, and I oh I, I definitely, it, it all seems so familiar. This is more of like, I think so, or there's something about it that seems vaguely familiar, but I really can't place it. But, team's great. That quarterback's not going to start right away. Probably has a good dev trait, but it could be star. We've seen that quite a few times before. Uh, he's not going to start this season, though. I just can't really do that when you look at the team some familiar faces copeland in behind burnham who had superstar dev as a kicker i believe so don't worry about that three good receivers offense is great brooks looks bad because normal dev but he's an 84 so it's really not too bad and then defensively same guys you're used to amazing secondary mclean's actually been upgraded to superstar linebackers are still great and I'd love to win another Super Bowl. This has got to be the year. And we have finally done it. 17 and 0 with a 97 overall team. Finally. I know you don't just go undefeated, but we finally have. I'm saying finally like it's some achievable thing, but we've done it before and finally have done it again. 4,737 yards passing, 46 touchdowns to four interceptions for Bo Sheehan, who still has it. And Kenya Offord averages over six per carry, 22 touchdowns, almost 1,700 yards, averaging 100 yards per game. Only two 1,000-yard receivers, which is interesting. We really just leaned on the running game, I guess. But where did these yards go? Because we threw for nearly 5,000 and just this doesn't look like 5,000. I guess it is, right? Because this is, these two is like a little over 2,000, 3,000. This is 3,800. And I guess this takes us to 47, but it just doesn't seem like it with only two 1,000 yard receivers and barely over, right? Defensively, Cam Walker had 118 tackles, seven for loss. Although Trevor Griffith, 19 TFLs and look at the pass rush. Moody had 18 sacks, 11 and a half for condom, 
11 for Griffith, 9.5 for TJ Williams, and 3 picks for Walker. 2 for Lowry, our third corner, and 2 for Desmond Burnett, who is the corner we drafted to play safety. I'm telling you, I knew he was going to get on the field quite a bit, and that's clearly coming true. And he's playing really well. Number one offense, number four defense. We allowed quite a few passing yards per game, but you could not run on us. And we're going to see if we can complete the perfect season. I went 20-0 in the 20-year uh, Bucks rebuild. It happened. I know that because of a comment I got like today. And I go, oh yeah, that happened. Can we do the same here in the Saints rebuild? It's 2042. We went 44-14. Saints Cardinals now this is definitely an old school I say old school like late 2000s maybe even early 2010s but I think late 2000s matchup Larry Fitzgerald Kurt Warner against Drew Brees and I mean Marquise Colston I guess can we advance to the Super Bowl we are currently 18 and 0 on the season make it 19 and 0 and it's Ravens Saints early Joe Flacco against Drew Brees I guess <laughs> Who is a Raven and a Saint? Mark Ingram? Probably more. Oh, what is the name? Kamale Correa? Yes, I think he was a Raven and a Saint. Do you guys remember him? Willie Sneed is another one. Man, they're just a flying to me now. I think Kamale Correa is. I don't know why he just popped in my head, but I'm pretty sure he was a Raven and a Saint. Kamale Correa, Raven, never a Saint. Damn. Not trying to bulk uh, all Polynesian people together, but they're definitely what... Holy Kaha is... I guess I'm bulking those into the same people. You know, I feel like when doing Immaculate Grid, it's tough to remember these guys, but they're just flying out of my brain right now. He was Saints and then Dallas Renegades in 2020. Second round pick, top 50 pick, number 44 overall in 2015 at a UW. Holy Kaha, yeah. I don't know how I remembered him. He hasn't played in the NFL since 2017. How does that name just pop in my head? Only played for one team, so he wouldn't even be useful on Immaculate Grid. And that video will be coming. I know I've said that before. It's just, it's going to take forever to record that. I've been focusing on this video, but I'm going to try to do every Immaculate Grid now that you can play the flashback all in one video. Uh, it's going to be a disaster because... At some point, it's just going to be reusing players, I'm sure, and maybe early on. And then also, the pressure of doing that while recording a video is tough. You just try to be talking the entire time, and you forget certain things and players. You can't think of names. It's it's something else. So, And I know I do the baseball grid. I haven't done it in actually a little while, but I have more uh, recently than football. It is 35 to 10, and that is your final another Super Bowl for Bo Sheehan and the Saints that's number 10 as a franchise number nine in this video Bo Sheehan obviously the most accomplished quarterback of all time he is a 95 percent completion percentage in the Super Bowl what are you doing can you play a more perfect game only gives him 139.3 as opposed to the perfect 158.3 how do you play better than this higher yards per attempt hey 21 for 22 for 224 yards and two touchdowns is a very good game. That should be perfect. Kenya Offord was amazing, of course. Receiving, Kerry Vaughn is that guy. He was really the only guy who needed to be. Three sacks for Jamie Rutherford, two for Gary Condon. Yeah, we were just amazing. Quan Ward with a pick. We traded for him. I'll do one more season. We've made it this far. I think technically 2023 to 2042 is 20 seasons but i'll do one more and i think it makes 21 but i'll do one more and also i don't know if i emphasize this enough that's the perfect season completed that's 20 and 0 18 19 20 yeah 20 and 0 perfect season i'd love to go back to back that'd be sweet that'd be awesome no saints retired either bo sheehan hates his family ultimate tom brady move i love it and <laughs> never retires Bo Sheehan, man, I mean, he's, he's, he's just doing the Tom Brady lifestyle. Play till you're 40, win every Super Bowl imaginable. I know Tom Brady lost some Super Bowls, right? But that's not really the point. He won more than anybody else ever. And uh, we'll see if we can keep his team together for him. TJ Williams is back. Welcome back. Only 6 million. 
oh, we can't bring back everyone we need to. Bo Sheehan does not want to return. You know what, Bo? I'm moving on. We don't need you. Only the most accomplished player in league history. That's okay. I can't get everybody. I can't even get most of them. <laughs> can't really even get some of them. We can get two, maybe. I guess that is technically some. But it, it's not many. And we got to take this down so we can actually offer it. And then franchise tag Reggie, uh, Reggie Moody. I think the pass rush is going to be more important than anything else. We'll let Condon go to keep the X-Factor Reggie Moody. And I'd be very surprised if we go back to back. I'll tell you that much. I'd be very, 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 very surprised. We have to fill every hole that we have in the draft. And that's just going to be really tough to do. Now we have 30 million available salary cap. I could have used that. And I don't even have a first round pick because I traded it all to get the quarterback. Okay. That's fun. Well, he has superstar dev. He's got two good receivers. The tight end isn't amazing. And then defensively, Copeland star dev. The corners are still really good. I mean, we could use a better edge. Copeland could, I guess, go play defensive tackle. He'd be undersized. But I think he's strong enough to make it work. You wouldn't see a 273-pound defensive tackle in real life. More than likely at the NFL level. College football, sure. But you, you likely wouldn't see that at the NFL level. I could trade one of these corners. That could be the move. If we have the money... I mean, I'll look in the draft. We just don't have any top picks. So I don't think it makes very much sense at all. I mean, Johnny Patton from Clemson, only 6'1", 257. Elite speed. I think he's going to be really good. It just, we have no way of moving up to number one. So we are going to try and steal the Declaration of Independence. No, uh, this is not National Treasure. We're going to try to get some good pass rusher and... We should have the cap room. It showed us having like 30 million. Would have been nice when I was actually re-signing players to have that. Multiple first round picks next year. Who's the best pass rusher I can get? We have the three highest overall players in the NFL. Four, I guess. Five. We have five 99 overall players. I definitely lost some talent. Could go out and get a tight end. That'd be good. But I think pass rusher is going to be a little bit more important. You know, somebody to dominate off the edge. And Cliff Langford, maybe? X-Factor 25-year-old who cannot rush the passer. Selfless pass rush is his superstar X-Factor ability. He's got 56, like, power and finesse moves. All right, what about, what about defensive end? Luke Madison, maybe? I could see that. <sighs> Gary Condon, dude, I wish a shame. Right, we are trading our fourth corner. Could move our safety back to third or fourth corner, but we're not going to do that. Could use more depth at the position now, but we are trading two first round picks this year, or in 2044, excuse me. Which, no, that's that's not this year. Um, as well as a third round pick this year for one of the best edge rushers in the league, Tarkeen Odom. Okay, block shed. Finesse moves is terrible, but strength, power boost, tackles, or tackle awareness, all amazing. So, He's going to be a really nice player for us. Not exactly a scheme fit. More of a power rusher. But I still think we might be able to make it work when we switch Reggie Moody over to right end and Tarkeen Odom over to left end. And this actually might be the first time in this video where I have a combo of a power rusher and a speed rusher on the same defensive line. And that actually might end up being an awesome pairing. Yeah, I'd love to go out and trade for Kerry Vaughn, but I just don't know if that's going to be possible because he just signed a contract to go play for our division rival Panthers. Why are you doing that, Kerry? Let's, uh, you know what? You want to go play for a division rival because we couldn't afford to bring you back? Well, I'm going to go trade for somebody else. What about Dennis Backus? Deep route running's terrible, but probably the best move. Oh, hold on. Kirk Miller from... Texas, Superstar X-Factor. He looks way better to me. I don't know how they're the same overall. or This one might even be worse. Uh, can I give you two second round picks? Not even close. And a first is not even going to be close. How can I get you? Yeah, I can't get Kirk Miller. He's just way too good. 
but I do want an upgrade at tight end if possible. Trading a couple of second round picks, a third and a first for an upgrade at tight end, albeit not a major one. It's John Sims, superstar dev player, 27 years old. He is an upgrade at the position. Tight end is such a big part of this offense. I'm trying to prioritize it, but this is the final year. We're going all out. I'm gonna try to win it all. Didn't do a whole lot in the draft, which shouldn't really surprise anybody. It was an okay draft. I mean, nothing crazy. Final year. This is as bad as the team has been, pretty much because we don't have a superstar X-Factor greatest quarterback of all time. I still feel really good about the defense, and hopefully they carry us enough. I'm going to put a really good receiver in the slot, get them more targets. Banfield, by the way, is casually up to a 99 overall at 28 years old. Deep route running never really came on for him, but everything else is phenomenal. And I am curious to see how long the win or the lossless streak can go on, the undefeated streak. How many games can we win consecutively? Well, we're at at least 20 right now. I can't remember if we won the Super Bowl the year prior. That's 21. 22. We're going to simulate to the playoffs, see if we can make it 23 and more. 23 and me, That not, not sponsored. Listen, I got asked about that tonight, actually. If I would ever use 23andMe to find out about my ancestry or whatever. What am I going to spit in a thing and give somebody my DNA for free? I'm, they're already hacking into my phone because I allow it, you know, agreeing to these long contracts I don't read with Apple or whatever. They get all my information. These apps, oh, you want to use the app? How about tell us uh, and give us access to everything about you? What, am I going to send my DNA to a company to re just build me in a lab? And have clones running around. I don't want that. Oh, also, I can find out I'm 99% white. Yeah, I knew that. 99% white European, 1% unsure. That's what it is. It'll be a misread. That could be anything else. But I'm going to find out I'm 1% African. And it's, oh, the Dutch colony uh, that came over. I don't know. Whatever. Uh, anyway, we... <laughs> End up going 13-4. and four. The win streak only continued four weeks into the regular season. So that's 24 total in a row before losing two in a row. And uh, still having a great season overall. Chris Copeland had a great first season. I wanted to say rookie, but he's not a rookie. He's just young, starting for the first time at 23 years old. Superstar Dev just crushed it overall. Running game stepped back a little bit. Receiving game, John Sims at 999 yards, six touchdowns. We just didn't have that awesome, awesome tight end. We had a couple of players who played really well. Reggie Moody, 14 sacks, 12 for the new Tarkeen Odom, uh, 10 for Trevor Griffith, who had a great Hall of Fame career, really. And then not a whole lot of interceptions, but this is our final run here. Can we win another Super Bowl? We had a first round bye at 13 and four. Can we make it back? I'd love to see it. I'd love to see it. We have made another Super Bowl. No Bo Sheehan, no problem. I think that's the last thing we'll check before we hop in here. Where did Bo Sheehan go? Who's he playing for nowadays? Bo Sheehan went to the Giants and had a very solid season there. He's an 86 overall, 39 years old. Still very good, right? But our quarterback is a higher overall than he is now and really played better, and is up to Superstar X Factor, just because. Oh, because it's Super Bowl week, that's right. That's why he's up to Superstar X Factor now. Well, I'll give you one final look at the team. We're trying to win yet another Super Bowl. This would be 10 in the video. 10 in 20 or 21 years is absolutely incredible. And this is the final team. Sims up to Superstar X Factor. Banfield up to Superstar X-Factor, Copeland of course as well, as I talked about. And then defensively, I think most of this has stayed the same. I don't really notice anything that's changed, but we are back in the Super Bowl. We are aiming for our 10th Super Bowl in 21 years, I believe. Just nuts. Well, we'll see if we can pull it off against the Steelers. And winning this Super Bowl in Atlanta, home of the Falcons, the big time rival, what a way to end it it would be. Stole Kyle Pitts from Atlanta. Stole Bryant Burns from Carolina. Don't think we really did much with the Bucks. 
but the Steelers are trying to take us out. We go ahead. It's 17-13, 24-13. I think we might be able to pull away here. Steelers not going down without a fight, though. It's 24-19, and they are trying to mount the comeback here in the fourth quarter. Defense needs to come out, needs to make a couple of plays. Quick throw to the flat. That is a nice play by Ward. Forces the incompletion. Honestly, could have been six there. Could have been six. I don't think we can commit to the pass here, but it very well could be a pass, and it's actually going to be play action. Throw over the middle, finding a receiver, and look at the speed to get to the corner and find the end zone. Willie Abbott. Oh my goodness, he was fast. Sealers going for two. Try to make it a field goal game. We will pass commit on this. I'd be surprised if they ran, but they're actually making calls at the line. This could be an audible to a run. It's not going to be. And the two-point conversion is good. We were close, but not close enough as Heinz Ward finds the end zone. I think he wore number 86. And uh, we'll have a chance. Touchdown wins the game. Four-minute offense. Let's see if we can end it. Not really going to play for a field goal here. We want to win another Super Bowl. Copeland doesn't have his X-Factor. Just the Superstar logo, unfortunately. And there goes Kenya Offord. That's an X-Factor. Big time stiff arm. Kenya Offord into Pittsburgh territory. Didn't take long. 10 rushes for 60 yards. I'm thinking we should have given him the ball more. Obviously, that's a big time run. But it seems like he was playing pretty well anyway. Not like amazing or anything. But solidly at the very least and there he goes again another broken tackle the power of the 99 overall running back is shining through he is in the zone we're now going to look to chew the clock a little bit here and see if we can't get the Steelers to burn a timeout we are dominating at the point of attack here only managed four that time but that's still a nice play more running oh that's just that's just bad for me but Kenya offered too good it doesn't even matter of course, game style is sim in the top left. People always ask that. I only do sim. I don't do arcade. I don't do competitive. Uh, I do kind of like the craziness that sim brings at times where it's not, okay, receiver's open. It's automatically an accurate pass or every bad throw gets intercepted in my case. But arcade is just way too insane. I'm not looking for that. I just, I want it to play like real life. Real life has some craziness, but... Not every play the way Arcade does. Under a minute and a half to play now. We are just exclusively running the ball right now to Kenya Offord. And can you blame me? It's a cheat code right now. They cannot stop him. Pittsburgh has not realized that they need to call timeouts right now. Which that will probably change if we end up getting a first down. But they don't realize. I mean, it's the beginning of the end. Or it's the end of the end. It's pretty much over. You can stop Kenya Offord for only so long. First and goal now from the one. We're going to take off two clock. We're going to bring the offense out. I mean, if we can't punch it in from here, I mean, we don't deserve to win a Super Bowl. We're going to run right at big number 91. That's uh, Stefan Tuitt. You might remember. He was really good for a while. I feel like he's going to be forgotten about in time but it was a really good stealer for a minute good 3-4 defensive end out of Notre Dame and this should be the final snap of the game for our offense it's a touchdown going to be 31-27 Kenya Offord carries us on this drive and I think he's going to carry us uh, carry us to a 10th Super Bowl for the Saints maybe even 11th 10th of this video of this rebuild for sure I want to say it's at least going to be 10. Maybe 11 for the Saints franchise up to this point. Steelers would need a miracle. And that's going to be intercepted by Madison. Shades of Tracy Porter this time. Strutting into the end zone is Madison. And that is the exclamation point on top of a Super Bowl victory. And that may, in fact, steal him Super Bowl MVP. Despite the game already being over. It's a Steelers check down to throw an interception to the 99 overall, Damian Madison. Thought about trading him, ended up giving him a contract extension, and he rewards me with taking it all the way to the house to stamp his mark on the game. Big time Super Bowl win, over betters rejoice maybe.
Underbetters furious at the pick six. And that's just the way she goes. We definitely covered the spread there. It was probably at most seven points. It's a Super Bowl. Usually don't see it get a whole lot more than that in a lot of NFL games, let alone a Super Bowl. And then we end up winning by 10. So betters love it. You can use code underdog. Nope, that's not right. You can use code Bengal on underdog fantasy. You'll get an up to $500 first time deposit matched. This is not a joke. This is an actual sponsor, underdog fantasy. You can do daily pick em, which is my favorite. Shout out to underdog fantasy. Use code Bengal. You're helping me out a lot. And I'll see you in the next one. Please subscribe and be sure to take it easy.